How do, lads? Alright. Snap in the air this morning. Me, you want is it, love? <laughs> I have to be desperate. Hey, don't turn your nose up. I'm single, I'm sexy, and I can lay a thousand a day. Right. Bricks, I mean. Hey. Are you alright? Yeah. You're up early, love. Well, I saw you through my window. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. How do you think I felt when I landed up here yesterday? There's no way you can get moved. I mean, things are bad enough between me and Rita as it is. Navvies have to go where they're sent, love. They can't pick and choose. Anyway, it means I see more of you. That'll make it worthwhile, believe me. I think I'd better report in for work. Jenny! You haven't finished your breakfast. I'm gonna catch the early bus. I'll see you later on, all right? See you. Mm. Ta -ra. Ta -ra. You starting today? Shall yeah. I book you in or what? Yeah. Right. Hello, could I speak to Miss Prescott, please? Hello, Dawn. It's Audrey Roberts here. Uh, I just thought I'd ring and apologise for Alf's little display. Yes, I know, but I, I hope he didn't take his tantrum as final, because, well, I still want that flat, and I... I haven't despaired of talking the silly old beggar round. <laughs> well, I know I told him. Well, I said Dawn's not being pushy. I said those flats down by the quay, they're selling like hotcakes. Oh, well, listen, could you just keep that fabulous pad on ice? Well, just for a day or two. And I'll try and work on Mr. Mina. <laughs> Mind you, trying to part Alfie from his brass is like. You know, I'm beginning to think I'd a hole in my purse where money goes. I'm sorry, Mrs Pierce, but that's what it turtles up to. We have our money to lay out, you know. I mean, take them bananas, for instance. They don't grow on trees, you know. They did when I went to school. No, I mean, they've got to be paid for. Aye, and your top price and all. Do you know it'd pay me to get a bus and shop at Better Buys? A bus? Mrs Pierce, it's only down Albert Road. All oh, right, course. Sally, they've got their own people advertising it without my own staff starting. I'm sorry. I'll tell you something else and all. If folk don't want service, if all they think about is, is saving a few coppers, I'm going to shut this shop this afternoon. Blow the lot of you. That's what I like about these corner shops, that personal touch. <laughs> service with a smile and all that. <laughs> hey, you'd be fixed at Better Buys, cos Vera's been taking on there now. Beats me how she managed it. Well, it's Curly. Curly Watts is the assistant manager there. Mm. He's only a trainee there, but still. I thought I'd try and for a job there, but if they got them two folks with common sense won't be needed, <laughs> will they? <laughs> Ta-da, love. Bye, Mrs Pierce. How do you go about having a break here? You know, do you just shoot off off your own bat or do you wait till you're told? Well, when you're going out, you generally finish your trolley off first. Uh. Hey, Curly Bobs! God, you've got a nerve. You're not like that, will you? Oh, I've told you. It's beloved you. Hey, dozy apron. How about a break? I'm fat. When you finish this sliced bread. You're kidding. There's enough here to feed 5,000. Look, it'll only take you ten minutes. And, oh, by the way, Mrs Duckworth, I don't think nicknames or even first names are quite in order on the shop floor. Eh? It'd be quite nice if you could manage a Mr Watts now and again. Well, I go to our house, the big soft Nelly. He's right. I just don't know you've got the sheep. What? When I were hanging out his underwear this morning? Can't go bowing and scraping to him. Anyway, I fall about laughing, looking at that big ugly mug. He does grow on you, though. Ah, morning. Morning. Thanks, love. Ta da. Bye. Oh, that looks familiar. Who's that from? God. I don't suppose that that uh, knitting pattern I ordered's coming oh, yet, has it? Yes, I think it has, oh, good. actually. Yes. Oh. Do you know, I was sorting the comics and I see Nicky's got a new one. I, I can't remember its name, but it's one of those for the older lad. And I thought, well, I suppose he is growing up like they all do. Yes, he'll be a long trousers next. <laughs> Mind you, you're sure it's for uh, Nicky, aren't you? Only Martin Platt's having his washing done down there, you know, and he's partial to a comic, is Martin. Him being no but a lad himself. Rita. 
What on earth's the matter? You look polaxed. It's from Alan Bradley. He claims I owe him a settlement for the video library. Oh, heavens. Is it nasty? Oh, no. Extremely polite, not putting a foot out of place. That's what makes it so creepy. And it's there, isn't it? He's not letting go. I mean, after what he did, how can he expect well, any sort Well, I suppose it, it did put money in. I mean, maybe if you just paid him a token oh, sum. If only it were that simple. Well, it might be. Not a chance. I wish it were. Do you know where he is right at this minute? Not ten yards from my front door. He's taken a job on that factory building site. He's right opposite my house. I mean, I can't even take the milk well, in needs now. Needs must, I suppose. Needs must? Evis, don't you see? He's after revenge. The man's twisted. He blames me for every rotten deed he ever did. And worse, he's desperate to win Jenny over. See, it's full of subbies again, this dinner. Not about subbies, son, but uh, I bet you remember that fella. Stole me. It's Bradley. He's only working over the road. I reckon he's got a right brass nerve, that fella has. He's done his time, Betty, look. Ah, the is like he got a suspended sentence. Say what you like, he doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. Oh, no, never afraid of that. Hey, what's this bloke done? Apart from hogging that boy. Can you credit that? I've a good mind to leave. That's a good idea, actually. Well, on the other hand, though, Derek, he'd be driving us out, wouldn't it? Which is probably his plan. There is that. Oh, blow it. I'll have my usual and, and see what they've got for dinner. Derek, look, the bar's over there. They haven't moved it. I know. Thought we might go together. Don't be so silly, Derek. He can't eat you. Suppose he was to come over here. How would you like that? <laughs> um, Derek, my old mate. Huh? How's things? Fine. How's things with you? I'm bearing a grudge. Well, you would, I suppose. Mine. You did overdo things a touch. <laughs> but you paid your debt, and maybe it's best to let bygones be bygones. <laughs> uh, I'm sure Rita sees it that way. It's not Rita I've got a grudge against. It's you. Me? Yeah. What happened to that cake you were going to bring me, eh? Cake? Yeah. The one with the file in it. Doesn't it make you nervous, though, Betty, seeing him back? I mean, you'd think he'd be ashamed, but look at him. All grins and nonchalance. I don't fancy it, but what can you do? What did he say? Oh, Bradley. Off. Oh, tried to ingratiate himself, of course. What would you expect? I soon put him in his place. Oh, honestly. Oh, hello, Gail. Look, uh, I have a minute to pop round, but with Nicky being back at school, I thought you might be coping. Uh, mind you, if you're stuck. Yeah, we manage. Thanks, anyway. That's all right. And, uh, how's Martin? Getting on his feet, gradually. Good. Mr. Robert, sandwich is the shaving foam, because there's no price on it. Is it that stuff as Brian? Uh, oh, it'll be on the bottom. Um, oh, yeah, got it is. I'm sorry, Gail, it's not my day to do. All right, I'll let you off with a gold. <laughs> Happy. Oh, lovely. Alfie! Oh, look, I've just had the McDonald's on the phone. Now, it was 25,000 we settled on, wasn't it? Eh? Well, they want it in uh, confirmation before they put it in writing. Well, they're a bit quick off the mark, aren't they? There are some people who know their own minds, you know, surprising as that may seem. Now, it is 25,000, isn't it? Listen, well, don't tell the entire flipping street. Oh, the McDonald's? Yeah, they're the ones that are interested in buying Mr Robert's house. I thought you'd have known that. Dicky Bird! I, I can't make a move without the Tom Toms are fudding away. Oh, Robert! I mean, you take the biscuit. We've made an agreement. I don't know why you're acting like this, especially in your state of health. You're mucking Dawn about now, you're mucking the McDonald's. You'll have us all on pills before we finish. Hey, look, we've not signed nothing, you, you know. You won't be helped, Tim. It's for his own good, and will he be helped? Do you know, you are going to be the richest man in the cemetery. 
excuse me, Mr. Watts. Yes, Miss Taylor. You forgot to take last week's price off. I mean, if people see they've gone up, gosh, there could be a riot. Ah, yes. Well spotted. Just testing you, um, uh, Kimberly. Famous for its uh, diamond mines, am I right? I suppose you are. You seem to be right about most things. Well, who chose it? Well, I weren't baptised till I was nearly 15, so I suppose I chose it myself. Mine is my second name. I'm Louise on my birth certificate. I was fostered, you see, and before that, abandoned. Go on. Really? They found me under a cinema seat. Third row, top balcony, eagle twin. Did you ever go there? Er, uh, yes. Uh, yes, before they, before they shut it down. Um, what was playing? I'm told it were Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, fascinating. Here. Hey. Well, that love's young dream, trying to get a grip of you. We were just talking. Just beating the whistle, eh? I'd have been coming to fetch you. Oh, we had one lined up. Get my letter. So I'll be hearing from you, will I? Eh? Hey! Come on, lad. There's a barrow here getting lonely. You'll have us in a cave before you've done. Look, if you got McDonald on the phone, you should have told him the deal was off. He never fit. All right, I'll phone him then. I mean, what does I've explained? He'll understand. It's Dawn Prescott you should be phoning. What for? To apologise and to tell her we still want that flat. Look, it's too upmarket. Too upmarket? Oh, charming. I feel really insulted. Oh, come on, Audrey. It's nothing that's lacking in you. Well, it sounds like it. Thank you very much. I feel really slighted. Look, let's get one thing straight. I'm not buying that flat, not for all the tea in China. Now, the deal is off. And that's the end of it. Do you know, you're a great big bully, you are, Alf Roberts. <laughs> well, bully away. You won't find me standing with my hands up, shouting surrender. <laughs> and you'll know her. Them spacers, you know, mate. Eh? Watch the corners. Oh, right, yeah. 20p a time, face us. You ask Boris Jones. You're new to this game, aren't you? Does it show that much? Only when you pick up a shovel. Still, get organised. You don't skive off, you'll do for me. Fair enough. Not pushing it, leg, but you seem to know a fair few of the locals. Yeah, I used to live across the road for a while. Why, has somebody been telling tales? No. You want to tell, is there? Well, I got myself into a bit of trouble and did time for it, that's all. But I'm not a thief, if that's what you're thinking. Not all that bothered, mate. Good. Mind you, you start sticking bags of cement up your jumper. Ha! This is a nice surprise. I shouldn't wonder. You didn't say out about calling when you're on the phone. Well, we hadn't heard from Mr Roberts then, had we? Oh, you don't mean there's actually... He rang us, not an hour ago. We've come straight over. Listen, I've been let down before, but this is this is a real sickener. To be honest, Mrs. Roberts, we just feel we've been messed about. Oh, of course you do. Lovey, I'm sorry. I'm seething myself. I mean, it's Alpha. He's so stubborn, he's so set in his ways. He needs a bomb underneath him to get him to budge. Well, that's not what he says. Pardon? Well, he reckons it's you. I mean, I asked him, I said, you know, what's changed your mind? Well, he says it's the wife. Isn't that, isn't that flaming typical? Well, wait till I see him. Joe Bayek, he's got his good points, but he can be a right drip. Hang on. You're blaming him. He's blaming you. I mean, who are we supposed to believe? To be honest with you, Mrs Roberts, me and Liz are getting the idea that... that you're messing us around. Oh, please, come on. Take a pew. I'll put the kettle on. I'll tell you the whole saga. You wouldn't believe what I have to put up with. Hey, cat. <laughs> Oh, blimey! Oh, no, I'm a clown, aren't I? Well, I'll go get a mutton bucket. Ah, <laughs> oh, little miss-up, I see. It's 
slipped. Yeah, we'll get it cleaned up. Mr Holdsworth will go mad if he sees broken glass. Don't tell me it's coming off as money. What's up? Tick me off. Oh, take the notice of him. He won't mean it. He ain't got it in him. I just can't follow him. I mean, he's all nice and friendly. And then his eyes are like blue steel and his face is a mask. Bye. Oh. Hey, that's a surprise. That lady's just told me that our margarine is cheaper than Better Buys. Oh, I've got to start looking for an increase then. Right, well, before you do, I'm going to buy ten packets. Hey, just have a look at this. Now then, what do you think of that? Isn't that a lovely bit of china? Oh, eh? that is very, very <laughs> nice. How did you know it was my birthday tomorrow? Hey, get off. It's for Audrey, that. She likes a pot doodars. They're not cheap, you know. No, it's a, a sort of a sweetener. We've had a bit of a row about this flat and whatnot, you know. Yeah, don't I know it? Been dodging the bullets all day. Yeah, well, it's all settled now, anyway. Uh, I've put my foot down with a firm hand and uh, it's all settled. I mean, she likes to get her own way, you know, but she trusts my judgment in the end. When it all comes to... Oh, how are you doing, Hello. Mr Roberts? Well, Hello. I've uh, seen Mrs Roberts just now. We called to see her, my wife and myself. Being as though you reckon it was her that changed her mind. Oh, yeah. What's she got to say for herself, then? Well, she's not taking the same line you took, I'm telling you. Far from it. As a matter of fact, when I left Liz with her, she was talking about throwing in carpets and curtains, never mind refusing to sell. Hey, just a minute, now, I don't want to pressurise anyone. But we like your house, we like the price, and we don't mind the fittings either. And to be honest with you, we'd appreciate a definite decision. Oh, just hang on, hang on. I'm not in the army, you know. I'm not one of your rookies that you can ball out. Look, I don't ball out rookies. I'm a royal engineer. I'm a technician. But I'm also a fellow who's trying to buy a house off people that can't make up their minds. Well, if this is Civvy Street, well... And you can take that silly grin off your face and all. Yes, Sergeant Major. Oh, fancy him dashing back like that. That one, this'll take more than a pot dog. Rita? Look, if you'd like to come with us for a meal and, and to the pictures, that would be all right, wouldn't it, Derek? Of course it would. Well, I could do with a night out, but... No, thanks. Uh, Jenny's bound to come darting in from Polly, expecting a tea on the table. Are you sure? Oh, quite sure, love. You go and enjoy yourselves. Oh, oh it's starting to rain. Shall I get the umbrella? Oh, don't fuss, Derek. We won't wash away. Well, good <laughs> <laughs> love. I knew it. Back for his umbrella. I knew you would be too. You're shutting early these days, aren't you? What do you want? You don't mind if I come in, I do, do you? mind. Oh, I'm shutting. Out, what oh, do you want? Come on, don't panic. Look, we've got a counter between us, OK? Now, I take it you've read my letter? I tore it up. What for? I owe you nothing. Videos are a boom area, Rita. Who was it set you up in them, eh? Eh? Getting nothing off me, not a red don't cent. Start getting now hysterical. get out and keep away from me and keep away from me. Keep away from Jenny, is that what you're going to say, eh? You want everything, don't you? My daughter and my money. You hang on like grim death, especially to the money, even though it is only a few lousy quid. You ruined everything by hanging on to your money, didn't you? But if it means that much to you. You can keep it. Take care now. Oh. I mean, it's the classic split, really. I mean, here's me, a confirmed Marxist, totally disagreeing with the capitalist ethos, and then I go and place myself at the very crux of the whole shoddy system. Well, if that's what working at Better Buys does for you, you're better off sticking to Alf, love. Yeah, there's nothing to stick to the way things are going. I'll get them in. I thought the crux of the capitalist system was a stock exchange. Well, it's all economics, isn't it, in your piggy bank? Hey, that won't sell a shot, will it? Ooh, what? The way Audrey's pulling his strings. She's determined he's going to flog the house. Then it's going to be the shop. She's going to have him retiring, living on his investments and waiting on her hand and foot. Spending your hard-earned brass, are you, my mucker? 
You're not gonna believe what our lodge is on, you know. Not me, not salt, are you? Good lad, Curly. I bet you're gonna throw a few bob our way when you get your first draw, eh? <laughs> well, yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, tax makes a big hole in it, you know, and I've still got a few unpaid debts. You know that young girl that's with me, you know, Kimberly? Yeah. Well, she was dead upset, you know, when you ticked her off over spilling that stove. Well, I've got my job to do, Vera. Oh, and that reminds me about our extramural connection. Well, you know really... she fans this year? Hey. Yeah, she's sweet, on you? She keeps making sheep's eyes at you. Don't tell me you haven't noticed. Oh, uh, well, no, no, I haven't. I, I, I've been too busy. Any road, I've sort of excluded sex, you know, from my life since Shirley. Anyway, they don't encourage us to fraternise with girls on the shop floor. Yeah, I just... Did you wear that, uh, The right stuff shirt, stop him with us. Don't knock the lad. He's better off looking for promotion, no ambitious skirts. You, you've no feeling, you. Jenny? You there, love? Do you want out special for your tea? Gone on a date, don't wait up. <laughs> Might as well get a cat. Or a gun. Let's be sensible. There's no point locking doors and sleeping in the spare room. It's all daft. Yeah, that's the word. I'll be having one of your funny do's if this goes on, oh, you know. Oh, do you know you're pathetic, aren't you? You pull out all the stops, nothing's barred, so long as you get your own way. Hey, hang on, you're not so fussy yourself. I keep my promises. You, I mean, one minute we're gonna sell, go up in life. The next you plead in poverty. Because you keep cornering me. Every time I say anything, you jump in. We should be calm. We can't jump from one wild impulse to another. We should plan things. I have planned things, Alf. There's now what I've done that's not been planned. Oh, come on, be honest. I mean, you were quick off the mark, weren't you? You know, you're still in a lather. You wouldn't have broken that pot dog that cost good money if you weren't. I'm flitting, Alf. In the not-too-distant future, that's my plan. So if your plan is to stop here, it'll just be you and a sink full of dirty pots. So if you excuse me, I want to get back to them. You know, I still think Rita should take some time off. Well, better still a holiday in the circumstances. That dreadful man lurking round every corner. Don't you agree? <sighs> Derek? Maybe, how would you manage running the shop on your own? <laughs> You could fill the breach, perhaps. I don't see how. I've got my own job. It's coming up to Christmas. And that's a boom time for novelties. I only mean the odd day. What was that? What? That noise. Noise? Yeah. Plumbing, I expect. Unless you're implying it's my tummy rumbling. <laughs> Very idea. I hope you're not suggesting it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> is there anybody there? If there is, I'm warning you. I've got my dog with me. Oh, thank God for that. This is Pierce. What are you doing here? How did you get in? How did I get in? Have you seen the state of your front door? Oh. You've been burgled. Oh. Derek! Oh. Oh, I thought I heard you. What are you taking now? Aspirin. Oh, you take too many of them things, you know. I've got a headache, which you've given me. Me? Oh. Hardly slept a wink last night, what with being frozen stiff and sick with unhappiness. Well, it wasn't me made you sleep by yourself. You don't expect me to sleep with a man who shatters all my plans and dreams as soon as I get any, do you? Audrey. Oh, what? You didn't mean what you said last night, did you? Well, what did I say last night? I was in such a state. Well, you threatened to pack your bag again. Did I? Oh, made a mess of that, haven't they? Certainly have, love. Rita, I'm sorry to have got you. Are you all right? Yes, yeah, still in a state of shock. I've oh. sent Mr. Wilton to get her some strong tea with lots of sugar in it. What was taken, love? Well, nothing very much in here. I think yeah. it's mainly a nasty videos. 
It'll be a gang of perverts. Oh, I think some cigarettes are missing and, and some magazines. Right. I think. What about the till? No, there was nothing in it. Yeah, maybe. Drink oh. this. Excuse me. Oh. oh. <coughs> well, I put a drop of brandy yeah. in it, that's all. It's sugar for sure. Yeah, I put sugar in it. We didn't hear a thing, Rita. Not a thing, did we, Mavis? No, but I, I thought... I... I can't be a bad a nice feeling, knowing you're fast asleep in your beds with perverts prowling about down here. Well, why didn't the alarm go off? I've no idea. Mavis certainly set it, didn't you, Mavis? Yes. It must be faulty then, mustn't it? Is it a mess through there? Afraid it is, yes. Have a look. Haven't left your men here, have they? Chop, chop. It's after eight. I should have a job like you've got, where you start middle at morning. How's she doing? Doing? Ah, with this job, how's she doing? Not bad. That's good. She's beginning to worry about me, you know. Really? Oh, yeah, well, she's no spring chicken, is she? And she hasn't worn as well as me. See, I thought she might not be up to this job, with it being a little bit more physical than the other one. On her feet more, you know. Plus, being in competition with a load of youngsters. Do you know, it'd be a tragedy if our Vera lost this job, because she's never happier than when she's working. Always has been. Oh, you've no need to worry, Jack. She's holding her own up to now. Ah, good, good. Mind you, you being a gaffer, you could always put her in some stock room somewhere, couldn't you? With a big cardboard box for her to have a kip in. <laughs> Just like I used to do. <laughs> Which job did you used to do that in? Oh, quite a few, Curly, quite a few. That was when unions were king. Uh... Right, ready. Hey. Payday soon, love it. Well, what's that got to do with you? No, just a remark. Hey, and don't forget what I told you about these tarts down there. They'll be seeing you as a meal ticket, especially with that suit on, son. Well, Kimberly's not a tart, is she, Curly? She's a very sweet person. I used to say that about you. Oh, come on. Hey, and don't you be going back to bed. Get some cleaning up done. No, oh, my swamp duck. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> You're not feeling well again, Mr. Roberts? No, yeah, not really. Is it your blood pressure again? <laughs> More than likely. Why don't you take a few days off and go away on holiday somewhere? Well, going away won't solve my problems, love. Well, then why don't you... What? Why don't you just go down to the bank now, draw all your money mm. out, and go and buy this flat that Mrs. Roberts has set her heart on. You could just wrap it all up in a big pink ribbon and, and you could just present it to her. I'm sure you'd start feeling 100% better instantly. I'd start feeling 100% poorer and all. Well, what's more important? A happy marriage or a chubby bank balance? I've not got a chubby bank balance, as you call it. Anyway, why can I not have both? You can't have both, Mr. Roberts. I think that was one of the consequences of falling for Mrs. Roberts. Yeah, well, I know what she's like. I knew what she was like. I just wish that she didn't think I was mean. I'm not. I'm just careful. I mean, you are when you've worked hard for your money. You don't go chuck it to your own whims. It represents what you've done with your life. I'm not well off, Sally, but I am comfortable. And I'm proud of it. Are they doing in there? I don't know. They'll not catch anybody. They never do. You, you don't think they'll come back and break in again, do you? Perhaps we shouldn't restock the videos. Very, very floggable videos. Were they mainly of the nasty variety? No, they were not. Mm. Unusual. Um, do you need me any more, officer? I have some important business to attend to, and uh, I have told this officer everything I know. What is your business, Mr. Wooten? I'm a sales executive. Selling? Novelties. Not videos? No, of course not. Just a joke. Oh, well. Now, you told Andy here that you didn't hear anything last night. Yes. But you said you did. Well, I, I thought um, a noise, I thought. Um, I was half asleep, I'm afraid. Sleep of the innocent, you know. Didn't she wake him? I'd have come down to investigate if she had, wouldn't I? Huh. Of course you would. Now, what time was it, Mrs. Wooten, when you thought you heard something? Well, it was uh, just after we'd gone to bed, about uh, 11 o'clock. And you'd set the alarm? Yes. You're sure? Yes, I always do, unless... Uh, yes, I, I sometimes set it, but uh, I certainly didn't last night, did I? No. So you must have said it then, Mrs. Wool. 
Yes, I, th I think I did. You, you're confusing me. Wasn't set this morning, though, was it? Well, I, I could have turned it off when I got up this morning. Did you? I don't remember. I don't think she did turn it off this morning. Rita, are you accusing me of not having set it? No, love. I'm saying somebody else turned it off. Like who? Like the person who knows exactly where the alarm is. Because he installed it. Alan Bradley. Have the either of you two got a burglar alarm? Well, no. No, have you? No. Well, Percy said I should have one. He did a security survey on my house the other day. Oh, did he? I said the only security I need is you, love. <laughs> <laughs> like your windows. Windows? You should have locks on them, according to Percy. I haven't, no. Phyllis, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to frighten us to death or what? No, I'm only telling you what Percy says, and he's quite right, you know. He can't be too careful these days, and he can't be on neighbourhood watch all the time. No, I don't suppose he can, though sometimes it seems like it, Phyllis. Jack! Yes, yes, yes. You sound happy you were, love. I am, I am, Ivy. Well, you'll be as free as a bird, won't you, now with your veer out all day? I miss her desperately, Ivy. Desperately. <laughs> oh! Audrey! Hello, Ivy. Um, have you sold your house yet? No. Oh. How's Alf? Fine, thanks. Good. Good. Glad to hear it. Alma? Everybody should have chains on the door. Percy says so. I don't like telling her my business is a bit of an old gossip. What was I saying anyway? How ill you were feeling. Oh, I've got this blinding headache. I can't seem to shift it. Oh, it's all this nervous tension. That's what it is. Oh, well, it's got to be. There's no need for it either. I mean, it's not as if I was wasting his money. I'm mm. investing it. Absolutely. Do you know, it was the last straw when he embarrassed us in front of that couple. They'd all but bought the house. He'd all but got his checkbook out. But what did you say to Alf? I told him what I thought of him in no uncertain terms. Mm -hmm. Yes, I bet you did. I can still see the smoke coming out of your ears. I also threatened to leave him. You did what? I threatened to leave him. But you didn't mean it, though. I definitely <laughs> did mean it. Honestly, I'm fed up to the back teeth with him and his penny-pinching way. Mm. I mean, Alma, come on. What's money for if it's not to push you up the step of a ladder? I mean, just improve your standard of living, make life a bit easier. If he had his way, he'd still have the damp towel hanging on the back of the kitchen door. Yes, but I mean, saying you're going to leave, I mean, that's a bit OTT, don't you think? I mean, it's a bit dangerous. Might make him see sense, mightn't it? Yes, but it might also offer him a straight choice. Straight choice? Yeah, between you and his money. Oh. <laughs> well, I'd win that, no problem. Oh, would you? I've seen him at the bank paying in, clutching his little satchel and chuckling to himself. It's potty about me. Oh, why are you feeling so ill, then? Why have you got all this nervous tension, if you're so sure? I'll have to be going home, now oh. because I don't know what the police will be looking for. Yes, you better. Hey, do you know, I think Percy was more impressed than they let on the yeah. other day. You know, me going in cabin, not panicking, yeah. so there's hope for me yet, isn't there? <laughs> and you know what they say? Never give up hope till your toenails stop growing. Oh, <laughs> shut up, love. Try. Try. Say. Has she always been man mad? I mean, do you know? Well, I remember my mum telling me that the blackout was a godsend to Phyllis and her maid. Honest. Mm -hmm. Said they'd never have got as many lads as they did if street lamps had been lit. Your mum never said that. It's true, she did. What's going on? No idea, love. Hey. What did they want with him, do you know? Why didn't you ask a policeman? Young man, I asked you a simple question. Somebody about to break in at a shop. They want to ask him some questions. Who's going to do his flaming job? That's what I want to know. No, well, it can't have been very easy for you. Now, what does that mean? Oh, nothing. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Yes, Hang sir. On a it's me before him. Yeah, look, he's not a customer, love, are you? 
Uh, no. no. I'll serve you, Mrs. Charlesworth. Oh, thank you. Uh, I was just wondering whether you're in the same mind about the Well, house. you can see I'm rushed off my feet here, aren't I? Yeah, sorry. Listen, can you pop round to the house, say, this afternoon? All right, yeah. All right. And don't worry, darling. Sure, I wouldn't queue jump you for the world. Well, if it had to be anybody, I'd rather it were you. Oh, flirting again, Mrs. Charlesworth. Well, it's a bit of all right. Hey, 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 who were that? He's the fellow that's interested in buying Mr. Roberts' his house. Oh. Where's Rita? Uh, well, Where she, uh, Rita, they've just taken him away now from the site. Who has? The police just know him. Why would they do that? Well, uh, I think they think he knows something about the break in here. My dad? Yes. Well, what would my dad know about it? You told them that he knows something, didn't you? Well, I think he does. I think it was him that did it. Rita, my dad isn't a burglar. Listen, when it comes down to your dad, I'd believe anything of him. But he... He'd do anything to get back at me. Anything. But how would he be getting back at you by breaking an ear? That's if he did it, which he didn't. It's all part of what he's been up to ever since he turned up again. Trying to upset me and frightening me. No, the only one who's frightened right now is my dad. He's in jail. Don't you realise that? Where are you going? I'm going to get him out because he didn't break an ear. I know he didn't. You didn't expect to believe it, did you? No, but he did it. I'm certain. What brings you back here? Shouldn't you be making even more brass in that precious shop of yours? I've been waiting for you. Where have you been? Having a drink with Alma. You don't object, do you? Oh, Alma, that woman's a bad influence. Oh, she... I'm not a gullible child, Alf. There's nothing Alma said that's made me want to move. I just well, I think we can afford somewhat better, that's all. In fact, I'm sure we can. We can, just. Uh, put the flags out. That's the first time you've admitted that. Yeah, we can just about afford that docks flat. Do you mean it? Yes. Oh, Alpha. Mind you, we need a hefty mortgage, a very hefty mortgage. Yeah, I suppose so. That's if I can get one at my age, and in my state of health. Oh, no. <laughs> How are you feeling? Well, not so bad, considering. What made you change your mind? Well, I've been thinking about it. You do deserve a better house. Thank you very much. You do. But not that dock's place. You what? No, no, it's too expensive. It's too yuppified. A nice little semi in a nice area will suit me. Honest? Yeah. Oh, well, we can manage that. <laughs> yes, I think we can. <laughs> <laughs> what made you change your mind? Well, like you, I just had a thought. Do you know, I can be quite sensible, Alfred. Listen, don't you change the way you are, love. I've got more than enough sense for both of us. He's helping us with our inquiries. Where? Here. Where here? In an interview room, probably. Well, can I see him? No. Why not? Because he's helping us with our inquiries. Well, how long will he be? As long as it takes. You're not very helpful, are you? I'm explaining the situation, love. Has he got a solicitor? I've not seen one. I'll get him one. Hadn't you better ask your dad if he wants one first? Well, how can I when you won't let me see him? Look, why don't you go home and wait to see what happens? No way. I'm stopping here until I've seen my dad. Suit yourself, but don't make a nuisance of yourself. There's a good girl. Sorry about that, Mr. Bradley. Too many villains, not enough hours in the day. Oh, just bumped into a mate of yours, Pete Richardson. He's been promoted, you know, Detective Sergeant Richardson now. Has he? He reckons you should be in the nick for attempted murder. Yeah, I know he does. Oh, bitter and twisted, are you? You were in Risley all that time. No. Oh, come on, a bloke with a short fuse like you. You learn patience in Risley. It's the only thing that's on offer. Why did you break into the cabin? I didn't. Taking what you thought was yours anyway, were you? I don't know what you're talking the about. The videos. 
You started that side of the business, didn't you? Yeah. So you broke in and nicked them back. I didn't break into the cabin. Where are they? Flogged them already, have you? To some of them muscle men on the building site, round their nights off with a bit of bondage after a few pints. I didn't break into the cabin. Mrs. Faircraft thinks you did. I think you did. Whichever way you look at it, Mr. Bradley, you're always in the frame. You knew where the alarm was. It was your video business once. Do you think I'd really be that stupid? To go back to prison, to risk going back to prison for a few lousy videos? I'm on a suspended sentence. You're in the frame in another respect as well, aren't you, Mr. Bradley? Am I? You've got a grudge against Mrs. Fairclough. Oh, it's all down to her. The sweet life turned very sour. From businessman to old lag nearly in one fell swoop. Well, what do you risk to get even with her? Hmm? I didn't break into the cabin. Hey, it'll soon be knocking off time, I Curling. Clock watching leads to job botching, Mrs. Duckworth. Do you know there's a touch of the Mike Baldwin's about you, you know? You want to watch it? No, when I said uh, knocking off, you know, what I meant was, well, you only haven't spoke to Kim much today, have you? Well, there's no need to. She knows what she's doing and she does it very efficiently. Look, I won't mean in work. What I meant was, I, I thought you meant, might have been a play for her, you know. Asked her out for a date. She's just fancy, you know, girl. I mean, she even thinks that your nervous tick, sexy. What nervous tick? Well, it ain't a nervous tick, really. You know, you just blink a lot. But are you going to ask her out? I'm going to have a word with her. Oh, good lad. Hey, you'll not regret it. Uh, Miss Taylor, uh, could I have a word? Yes, Mr Watts, I'm nearly finished here if you want me to do something else. No, 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 it's got nothing to do with what you're doing. Yes, Mr Watts? Well, I don't know what your politics are, Miss Taylor, but me, I'm a socialist myself. Well, so am I. Well, then you'll know that I do not feel superior to any human being or animal come to that. Neither do I. I can't even kill a fly. Well, you see, the thing is, we both work in a capitalist system, unfortunately, and that system ordains that I, assistant manager brackets, trainee, must keep my distance from you, general assistant. But you've never even touched me. No, no, no. I'm socially, I mean, I must keep my distance socially. I mean, it's ridiculous, I, I know, but, uh, well, it's the man who, who pays the paper and all that. Uh, I don't want to block my copybook. <laughs> well, not until after the revolution, and, and then it won't matter. What I'm trying to say is, 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 well, it's nothing personal. You're a very nice person. OK? Yes, Mr Watts. Good. Carry on. Hey, what did he say? Have you fixed up? Well, I'm not sure what he said, actually. Something about we have to have a revolution before we can be friends, but it's nothing personal. And he thinks I'm a very nice person. Oh, well, for Curly. <laughs> You might say that's progress. Oh, is it not here yet? No. You don't think they've changed their mind, do you? Oh, got another house. I'd be surprised if they have. <sighs> What's all this? Well, just to make him feel at home in mm. his home. Well, when it is his home, if you know what I mean. Come here. Oh. <laughs> You'll be the death of me, do you know that? Oh, well. <laughs> You'd die happy, wouldn't you? Oh, I dare say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just think our own house with a gun. <gasps> And if things aren't just like we want, we can make improvements, can't we? <laughs> like a sunken bath. Oh, do you know, I've always longed to have a sunken bath you can just step into. Like Cleopatra. <laughs> <laughs> the only trouble is, if I step in, the new whimpers to get me out again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that being... Oh, right. No, 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 look. You go and brew the tea. I'll get it. Oh, right. Hello. Come Hi. on in. Go straight through, but uh, keep your eyes closed when you do. Close my eyes? Well, I don't want you to see the wallpaper. We were just on the point of having it decorated. Oh, it's fine. Sure do me. Oh, well, that's nice. I have tried to cherish this little house. Ah, there we are. Come on, make yourself at all. Yes. Uh, tea? Thanks. I wish you prefer somewhat stronger. I mean, we can manage that, can't we, Al? Ah, yes, of course we can. No, no, tea's fine. Oh, oh. lovely. Take your coat off. Thank you. Milk? Uh, yes, please. Right. There. Help yourself to sugar. Oh, no, I don't use sugar. Oh, well, snap. <laughs> That's why you and me have got flat tummies, unlike my roly-poly husband. Though. Yeah, well, I've always had a sweet tooth, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, here's to us. Oh, yes. Cheers. 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 So. No, hey, let me tell you. 
We've decided to sell, definitely. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> well, it hasn't been an easy decision, has it, Alfie? Yeah, well, I'm sure Mr McDonald realises that. You see, well, this was our first home together, so, well, I suppose you could call it our little love nest, eh, Alfie? <laughs> 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 and we're both a bit sentimental, so we didn't want to really kind of leave such pleasant memories. Hey, eh, Alfie? Oh, absolutely. But we've decided to take the plunge. I mean, you can't let memories, however sweet, bog you down, can you? I bet your wife will be pleased. Ah, oh, she'll be delirious. She's always wanted a wee house of her own, you know. Well, after far too long an army accommodation. Oh, well. Oh, that makes everybody happy. Including this lovely snug little house, eh, Alfie? <laughs> Jenny, is that you? Jenny? What? Oh, did you see him? No. Wouldn't they let you? They just kept ignoring me. So he's still at the police station? Well, where do you think he is on a plane to the Costa del Sol? He did it, Jenny. The police will prove that. You'll see. And won't that make you happy, eh? Oh, have I got to go in there? For now. Well, how long's it going to take? Till Detective Sergeant Crichton sorts it. Well, till you help him to sort it. I don't suppose you've heard. No, love. I'll phone his dick. Hey, hey, you can't wake his landlady up at this time. It's not seven o'clock yet. No, I, I suppose you're right. He'll probably still be asleep. If he's back. He'll be back. All as I can say, there must be some red hot videos to chance going back to Nick. <laughs> I wonder where Mavis keeps him. It's not definite he did it. Oh, you know her trouble, don't you? You never believe out wrong of a good-looking fella. A couple of dimples in the right place get away with murder. Anybody like that at your place? Only me. <laughs> oh, aye, Mr Oldsworth. Now you want to see his dimples. You told me he was a right miserable old git. <laughs> Only to stop you being jealous, lover. I know how possessive you can be. Ready in five minutes, love. Aye. Right. Uh, who's doing the washing up? Oh, Jack will do it. Oh, aye, Cinderella will do all the dirty work. Well, young executives get chauffeured to work. I don't suppose it's crossed his mind to pay something towards the petrol. Eh? Well, he has, as it happens. And up in his rent would not come amiss, you know, now he's working. Yeah, yeah, for that and all. Oh. And I said no on both counts. You said what? Look, the lad needs a bit of money behind him first. He'll want another couple of new shirts, another decent pair of shoes. And a bit of money in his pocket in case he wants to take a girl out. Oh, why didn't you say? I mean, take your birds out. And I'm gone. I'll pass the cap round. I'll get me wallet. Look, I'm not taking anyone out. I'm concentrating on my career. Yeah, but you want a bit of fun in your life, love. You know what they say? All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Imagine in his case, it's been all play and no work. And he's still as dull as ditch water. <laughs> Aren't you, Sindon? <laughs> Hiya, Mrs Foster. It's Jenny Bradley here. Hiya. Can I speak to my father, please? He hasn't. Has he rung? Oh, I see. No, that's all right, thanks. Bye. He hasn't come back yet. Oh, well, I did warn you, love. But what are they keeping him for, Rita? He didn't do it. Well, the police must think differently. Chuffed about this, aren't you? Oh, Jenny, love. I hate to see you hurting yourself like this. You can't have any illusions left about your dad. We both know what he's capable of. But he wouldn't have done it, Rita. He knows he'd go back to prison. Two years of hell, that'd kill him for the sake of a few tatty videos. It wasn't the videos. It was to get at me. To get me in a state. No, no, I don't believe that. That doesn't make any sense at all. When he's in one of his moods, he doesn't think whether it makes sense or not. 
Perhaps he's got psychological problems. That'd explain a lot. Oh, so you're saying he's crackers now, are you? I'm saying nothing, love. God knows I'm the last to understand what makes him tick. You're not going to be happy, are you, until they've got him back behind bars? No. God, you can be vindictive. Jenny, I'm not the one going round doing crazy things. I just want to be left in peace to enjoy what's left of my life. Is that too much to ask? Hey, Tina Turner, it's your lucky day. I could just fit you in for a quick cuddle. I won't fit you into time with shoelace, Bonzo. Hey, you're playing out your league there, Les. It's me what she secretly lusts after, aren't I right, girl? Oh, yeah, can't you see the steam coming out of my ears? Hey, so when do we make the earth move then, sweetheart? <laughs> so you bring your JCB along on dates, do you? Myself, I prefer Mercedes Sports. Oh, <laughs> 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 You know what that is, don't you, Mrs. Perclough? I seem to remember they called it a wolf whistle in my day, Percy. I don't suppose it's changed. Sexual harassment, that's what that is. Young lass can't walk down the street in peace now. I dare say Tina will cope with it, Percy. Yes, it's a question of respect, though, you know. All that dirty talk, it's not decent. Men don't put women on a pedestal like I was taught to do in my day. No, they don't. Mrs. Perclough! Have you had any word? What about? Bradley. I've had to expect him into work or what? I've no idea. Uh, thought you might have heard something, seeing it was your shop that got done over. Shocking business. There's nothing safe today. I must say, he doesn't strike me as the sort of bloke to go in for petty theft. But you never can tell. The longer I stay on this planet, the less I know about folk. Do I take it the police have still got him in custody then? Well, he's certainly not shown up here yet. It's no use to me, you know, all this messing about. We're working the penalty clauses here. Well, I'm sorry, I can't help you. <clears throat> I say it was, uh, it was a very personal friend of mine that uh, found the break-in, you know. Uh, a Mrs. Pierce, I've known her for years. You do surprise me, I thought you were the local crime buster. Well, you know, even I can't be everywhere. I suppose not, Grandad. It just seems like it. Madam. Why do they always ask are they fresh? I mean, I'm not going to say no, they're dead stale, am I? I certainly hope you won't, Miss Taylor. Oh, Mr. Watts, I didn't see you there. You see, what you've got to remember, we're working in a highly competitive marketplace. Now, if the customer feels that we're lacking in civility and helpfulness, she'll take her business elsewhere. But I said it was, Mr. Watts. And remember, the employee who's rude to customers won't win Miss Better Buy of the Month. Was what? Fresh the whole meal sliced. Oh, yes. Good. Good. Hey, I bet I know what you two are talking about. I bet he's been telling you about his telescope, have not he? What? Well, he ain't got one now, and it was stolen. But he did have one. There's no he can't tell you about the stars. Isn't that right, Mr Watts? <laughs> hey, can you tell me mine? I'm a Sagittarian. Stars, as in solar system. Actually, I was giving Miss Taylor a brief lesson in customer relations. Ah, oh, very useful, too. Hey, I'll tell you what, why don't you take her out tonight? Give her a few more tips, you know. I bet you could uh, show her plenty. Well, actually, uh, I'm not available. Uh, Mr Holdsworth has asked me to stay behind and reorganise the refrigerator section. Well, Kim will help you with that, won't you, love? Well... Yeah, of course she will. It'd be a lot easier with two, you know. And you don't get overtired. We are chest. I haven't got a chest, Vera. Of course you have. Little sock tickly cough during night, I hear it, when it goes to the loo. Uh, would you be available to do some overtime this evening, Miss Taylor? Yes, yeah, we'd glad to. Should. OK, you and him together, with a few hundred packets of frozen peas. What more do you want? I know I'm biased, but you have to admit Derek's fairies are a great improvement. Are they? On what? On the ones we had last year. Oh, and it was very supportive of you to order from him. He does appreciate. Oh, oh, just looking at them gets me excited. We're going to have to start making plans soon. Not me. I'm going to abolish Christmas this year. What a sad thing to say. Oh, well, not necessarily. I might take myself off somewhere in the sun. Why not? No one to stop here for. What about Jenny? Well, the way things are going, she's more likely to be pulling crackers with her dad than me. Well, surely he'll be back in prison. Looking likelier by the minute, according to Mr Sudden, who, needless to say, is closely monitoring the situation. <laughs> oh, God, isn't that awful? Wanting someone put away. 
Well, that's what he's dragged me down to. You're not being awful at all, is she? I mean, you've got every right. Certainly does seem as though he's been persecuting you. Well, Jenny thinks I'm paranoid if I say that. <laughs> Naturally, she's his daughter. But once he's been charged officially by the police, she'll have to believe you. Then you'll be friends again and everything will be just back as it was. You'll see. Hot date? What? Well, it's the 14th time you've looked at that watch in the past there. It's very demoralising to a chap. I'm sorry, I'm just waiting for some news. Something to celebrate? The excuse for a party? Don't know. Hope so. You know what I'm going to call you in future? Mona. Why Mona? Mona Lisa Bradley. I've never met a girl so enigmatic. Give over, I'm not. Then what are these heavy secrets you're hiding? Come on, you can tell your Uncle Stuart. Stuart, I'm not hiding any secrets, right? So what is it? Married with three kids? A KGB defector? I've got it. You're a part-time stripper, Graham. <laughs> Wish I was half as exotic. <laughs> Do you want to tell me, Jen? You never know. Maybe I can help. Thanks, but it's just a temporary hiccup. Nothing I can't cope with. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Blondie. Les wants to know what you have for your breakfast. Little boys, on toast. Hey, it must be more than snap, crackle and pop to give your body shape like that, love. No, I do my morning exercises as well. And bend, then stretch <laughs> and up. Karate, <man. laughs> actually. I'm a black belt. Hey, hear that, lads? Tiny Tina's a black suspender belt. I bet. You see that, Bartok? She could chop it in two with the side of her hand if she wanted no sweat. You shouldn't have told him that, darling. He gets turned on by strong women. Hey, <laughs> she can certainly put me across a knee any time she wants. <laughs> Are you going to stand for that? Well, they're breaking no laws. They're offending the rules of public decency. They want throwing out. Get away with it, bother. They're having a bit of a laugh, that's all. Oh, so you prefer to put up with all the rules? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're still buying air, I will. Yes. You know, it surprised me, landlord. These lads are insulting your women folk, and all you think, think about is profit. <laughs> Look, they're barmaids, Percy. They're not nuns. They can handle it. I think Percy's right for once, Alex. Hey, Tina, come on, get away! Do, do you? <laughs> the young lads these days, they're not brought up to respect the, the weaker sex. Oh, you know? like you respect your Vera, you mean? I was talking about the weaker sex, Alex. I said no about our Vera. Oh, maybe stop martyring yourself. Enjoy your shepherd's pie. I'm not martyring myself. I don't like leaving on her own at the moment, that's all. Now, look, you're entitled to have lunch with your husband, for goodness sake, honestly, Mavis. Sometimes you go on as if Rita was a child of three. Well, she's been through a lot lately. Oh, I've been through a lot. I don't permanently need you to nursemaid me, do I? No, of course I don't. I can shoulder my own burdens. Surely we ought to be able to turn to our friends in time of need. Yes, but enough is enough. I mean, Rita is in grave danger of becoming a clinger, Mavis. You're part of a couple now. You have other obligations. I'd appreciate it if you bore that in mind. Yes, Derek. tell you he's free they've what? let him go what it was a couple of lads that broke and they found them flogging the stuff on the market <laughs> who told you this the police did i've just been down to the station now oh i see well they'll be sending somebody around to let you know and they got most of the videos back oh god i was worried about them well you could at least say you were sorry sorry for what for being so quick to blame me dad i knew it wasn't him uh, just a minute where is he now? He's at his digs. And then? And then he should be left in peace to get on with his life. If some people would just let him. Oh. Stop coming in here. If you don't go rich in a vinegar, not tonight. It can be very off-putting, you know, unless it's on chips. Oh, I don't know about this all the time, you know, Vera. Well, you want to be on your tod with him, don't you? Yeah, but not here. I mean, we'll only be relating in a work-oriented situation, won't we? Has he been lending you his business books? Well, I've got a couple out at the local library. Well, I don't right. want to be thinking I'm thick, do I? 
if we ever do get around to having a personal conversation. Yeah, well, you'll have your chance of that tonight. What I really need is for you to see me out of these overalls. Well, play your cards, right? You'll have your chance of that and all. <laughs> For him to see me as a woman, not as an employee. Mm. Hardly be romantic, will it? Surrounded by all them frozen turkeys and their horrible pimply skins. Well, get, get him to take you somewhere after. Some nice cosy little pub somewhere. How do I do that? Well, make a go at him, you know, chase him. Do you know I remember doing that years ago? You know, chasing our job. What <laughs> happened? Not a lot. I caught him. <laughs> An old pub would be nice, with a real log fire. And we'll look into each other's eyes, across the flickering flames. Mm. And he'll suddenly see the real me. And in that single moment, the world will stop spinning. And everything will change. Miss Taylor, you're on one o'clock lunch. Oh, right, Mr Watson, just go in now. <laughs> Mm, you know something, Vera? I can't wait for tonight. There you go. So, uh, your place or mine tonight, then, sweetheart? I bet Bet's place. Yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, where's that? I'm Bet. And I'm working, sweetheart. Yeah, well, I might still pop in anyway. Uh, nothing better turns up. Doesn't it get on your nerves, all this stupid chat-up stuff the whole time? Nope. Occupational hazard. Oh, it's a verbal grope, if you ask me. Well, listen to her. Uh, well, myself, I could never stick these uh, loud mouth types, you know. I've got to prove what jack the lads they are. I'm going to try growing up a bit. Oh, wow. Listen, if Tina don't like it, she can always tell them to get stuff, can't she? Most of them are all just mouth and trousers. If you give them any encouragement, they'd run a mile. Oi! Isn't that right, Eddie? You spoke, princess. I said give you any encouragement and you'd run a mile. Hey, she's only saying that because she thinks she's safe behind the bar. Oh, I saw her this morning. She was talking about going away on her own for Christmas. Oh, that might not be a bad idea. A nice cruise or something. Meet a congenial, wealthy widower to take her mind off Bradley. I don't think anything will do that. The man seems intent on haunting her. Well, once he's safely back inside, she'll have no to worry about. Good God. I thought Percy said they'd arrested him. Must have been wishful thinking on Mr. Sutton's part. Not to mention Rita's. Really? All right. Hey, Alan, mate, to fuzzle at your go, did they? Well, that too, didn't they? Seems how they caught the lads that did it. So, you're off the hook? Yeah. I knew you'd be pleased, Bet. Oh, we are, Alan. Uh, both of us. <laughs> yes, uh, always glad to see uh, one of the regulars back in the fold. <laughs> On behalf of my good lady and myself, may I say I hope your troubles are behind you? Thank you for your support. Both of you. What can I get you? Um, no, no, this one's on me. I like to see the good guys win. Ha, go on then, I'll have a scotch. Mm. I wish I'd tighten it home and get my new Angola top on. It's this lovely shade of pale pink. It's got little pearl buttons sewn on front. Well, why don't you treat yourself to some new makeup? Ada's fantastic eyeshadow, halfway down aisle seven. Decot blue. Yeah. Mm. I don't really go in for that stuff much. Yeah, well, you should do. You've got lovely eyes. You should bet most of them. Look, you'll get it and I'll put it on for you before I go home. You see, the secret with eyeshadow is you've got to use it very subtle, you know. Oh, thanks, Bill. You're a great mate. Roll on seven o'clock, eh? <laughs> Another half an hour to go, eh, Mr. Watts? Yes, we've been especially busy today. I expect you'll be glad to get home. But I'm not going home, Mr. Watts. I'm staying behind to help you with the freezer section. Oh, too much to do. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you it's off. Off? Yes, new change of plan. A dictate from head office. Mr. Holdsworth wants me to do an in depth study of logistics before we implement any changes as such. Oh, yes, I see. I hope I haven't inconvenienced you. No, not a bit. <laughs> Oh, um, Miss Taylor? Yes, Mr. Watts? Um, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, but you, uh, you seem to have some, uh, some dirty marks round your eyes. <sighs> Great egg! 
Should have sold him. He'd broken every day to work tonight. What good would that have done? Well, he'd have let him know he's got competition. <sighs> that wouldn't bother him. He can't care that much about me if he can flip him well forget about me. It serves me right for looking forward to it. Tell you what, look, come to our house for your tea tomorrow night. To your house? Yeah. Look, I'll make you a nice supper, and after me and our chat, we'll just slope off, leave you oh. to on your own, you know, to get acquainted. We've got a lovely gas log fire. But what will Mr Watts say? Oh, never mind what he says. I'm entitled to ask a workmate at home. Hey, you better wear your new sweater. Jenny, are you sure you won't have something to eat? No, thank you. Well, will you get something when you're out? I'm going for a pizza with some friends. We might go local, we might go into town. I don't know what time I'm going to be back. Any more questions? I, I'm not prying, love. I mean, I, I don't want to know your business. I, it's just, I'm glad you're making friends. But, <laughs> Jenny, I don't like the way things are between us. I hate it. If you want to know the truth, I can't stand being in this house anymore. Well, come on, love, let's talk about it. <sighs> What's it to talk about? Oh, don't be like that, love, please. You deliberately blamed my dad for something that he didn't do, knowing full well what would happen to well, him. Well, I thought it was him. All the signs oh, were what there. what signs? It was all circumstantial, Rita, and you knew it. It could have been anybody. Anybody! But you were determined to pin it on him. Jenny, believe me, I wasn't being vindictive. Oh, weren't you? My dad's not put a foot wrong since he came out of prison. He's trying his best to start again. But what chance has he got with you out to get him at every turn? Look, why don't you try and see it from my point of view? You want me to be understanding and forgive you? How the hell dare you, Rita, of all people, ask for forgiveness? Well, what do you expect? The man's a customer. You didn't have to lick his flaming boots. Look, all I did was ask him what he wanted to drink. Landlords are supposed to do that, you know. On behalf of both of us, I hope your troubles are behind you. Well, now, what's wrong with that? It wasn't on my behalf, Buster. I don't hope his troubles are behind him. I hope they're still ahead of him, and plenty of them. My God, women can be vicious. Rita is my mate. I know what he's done to her and what he's still doing. You're going as barmy as she is, you know that, don't you? Look, the police let him go. Now, that's good enough for me. Now, are we going to stand here all night arguing the toss, or are we going back in there to work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the late Mr Watts. Hey, we are supposed to be leaving nearly an hour ago, mate. Ten pin bowling curly. We arranged it last night. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. I forgot. I had to work late. I had to prepare an in-depth planning oh, report. Don't worry. It's not too late if we go right away. Right. Just give us a minute. Get yeah. the planning report by Eck. You're taking his job a bit serious, aren't you? It's the only way he wants to get on. There's too many today who think life owes them a living. They're happy sponging on the welfare state. Oh, not like in your day, Mr Sugden. You can take that smile off your face. We weren't afraid of hard work. We didn't grow up to be lager louts and football hooligans, I can promise you that. Yeah, well, I'm not smiling, Mr Sugden, because I've got a kid sister living God knows where and doing God knows what with yobbos like them. Hey, you can relax now. I bet you've been watching that door every second. What for? Me. Hey. One thing I don't do, sweetheart. I don't stand my dates up. Eddie, for the last time, we haven't got a flipping date. I've told you I am working. Not all night, you're not. Hey, I'll hang out till you finish, all right? Suit yourself. I am making no promises. Hey, what about a little kiss, eh? Just to keep me going the while. Don't lost it. I'm busy. Oh, come on. You can spare a peck for your number one fan. Lock it up, Eddie. Oh, come on, Tina. Eddie. Hey, come on. Leave it alone, eh? Hey, butt out, mate. Hey, take your hands off her. What's it to do with you, anyway? Have you got a soft spot for yourself? Hey, would you rather it was your missus? <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. You. You. Out. Hey, I'm going nowhere. He picked on me. It's all right, Mr Gilroy. We'll sort it out. Come on, son. Yeah, go on. on your back. Hey, you think you're going to get away with this, either. You might feel like apologising to me. Apologise? Yeah, because, uh, you know, you stitched me up, didn't you? Good and proper. And I thought, you know, I thought you might like to say sorry. You can't be serious. <laughs> no, I should know you better, shouldn't I? Dear, oh dear, Rita. God knows what goes on in that 
twisted little mind of yours. It's not my mind that's twisted. Why are you here? I just told you. I don't believe you. <laughs> well, it's up to you, isn't it? You drop your glass. Take care now, you hear? Do you think we could get going, Vera? Yeah, it won't be a minute, love. Yeah, we'll leave us a paper, then, will you? Hold your horses. I'll go when I'm ready now, when it suits you. Well, it'd suit me, actually. I don't want to be late. And you won't be, love. Look, I'll tell you what. You go get yourself in the car. I just want a quiet word with me husband, like. Well, what have I done now? Well, I haven't said you've done out, have I? Right, I'll see you in a minute. All right, love. What? what what's up? Hey, are you working tonight? No, it's my night off. Oh, well, I suppose it can't be helped. Only you'll behave yourself, right? I don't want any clever cracks about marriage and such like. What are you on about, Vera? Well, you know that girl works with me. You know that's keen on... Curly. I've asked her back for a tea. You know, just to socialise. Then why don't you just leave the lad alone? What harm has he ever done you? Look, what did I say? I said we can do without your clever crack. And Curly can do without you interfering in his flaming life. Oh, he'd be dead chuffed when he walks in and finds her here. You'll see if he isn't. Uh, uh, hang on. You, you mean Curly doesn't know the girl he's going to be here? No, but it's so well watered. Anyway, it's not for you to bother about. Just make sure you've got a clean shirt on and try and act halfway, you man, eh? Flaming madness. Last, the woman has gone totally bananas. Are you not going to have any breakfast? No, I'll get something at the poly. What are you going to do with yourself today? Are you going to go to the shop? Yes. Good. Because quite honestly, Risha, I think you need something to occupy yourself. You're becoming obsessed with my dad and what you think he's up to. Obsessed? It's just going on inside your head, narrator. That's all that's left. What's just going on inside your head? Hello. Hello, love. You yeah. all right? I'm fine. Listen, what time we get off? Uh, about five o'clock. Why? Then you'll be eating things, will you? Yeah. Right, well, I'll come around around two time. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, I look forward to it. Alright, then. See you later on. Yeah, to that, love. Yeah. Walked out of it and made. Walked out of it and all the way. That is my daughter. Oh. What were you saying? A nice girl. Yeah. So it definitely wasn't Alan who broke in here. No? Oh, well, Rita will be. Well, how has she reacted? She hasn't said much, but then nobody's said much to me. In fact, nobody seems to have thought of me and Derek at all. You and Derek? Well, we were the ones in danger, weren't we? Asleep upstairs while some lout was rampaging about down here. Supposing one of us had come down, then what might have happened? Well, yes. But I mean, everybody I... seems to think it was Rita who was in danger, and she wasn't even on the premises. Yes, but you can understand. She was afraid it was Alan carrying out some kind of vendetta. Yes, well, he wasn't, was he? Well, not as far as the break-in was concerned. And if she was wrong about that, well, she could be wrong about him altogether. Hello, Rita. Don't say it. You were talking about me. No. No, we, we, we were talking about... Um... About the break-in. I believe it's been solved. I believe it has, yes. Anyway, I must be getting on. Mm. Bye. Bye, Emily. Uh, Rita, I was... Uh... I was wondering if we ought to be ordering some more videos to replace those that were taken. Yeah, I suppose we should, yeah. Oh. Right, well, um, shall I get on with that then? Or, or would you like to do it? I could get you the catalogue and you could sit there going through it. Maybe she don't have to talk to me as if I'm not in full control of my senses. I've already had a pep talk from Jenny as it is. Well, it's difficult to know how to talk to you these days, Rita. You're that taken up with Alan. Obsessed. The word's obsessed. Are you glad it wasn't Alan who broke in here? Or were you really hoping it would be? I was hoping and praying that it would be him, and that they'd lock him up and throw the key away. 
So maybe I am obsessed, after all. So you're saying it were my fault? Listen, if you think that, then you need to wash your ears out. I wasn't saying out of the sort. But I could have handled it better. Listen, love, you're a terrific barmaid. The customers like you, you're friendly, you've got a lot of life about you, and you can add up. That's great. Only some fellas are going to mistake that friendliness for a come-on, like my laddo did last night. Yeah, but I thought he would just all talk. Yes, and most of them are. The trick is spotting the odd one that thinks that you really fancy him and he's going to try some at on. OK, you want to flirt a bit? Great. That's part of what you paid for. Only flirt with Percy Sugden or Ken Barlow. You're safe with them. They're not going to start grabbing at you. Well, Ken Barlow isn't anyway. But these lads off the building site, they're different, love. Yeah. But what about Eddie? I mean, what if he comes in again? Well, just make sure you're busy serving somebody else and leave him to either me or Alec. Right. I've been, th I've been thinking, boss. Oh, really? Well, it is my night off tonight, but by rights, you know, but I don't mind coming in if you want, you know. Oh, yes, I mean, come in whenever you like, Jack. I mean, just stand on the other side of the bar and buy your drinks. I'm sure nobody will have any objections. No, no, no. I mean, I mean to work, you know. Oh, I see. Are you offering your services for free, then? No. <laughs> well, in that case, you can stop at home with your wife. I mean, that's what nights off are for, Jack. Spend some time in the company of your loved ones. Oh, go on, Alec, just for a couple of hours, eh? No. I'm running a business here, Jack. Not an asylum for hen-pecked husbands. Yeah. Any of that tea left? Should be. That's Thanks, right. Bear. Any time, look. Hey, well, I've just been advising Tina to cool it with her macho brickies. Hey, we don't want to put them off coming in here, you know. No, just from coming in and assaulting folk. Do you not think it might be a good idea if we give Tina a night or two off and get Jacko to step in? No. No, I don't. I mean, if, if it's Tina that's drawing them in, we want Tina here. Alec, it could have turned very nasty in here last night. And don't think I don't know that. And it still could. Them young fellas could find somewhere else to drink and we'd be stood staring at an empty bar. And I, for one, can't think of anything nastier than that. Ooh. I've got some steak for tonight. You like steak, don't you? Oh, yeah, it sounds lovely. Do you think it's such a good idea, me coming round? Of course. What's wrong with it? Well, Mr Watts not knowing, he might be annoyed. Oh, you leave him to me, love. He might be bossy, here, but it's different at home. But perhaps he regards your home as somewhere where he can relax and escape from all the day's worries. Then all of a sudden, I'm going with her. Oh. I'm just a bit nervous, that's all. Don't be nervous about coming to our house, love. It's free and easy. We don't have any ceremony. This wouldn't be your own shopping you're doing here, Mrs. Duckworth. Eh? Oh, trolley. No, somebody must have left it. It's not yours, is it, Kim? Oh, no, no, it's not. Only Mr. Holdsworth insists that the staff do the shopping on their own time. Quite right and all. Uh, Miss Taylor? Yes, Mr. Watts? When you've finished here, could you go to the pet food counter? We seem to get a lot of gaps there. Certainly, yes. Right. Uh, good. Yeah. Right, I'll wheel this into the staff room. Oh. Bring it out later. Just have Having interests or hobbies outside work. Oh, Curly. Mm. Oh, well. He sometimes outside, Jack. You know, with pigeons. Interested in wildlife, then, is he? <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, love. He's like the rest of us. Fancy's an easy life. You know, anyway, listen, don't worry about tonight. You're coming to our house and you're going to enjoy it, OK? Mm. Right, uh, that's 125 altogether. Right. Oh, and two portions of your pie and peas. Right. Over here, Tina, love. Two pie and peas, that's uh, 125, 235 altogether. Hey, Cheers. I think she's playing hard to get. Hey, you're not a dings, are you, Diddy? You're not one of them. <laughs> are we throwing this lot out? Serving them or what? Serving them, serving them. Yes, lads, what would you like? Four pints a bit of one lager. And half an hour your barmaid over there, please. <laughs> Just ignore them, love, OK? Right. Um, I'll bring your pie and peas over when they're ready. Right. Thank you. Thank you. It's getting very rowdy in here, these days. That's what I was thinking. We may have to consider going somewhere else if the decline continues. I suppose it's those young men from the building side. Why they have to be so loud-mouthed is beyond me. I, mean, I was a young man once. He didn't find me baying across bar rooms. Mind you, I didn't drink in those days. I signed the pledge when I was 17. You never told me that before. No, well, I had an uncle who was in the Salvation Army. He was quite an influence on my early life. <laughs> in fact, I had a spell playing the old tambourine. Are you sure we're not asking for Bob to serve in this one? They're all right. It's just high spirits, oh, that's all. Is that what you call it? And where the heck do you think you've been? Uh, down the cellar. Hiding, I suppose. No, no. Obviously, it's not in issue. Well, now you're here, will you stop here? And look like you might have been in the SAS. Excuse me, gentlemen. 
Tell me, how's Rita? Well, she told me she wished it had been Alan Bradley who broken into the cabin. And then he'd have had to go to prison for it. So she's still living in fear? Yes, I think she is. Oh, little You've got some very boisterous customers in here today. I didn't invite them in, I can promise you that. Will you just let me pass? Well, lads. Let the lady pass, show a bit of respect, eh? Hey, it's what she's going to show us, we want to know. <laughs> I said show a bit of respect. I was only joking. Go ahead, Al. Thanks. Have a pipe, please, Alex. Yes, sir. There you are. Thank you, Thank you. Well, come back, Alan Bradley. All is forgiven. <laughs> Curly, my son. Oh. Hey, nice little place you've got here, isn't it? Oh, thank you very much. You've uh, not by any chance got any uh, free samples, have you? Damaged goods. I mean, I wouldn't feel insulted. I mean, look at the wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, hey, what about what about this harem of women uh, that you have got at your beck and call? Uh, well, that's not exactly the situation. Do you Dan. know, if I'd have been in your shoes at your age, I would have had the time of my life. But I would have tried not to get tied down. Especially if a certain person who shall remain nameless was a mouth that big, it'd fit one of them in sideways, try to get me fixed up with one of her cronies. Yeah, well, it's been nice speaking to you, Now, Jack. Curly, Curly, lad, I am trying to mark your card here, son. I mean, you are not supposed to know this, but I hey, heard... Hey, hey, hiya, Curly. <laughs> I've just been helping our Jack, you know, it's shopping. Mm. Well, here's a customer, isn't it? And you've always said they come first. Right, love, put them in the car. Keys are there. Bring them back when you put them in. Here. Yeah. Well, go on, then. I'm going, I'm going. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Mrs Duckworth, uh, I've got a management meeting, so I'll be late home. Oh, have you? Yeah. How long will you be? An hour, an hour and a half. Oh, well, that's all right, then. I'll have your tea ready for when you come uh, in. Uh, thanks. Well, you can say what you like. That could have turned very nasty, this dinner time. But it didn't. Only because of Alan Bradley. Well, I was just about to step in myself. What do you think about him? Oh. Alan Bradley. Why, what is there to think? Well, do you reckon he has turned over a new leaf? Or is he just biding his time, waiting for a chance to do something nasty to Rita? Do you know what's the most dangerous place you can live? What? In the past. You live there and you'll always be miserable. Now, you reckon Rita Fairclough's a, a pal of yours, don't you? Oh, well, yeah. Then I think you should try and stop her living in her past. Tell her whatever Alan Bradley did, he's paid for it and it's over. She's got to accept that and start living in the present. I've never known you to be so philosophical. Oh, I have my moments. Mind you, it's changing now. First few weeks were dead easy, but now we're starting to get a lot of essays in. Well, I'm sure you'll check it all in your stride, though. Rita said you called last night. I did, yeah. Is that why you're here, is it? I just want to know why. Why? Why did you go round there when you know all it does is upset her? She's saying all kinds of things now. Jenny, she accused me of breaking and entering. She had me taken down to the local Nick. Now, if we're talking about people being upset, I, I think know, I've been I on know. the receiving end, don't you? I know, you? I mean, don't think I'm taking her aside or anything like that, but... Why don't you just stay away from her? Jenny, this might be a bit difficult for you to understand, but, um... See, Rita and I lived together for quite a long time. And I did care about her. In a funny kind of way, I still do. She thinks you hate her. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. You know that's ridiculous, don't you? Yeah. See, I know that I'm never going to change what Rita thinks of me, no matter what I do. What I don't want her to do is turn you against me. She won't do that. Good. And you do believe me, don't you, when I say that the only reason I went round there was 
because I still care for her and I'm, I'm worried about her. Yeah, I mean, I didn't understand before, but... But you do now. Yeah. Oh, 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 look at him, eh? Action man. You haven't even set the table yet. What have you done with Curly? Uh, he's gone to a meeting, so we won't be eating till he gets back. Oh, come on, Vera. I'm flaming starving woman. Well, starve. It'll do you good. Hello, you must be Mr Upworth. Hiya. Yeah, this is him, yeah. Head of the household. Nice to meet you, lovey. Anyway, you sit yourself oh, down, love, while I clear this lot away. Oh, oh. Hey, Kimberly was saying as how she likes a stone cladding. Oh, aye. Very distinctive, innit? Well, it does make the house stand out. Ah, well, that were the idea, lovey. Yeah. Kimberly's at Ryland, you know, on the park. Oh, yeah. I used to window clean round there, you know. Really? Oh, oh, so you're a window cleaner, then? Oh, I've done all sorts, you know. I've done, uh, cab driver, window cleaner, barman, bar seller. Yeah. Oh. Only thing is, they were never any good at any of them. <laughs> Lovely sense of humour, the wife. So, your little girl that fancies Curly, then, eh? Well, he <laughs> seems very nice, yeah. Hey, talking about jobs, he's had a few, you know. He were a bin man once, did you know that? No, I didn't. Oh. Yeah, but it were only temporary. Ah, well, they sacked him, I. Daughter door salesman. Oh, you mean like selling encyclopedias? No, 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 no. You, you, toilet brushes and disc gloss and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, but that was when you were studying. What sort of an impression are you trying to give her, eh? I'm just telling the truth, aren't I? I like the lad. Of course I do. I mean, why else would we take him in when the woman he was living in walked out on him and he got thrown out of his flat, you know, because he couldn't afford oh, to pay the rent? Jack! What? Really? All that happened? Oh, yes, it did, I. Huh? Oh, setting a notice of him. Oh, no, I mean, it's really interesting, isn't it? It's like something you read in a novel. Dead romantic, bless him. That's lovely. Ah. Oh. Oh. Well, carry on, Jack. Tell him all. Oh. Alan, we're in the pub this dinner. And, well... Actually, he helped us out of a spot of bother, and it just made me wonder. Oh, no. Look, Rita, I know how you felt when you thought he'd broken into the cabin, but now we know it wasn't him. I was wrong about that, so maybe I'm wrong about him altogether. Well, yeah. <laughs> do you like a drink? No, I won't, I. Right. Well, you'll excuse me if I do. So you're another that's joined the Alan Bradley fan club. Rita. What exactly has he said to you? Has he actually made any threats? No. No, he's far too clever to do that. But he is threatening. And when I've been in here with him, just the two of us, he's threatening then all right. And you're sure that's not just your interpretation? Oh, come on, Bet. Can't you see what he's doing? Isn't it obvious? The way he's turning you all against me, making you believe it's all my imagination. Well, one of these days you'll walk in here and find me stretched out, and I suppose that'll be my imagination too, will it? Are you still going on about me, Dad? Jenny, that were my fault. Well, I've just been to see him, if you're interested. I don't want another row with you. Rita, he cares about you. He really and truly cares about you. Then why doesn't he leave me alone? You don't leave somebody alone if you care about them. Tell her, Beth, tell her that he isn't a monster. She has been telling me. Everybody's been telling me. Then why won't you listen? Why do you think that only you know what he's like and everybody else is wrong? He's a good man, Rita. He's paid for his mistake. He wants to start again, but you won't let him, will you? Because inside your head, he's a monster. Well, it's you that's sick, Rita. You're the one that needs the help, not him. Well, that just about sums up what you're all thinking, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I think his life is dead. Hey, that'll be him. Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Watts. <laughs> I just invited Kimberly back for some tea. <laughs> well, I hope you don't mind. No, no, not at all. It's nice to see you. Say, I said it'd be chuffed. How did your meeting go? All right, were it? Yeah, we were discussing the reorganisation of the fresh food section, although a firm decision hasn't been made yet. We organised? And in what way, or should I not ask? Is it confidential? Ah, it's not confidential. I don't see why a bit of staff consultation shouldn't be in order. Bit of food will be in order before I pass out. Oh, all right. You two carry on talking while I put steaks on. Well, I'm sorry if I kept you waiting. So you should be. Ignore him. He's just in one of his moods. You'll be telling Kimberly about your fresh food section while I put tea on. <laughs> well, that's only if you want to, Mr Watts. I'd be delighted to, Miss Taylor. Delighted to. You see, 
What we're going to do is take all the Give me strength. Will you shut your face? Yes, Mrs. Duckworth. Certainly, Mrs. Duckworth. It's all right, though. I'll deal with these gentlemen. Right, lads. Come in for a nice quiet drink, have we? Uh, yeah, that's the idea. Good, then you're very welcome. What can I get you? Three pints of lager, please. All right, Gerald. I've had a chat with her. Oh, Rita? Yeah, only I don't think it's done a lot of good. She's in a bit of a state, to tell you the truth. Well, I think she's bringing it on herself. I don't know, Alec. I don't, honestly. She seems to have started putting the drink away as well. Oh, dear. Give us a light air, love. Right, love. It's quiet in here tonight. Isn't yeah, it? well, it's still early yet. That's Percy been in. No, not that I've noticed, but, hey, you might have to do with one of this lot. It was. <laughs> Not a patch on my purse. Eh? That's just 50p. Hello. Cheers. All right, Tina. Yeah, I am. Yeah, well, look, uh, I just wanted to say sorry if we've been giving you a bit of hard time, like. That's all right. No, I, I think we've been a bit out of order. It, it wasn't anything personal, just acting a bit daft, you know. So, uh, no hard feelings, eh? Go on, then. I'll let you off this time. Cheers. What is that? Well, they were quite nice, actually. Apologise for the way they'd been. What, just him? No, I, I got the impression it wouldn't be half of all of them. I'm glad to hear it. He's not in, then? No. So how long are we hanging on for? As long as it takes. Oh, presentation is very important. You can <laughs> double or even treble the sale of a product just by moving it to another shelf. It's all psychological, really, isn't it? Yes, but you don't want to make too many changes. You want to make your customer feel lost, you see, because most of them take the same route on every visit. Oh, they do. I've noticed that, you know. Well, this is absolutely fascinating. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> but I think I'll just nip down the road and have a swift half. Uh, hang on. Who's going to help me with washing up? Well, I thought you had enough help here, Vera. I'm not asking my guests to wash up. I don't mind, really. Well, I do, love. Anyway, happen you and Curly want to go for a walk? Hey, why don't you take Kimberly down to Rovers? Uh, yeah, if you want to. Only if you want to. I want to. Right, then, that's settled, then. Me and our Jack will do it washing up. You two pop down to Rovers. Right. <laughs> I'll just get changed. You won't be a sick. She'll wait for you, won't you? Of course I will. See, I said you were nice. I just can't believe it, me going out with Mr. Watts. Oh, Hey, so, what are you having? Get us half a lager. Hiya, oh, yeah. uh, pints of bitter and half a lager, please, Tina. And can I have those arrows, Tina, please? Oh, no, you're not still trying to beat me, are you? That's the man. You don't look right big. Well, he didn't have to be, did he, when he had his mates behind him? Here, I told you we'd meet again. Oh, yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, only this time I've got my mates with me. So? Do you want me to do about it? Hey! Oh! That won't wise, that. Yeah. Not wise yeah. at all! You stupid crap! Alex! Did you hear that? Did you stand for it? Come here! Get off! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Right! Right! That's it! Out! The lot of you! Out! Yeah. seen worse. Compared to some fights I've seen in here, last night's do were a vicarage tea party. They want operating on. They do operate on. What they do to Tomcats, that would stop them fighting. I'll tell Sally Webster that's what you want done to her husband. That daft little devil. You'd think him old enough to know better, wouldn't you? They're all the same, these young lads. They, they have no sympathy with any of them. Well, of course they're not. Them brickies were looking for trouble. You'd been warned and you ignored it. Well, what would you expect me to do? Pitch in and start scrapping myself? Of course not, Alec. Because you were operated on years ago. Hey, wouldn't you know it, eh? I have a night off, you get a lot of bother. Yes. Wouldn't you just, My Jack? Doesn't look that bad, though, does it? Morning, Mrs. Boss. According to Curly, it looks like a bomb site. You sound disappointed, Jack. Well, I reckon them fellas knew it were my night off. If I'd have been here, they'd have got the thrashing they deserved. Oh, would you have taken your specs off, Jack? Morning. Good morning. Morning, Tina, love. Well, I hope you're satisfied with your last night's work. You are. 
Hmm? I just wonder who pays for the damage, that's all. Are you saying I should have summer? Well, it wasn't me who smashed it. Oh, are you saying it was me? All I'm saying is that some people are more trouble than they're worth. Oh, come on, Alex, some people. It's me you're talking to and you're having a go. Yes, I am having a flaming go because since you've been behind that bar, there's been nothing but trouble. Look, it is not my fault that flaming apes come in here. Do you think I enjoy being grabbed and leered at? Look, what you don't realise, lady, is there's a difference between being personable and pleasant behind a bar and acting like matter flaming are. Hey, no, I'm gone, boss. That's a bit out of order. Oh, is it? It's only weeks since she had you jumping and dancing like a tin monkey and your wife brawling on the floor with her ear. That wasn't Tina's fault. Well, do you know, it's a funny thing, Jack. I don't think it was mine either. Like, this chair isn't my fault, but I'll end up paying for it. And do you know how much they cost? No, I don't know. Here, take it out the back and put it to one side. In the bin, shall I? In the bin? Don't be so stupid. Put it to one side for the insurance claim. And you... Just see if you can sort the light ales out without starting a riot. You talk to Tina like that again, you're going the right road for a smack around the face. You know that, don't you? Uh, if she tries anything like that, she'll be out. Not from her, from me. She doesn't have to put up with that. Oh, doesn't she? Cast your mind back. Why did all that trouble happen? Because the lads got fresh with her the other night. And why did they get fresh? Because she flaming well egged them on, that's why. She loves it. How many times have I heard you telling her she's to be pleasant and smile? That's what she does, she smiles. Yes, but she smiles like a red light in Hamburg. You can't blame lads for thinking it's a come on, they're only human. Human? If that's human, give me a zoo. Well, I thought we got one. Every time I see my bar stuff, I think I'm in with the primate. And on what she earns, it's a miracle she stops on at all. Yeah, the way she enjoys her job, what you on about? She's a barmaid. Incidents like last night, it's her stock in trade, she copes. She has to cope, you fool. She's no flaming choice. A cup of tea, Rita. Oh, for God's sake, Mavis, I'm not invalid. I'm only trying to help. Well, you'll help me more by taking that fawning dog look off your face. Oh, Mavis, I'm sorry. But just be normal with me, will you? It's a difficult time for you. Well, I'm not ready for laying out yet. Hello! Mm. <laughs> Derek, you're back early. Yes. <laughs> Finished, would you believe? Already? Yes. <laughs> one of the perks of being your own boss, you see, Rita. Oh. <laughs> Only I one call to make. Made it. The day's me own. Well, that's marvellous. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> marvellous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, what are you going to do with yourself then, Derek? Well, I don't know. But I was wondering, as I'm here, whether you might like a bit of time to yourself, Rita. I mean, you could toddle off and I could man the fort, so to speak. With Mavis, of course. Two-man fort. <laughs> well, one man, one woman fort. <laughs> now, listen here, you two. In spite of appearances to the contrary, I'm not stupid, you know. This charade of yours is flaming insulting. Do you know that? Rita? Of course you haven't finished work for the day, Derek. You've come back specially to suggest that I leave. Well, I don't see why don't you get the men in the white coat? They carry me out! Rita, love... I'm only trying to help. Derek's prepared to take the day off work. That's not such a bad thing. Oh. <laughs> so, it was like a western. Chairs flying, drinks going over, people being bashed in face. Oh, great. So curly, getting a crap though. Mm. What are you getting stuck in though, what are you? You know, I think Norman is secretly very brave. Do you know they're animals? You won't think they did to lad with glasses on. Ah, uh, Mrs. Duckworth. Oh, are you, Curly? Uh, <laughs> I mean, Mr. Watts. We're a bit short on sandwich spreads. Oh, are we? Oh, good morning, Miss Taylor. Hello, Mr. Watts. Oh. Hey, I was just saying it's a shame, you know, about your glasses being broke. Uh, yes, if you could just go and do these spreads for me, please. Oh, right, Mr. Watts. <laughs> hey, Curly. Bit hard, though, being manager in set with a shiner. <laughs> yeah. Miss Taylor. Yes, Mr. Watts? Yes. I'd like to apologise about last night, you know, the fight and everything. Oh, no, it was the best night I've had in ages. She reckons it's cutting out at speed. She reckons it's the plugs. I've checked the plugs and they're OK. So check the fuel pump. What are you going at? Gonna put me off my food, that I? Yeah? Well, don't look. I'm trying not to. It's like horror film, innit? You get drawn into it. Mm -hmm. Flaming typical, innit, eh? You're always in the flaming boozer, and the one time I need you, 
He wasn't there. Yeah, it'd be great if he had been. Customers walk in, see two of us looking like you. He'd run out screaming. <laughs> in your case, it'd be an improvement. <laughs> yeah. He had mates all over. We just waited while he was on his own. Then we hammered him. So you're pleased with yourself, are you? Yeah, of course. Well, we'll grow out of it. At least I think you will. I'm not so sure. Hey, come on, give up. It's a smug little sod, that Webster. He deserved it. He should have been there. Oh, no, I shouldn't. But I'm glad you did it anyway. Yeah? Yeah. Because for once there was a bit of bother around here that I wasn't involved in. <laughs> I'm not sure we should be going in Rovers. It's such a low dive now, fighting and God knows what. It's been a low dive ever since you've known it. It's never stopped you before. And if you don't like it, why don't you take your hand off my arm and head back to your gas stove? Oh, Percy, I can't let you go in there on your own, love. What are you looking so poor-faced about? <clears throat> How do you expect me to look? You could smile, couldn't you? Oh, I'm scared it'll start a riot. Yes. What sort of a greeting is that? What do you want, confetti? I want half a bitter and a civil tongue. And I'll have a light hair, love. And who's paying for that? It's my treat. I'll pay for Percy. They're not hard to find, you know, barmaids. Nor are Wallies. I hope you're suitably ashamed of yourself. You've got enough lager allowed around uh, without you uh, having them in your own street. Oh, give over, Mr Sugden. Kevin doesn't need that. All I know is, if we had national service, we wouldn't have these pub fights. She's treading a very fine line, is that lady. Hell's bells, Alec. Leave her alone for one minute, can't you? Troublemakers. I cannot stand troublemakers. You've a building site full of them across the road, and you pick on one of your own staff, you're pathetic. And what? If you doubt about you, you'd be across there to Morris Jones, instead of calling a young lass who's done now but try to look pleasant. Pleasant? Pleasant? Have you seen face on it? And whose fault's that? You're a coward, Alec Gilroy. It'd take summer to stand up to Morris Jones. It takes now to slag off Tina. Oh, right. How would I? <clears throat> right. You stop here. I wasn't going anywhere, Alex. What's this, son? You're bringing us a curry out. Look, it's not exactly a social call. Well, I can see you mean business. Where's Mr. Jones? He's a busy man. And so am I. You've got hey, a visitor. Don't the scaffold, will you? That Bradley bloke's taken all morning mixing a barrel load of compo. Get him on it. Now then, it's about last night. What about it? Well, it's just not good enough, is it? It's just a riddle, Alec. Oh, no, not telling me you don't know about it. Well, just tell me, will you? I've got work to do. Brawling. Over there in the Rovers. Fighting your labourers. Now, don't get me wrong, Morris. I'm, I'm not saying they're not welcome. Of course they are. They're, they're good customers. Very good, in fact. I mean, some of the best, but... Uh, but what? Well, I can't have brawling in that pub. It's not a brawling pub. Well, what's it got to do with me? Well, they're your workers. Surely you could say something to oh, them. Oh, come on, Alec. Do me a favour. Your staff went out mugging old ladies. Expect people to come to you to sort it out. You could say something, surely. I could say anything. It won't make a blind difference. Once they leave this side, they're nothing to do with me. I'm sorry, Alec. I'm not a nursemaid. Who was it? Bradley? No, it was... it was him over there and another one. Lads! What do you expect? Well, I've got to shift these scuffs on me own. Hey, you're Superman, aren't you? That was 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, give us a shout if you need any help. Don't worry, I will. Yeah, love, thank you. See you next week. Um, Rita, um, d d don't be upset, but uh, would you like to go to lunch? Hey, do you know, I thought the morning would never go. Yes, I would, thank you. I'd be very happy to take over. Thank you. Uh, and, Derek, uh, again, I'm very sorry I snapped at you, both of you, this morning. Oh, Rita, forget it. You go and relax and try and put that Alan Bradley firmly out of your mind. I promise. Oh, and, Derek, to make some sense of you having taken the day off, I think I will have the afternoon. Good. You do that, Rita. Put your feet up. Well, maybe. I've got quite a bit of shopping to do. Just go and get me coat. It was really kind of you. Is she all right, do you think? Well, you know she isn't. No, I don't mean that. I just thought I could smell alcohol.
Come on in, love. Part yourself in there, will you? What have I done wrong? You tell me. It's about the fight, innit? Well, it weren't my fault, bet honest. It was nothing to do with me. Now, I know that Alec thinks that I was egging him on, but honest, I didn't say a word. Listen, love, I know that, you know that. But little Alec, bless him, doesn't. And that's the problem I'm working well, on. Well, why didn't they shut up going on at me, then? Because, much as I love him, he's daft. But we'll sort that out, don't fret. Honest bet, there ain't a thing I can do right, is there? I've been there, Tina. Believe you me. I used to get it all the time. Blokes grabbing at me, leering at me, calling out smut every time I walked across that bar. If you ignore them, you're cold and poor face. Smile and you're a tart. Either way, you can't win. I've even had ale poured down the front of me frock to see which way it ran. Oh, God, but I mean, what the heck do you do? You go out the back and you change your frock. We live in a world full of little boys, Tina. If they see a woman who's even half decent, they're straight back in the nursery. You know, you, you just feel helpless, don't you? Ah, that's exactly the point. That's why they do it. Because you're helpless. You can't shout because they shout louder. If you hit, they can hit harder. All you can do is try and keep your dignity and get out the road at the first sign of any trouble. Now, I'm giving you my permission, no? My instructions. At the first sign of any kind of that trouble, you get right back in here and you stay back, all right? Right. Thanks, Beth. OK, love. What are you doing here? Go on back to work, Tina, love. What does she want in here? She just wants to know where she stands, that's all. On a very slippery road. Oh, that's... yes. Have you seen Jones? I have, yes. And? Maurice Jones can't be held responsible for his gang when they're off duty. It's right, what he says. So, you patted him on the back and said there's a free scotch when he wants one. I certainly did not. I bet you didn't get compensation. Well, of course I didn't get compensation. How could I ask for compensation? Well, you can't, can you? But anyone with an ounce of courage could. Look, I'm getting a bit sick of this bet. I've been to see him. What more do you want? I want to see a bit of guts, Alec. So stop picking on Tina and face up to the ones who caused the trouble. Right. Right. Say no more. Oh. See? Uh, careful, Sal. Any closer, you let the board. <laughs> Shut up, Mark. I'm concentrating here. You'll have to stare at... Oh! <laughs> you, out. All three of you. Hey? Come on, out. There's no place in this pub for roughnecks. What are you talking about? All three of you, come on. What for? Last night, fighting. I wasn't even here. What's that got to do with it? You're all as bad as each other. Come on, out, you're bad. We didn't start it. Oh, no, no, no. She didn't start it. You didn't start it. I did. It started itself, didn't it? Come on, let's have you. Out, you're bad. Come on, Sal, let's go. We've only just bought our drink. Look, Kev. I'm not drinking his beer there. Pour it over your head. Might cool you down a bit. Come on, out, and you're not welcome back. Yeah, we're not coming back. Well, what are you staring at? Here, drink that and don't say you never get given note. You wanted guts, you got them. You know, for a little chap, it can make a flaming big mess. Miss Bradley, he's in there, is he, my house? He's broken in. Yes, quick. It's all right, I'll do better than that. I'll radio the office please, to send them round. All right, love. Please. City 11. Uh, Kimberly. Oh, Mr. Watts, you made me jump. Um, you haven't seen Mrs. Duckworth about, have you? No, why? Do you want her? Uh, no, no, she's probably in the ladies having a sly fag. Yeah, she does smoke a lot, doesn't she? Yeah, well, I wanted to ask you something. 
If it's about those frozen beans, because they were like that when they come off trolley. No, no, they'll be all right. I think they must have been dropped. Look, the thing is, I enjoyed myself last night, and, uh, well, rather than uh, going out somewhere again in, in public, I thought we might go out somewhere, you know, a bit more quieter. Oh, Mrs Duckworth's got to be really pleased. Mrs Duckworth? Why not tell her? Uh, uh, no. N no, no. Don't, don't, don't tell her. Is it? Uh, yes, at my house, there. Uh, I thought the man was still inside, but he's not. We've just seen him on the building site. You saw him come out? No, but I know he did it. Well, oh, there's nobody in there now? No, I don't think so. Uh, I didn't want to go until you came. Yeah, there's nobody come out while we've been here. Right, well, let's take a look, shall we? Have you got the keys? Yes. Uh, do you need me now, love? Uh, no, and thanks, Don. Thanks mm. ever so much, That's love. Right. Don't worry, go on. Thank you, love. Right. Thanks, Don. Yeah. So, who do you think was in here, love? He's called Alan Bradley, and he's deliberately terrorising me. He's even taken a job over the road so he can be near me, so he can get at me. That's all right now. Now, just calm down. It's all right now. He's not here. You said it yourself. Yes. I'm sorry. Eric, just go have a word with this Bradley character, would you? Find out what he's been up to. Yes, sir. All right, love. Now, where's the damage? The tin's been moved. Yes. Well, it's normally in that cupboard, and it's been moved. And things are missing from it? No, there's nothing missing. Oh, so what's been stolen, then? Well, I don't think anything has. But it's been moved. Don't you understand? It's been moved. I see. The back door's open. Yes, that's how he broke in. See, this is the tin that the deeds were in that he took to try and mortgage my home. And he's been in a mood to let me know. <laughs> Do you see? There's no sign that this door's been forced, love. Well, no. No, he's good at things like that. That was his job, security. I see. He were in Risley seven months. And at the trial, they let him out. He tried to murder me. And then they let him out. I see. Right, <laughs> let's have your name then, love. You don't need to know what it's about. I'm just asking you where you were. I've been here all morning. Hey, I've been working with him. He hasn't been off the site. Ah. And what's your name? Eddie Ramsden. Listen, do me a favour, will you? If it's anything to do with her at number seven, just ignore it. She's a very vindictive woman. She's very infamy. Jamie, if I want to find Bradley, all I've got to do is look for the nearest policeman. I'm beginning to have my doubts about you. It's not my fault, Addy. I've been set up here. Has he been here all morning? He has. Never left the side. I heard there was a load of broken furniture. Not a load, Phyllis, just some. Terrible. I was wondering, would they be in open fire weather? <laughs> if you'd give us some to take home. Am I too late for some dinner? Oh, no, I'm sure we can find you something, Morris. Like your lads found something for us last night. <sighs> Look, I've had a thought about that. Last thing I want is bother between you and my lads. I'll do my best to stop them coming in here. All right, but I can't promise. Uh, no, no, it's not all right. No, no, we want the lads, Morris. <laughs> we just don't want the bother. Ah, right, yeah. It's called wanting your cake and eat it. Any hot pot left? Uh, Bet, would you... Uh... I just wonder how you'd feel, Mr Jones, if you suddenly found yourself next door to a building site with lads from it regularly coming in, causing bother, insulting your staff, threatening your customers, fighting with them and causing damage, and making damn sure that the place wasn't fit to sup ale in. They're going the right road to stop our trade altogether. Now, Ben, I wouldn't go that Well, I can far. see your point, though. Luke, uh, token towards the damage, OK? And my apologies. I'll have a word with the lads, say, if they want to keep coming in, they'd behave. How's that? That's great, Morris. Thanks very much indeed. Let me get you that drink, while Alec fetches you some hot pot. Yeah. We'll do our best, love. That's all I can say. I want him locked up. Do you hear me? Well, it's not just as simple as that. Don't you hear what I'm saying? I'm not safe. Are you sure you didn't forget to shut the back door when you left? Of course I'm sure. I'm not stupid. No, love, I'm, uh, it's easy done. That's all I'm saying. Look, you've got to do something. Well, it's hard to know what. Nothing's been stolen. <laughs> I don't know how we're supposed to arrest somebody for moving a biscuit tin. But he did that to frighten me. But you heard the constable. He's been on the site all morning. He has got two or three witnesses. Then they are lying. You've got to believe me. Love, the door hasn't been forced. 
Nothing's been stolen. And he's got an alibi. I'm afraid there's not much we can do. I'm sorry, love. Please, believe me. I believe you. I'm just saying that there's nothing I can do. Now, if you get any clear evidence, just get on to us right away. All right, love. She's got it in for that Bradley, hasn't she, sir? Seems to be some sort of revenge going on. You smell the booze? It, sir, yes. Very good. Compliments to the chef. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Morris. Are you a sporting man, I think? No. No, no, I'm not a gambler. No, no, what money I have, I've got hanging on to. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. I've just had a thought. If there's aggro between your customers and my labourers, why don't we get them to sort out the differences on a football field? Oh. Rovers versus builders. Five aside. Hey, that's a good idea, that. Then I've no doubt they'll be very thirsty after a match, eh? You're not thinking of business, are you, Alec? Uh, no. No, no, just fostering the spirit of harmony, Morris. <laughs> no, no, I, I think it's an excellent idea. <laughs> Don't you, Beth? Only one trouble, Alec. What? What's that? You've just barred half your team. <laughs> Jenny! Oh, Jenny, thank God you've come. Jenny! I'm now listening to another word you've got to say. Jenny! Jenny, me thinks I'm going. Jenny, don't go. Jenny! You're in it! Don't go! Jenny! Bitch, I'm going to hate you! Oh, God, Jenny! Right, cheers. For a publican? Sounds biblical to me, that. Never did care for that word, publican. Licensed vigilant, Morris. It's still out early. Even licensed vigilants go shopping, you know. Not shopping for a football team, by any chance. Now, why would I need to do that when I number some of the finest players this side of Old Trafford among my regulars? I heard you'd barred them all. Idle gossip, Morris. It's a shame to have to call off the match because you can't raise a team. I can raise a team. Anyone who says I can't raise a team's a flaming liar. That's my man. See you, Alec. Oh, be you there. You can see I'm on my own. You can let me put change in the till, surely to goodness. Mm. Some of us have got work to go to, you know. Can't you do that when we've gone? Heaven's sake, give me a money then, thank you. Yeah. So where's your mate, then? Oh, you tell me. I've been on my own since half past five. Uh, she'll be having a lion. <laughs> It's all right for some, minute, it, girl? Catch me having a lion. I hope she is, because she needs it. She's got a lot on her plate just now. Yeah, well, she's boss, isn't she? She's got you to skivvy for her. That's got nothing to do with it. Of course it has. She didn't have you as a skivvy. She'd be here now, wouldn't she? She'd have to. It's only skivvies like me and you that have to be up at craft. I thought you said you had work to go to. Oh, right. come on, Curly. Yeah, I hope Mrs Fairclough's all right. Oh, I'm sure she will be. But she's just having a lie-in like any normal human being can. Well, I can. Oi! Oi, Tina! Are you deaf or what? Are you talking to me? You're chewing a brick. I'll get you a deaf aid for Christmas. Save yourself some money. Buy some deodorant. Get off! Look, I just want to tell you something. Tell your cat. I'm sorry, OK. What? I'm sorry for, you know, in pub, fighting that and mucking you about. You're still a prat, though. Good morning, Flower. Morning. You don't she look a picture sparkling eyes, cheeks with into of rose. Have you heard him? Jacko, before your passion strips the varnish off the woodwork, a word in your shell like. Yes, boss. You're looking old, Jacko, says your little rat. It's apologised. 
Who's he? Eddie Ramsden, that big one that caused fight. So why has that got you looking like you've just drawn the divot? Cos he's cute. Fighting, smashing and insulting's cute. Yeah, but he's apologised. You'd need more than an apology after what he's put you through. Yeah, well, I might get it, might. But what do you mean, no chance? Honest, boss, Curly said at breakfast there's no chance of him coming back because of you barring Mark and Kevin. Oh, don't be simple, Jack. They're desperate to come back. All they need is, is some way of saving face. Well, I've offered it. They can come back if they play football. Yeah, well, I don't think they will. Of course they will. Where else are they going to drink? Flying horse. What? Spending the brass in the flying horse. The flying horse. Who in their right mind wants to drink at the flying horse? Surely said they like it. I better stay there, he said. But you did tell them about the football match. Yes, I told them, yes. And what did they say? Said you can stuff it, boss. <laughs> Sorry, boss. I'll tell you it's great at Gareth. I look out and see trees, water, boats. What more could a man want? <laughs> Apart from that. How things were you then? Oh, glad to hear it. So I suppose you're too busy for me to take you out to lunch then? Oh, you know, I mean, never chat, chew the fat. Oh, and I thought I'd like you to meet the new girlfriend. Oh. All right, mate, yeah, right, well, I understand it. Uh, some other time then, eh? Yeah. Keep busy. There she is, oh. the love of my life. Oh. What have you been up to? Not a lot. Made a few phone calls. Every retired person should have a hobby. How about macrame? You better watch your lip, otherwise I won't take you out to lunch. Yeah, well, Mike, I'm sorry. I just dropped in to say I can't come. Why not? I've got to meet Robert. Well, who's Robert when he's at home? My brother, Robert. I thought you said he was in Spain or somewhere. Yeah, well, he phoned. He's going to be at the airport at half one and I'm meeting him. Oh, great. Oh, Mike, you do the same for me. Yeah, all right, go. I don't care. Look, I'll see him into the Midlands and then I'll be back. I promise. All right, I said go, don't worry. Right. Well, I better go. I've double parked. Yeah, see you later then. Bye. Bye. <sighs> Is this dead? Yeah, go on, take it. Hey, I haven't finished with that. I'll get you a cloth, you can wipe it out. Go on, then. Suck the beer, Matt, why don't you? Uh. Stupid. <laughs> it's an idiot. Doing a lot of glass clearing today, aren't you, Tina? Oh, I'm not, am I? I'm not making myself obvious, am I? Only to a blind man. Oh, I hate myself. I'm so flipping obvious. Don't see much evidence of your football team in here. Eh? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> they'll be out training as like as not. Nothing like a sporting challenge for settling differences, eh? Are oh, I, I'm all for it, Bobby. Of course, if you were a gambling man, uh, I'd be having a few bob with you. No, that's not my style, Morris. Is that for a refill? Hmm? Yeah, go on. Right. Some people might think the reason you won't put your money where your mouth is is that you're not so confident. Well, that's a load of tripe for a start. Them lads of mine, you know, they could have all turned pro if they didn't mind. Well, I don't mean that. Like you said, you've got the best team this side United, but will they play for you? Well, of course they will. You sure? Sure about that as I am about breathing, that'll be one pound of five. If you're sure, it's a safe bet, isn't it? Huh? Bet? You can't lose. You've got a great team, they're definitely going to turn out. 50 quid for doing now. 50 pounds? Come on, I'll lick back your convictions. 50 pounds, you can't lose. Money for nothing. Your team against mine. 50 pounds to the winner. Money for nothing, Ali. 25. <laughs> well, it's a start. 25. Now, I tell you what, you ought to rename this pub The Spirit of Adventure. <laughs> Cheers. Rita? Rita, are you there? Good afternoon, Mavis. Um, I'm just a bit concerned about Rita. I wondered if perhaps she'd seen anything of her this morning. What should I have done? Well, I don't know. I just wondered if she'd looked into the rovers, perhaps. Well, she might have done. How am I supposed to know? Do you think I call the register? Oh. Hello, Mrs. Webster. Sally. How are you? I'm OK. What do you want? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's Kevin. Yeah? Uh, well, could I have a quick word? It'll only take a minute. Well, we are having our dinner. Well, like I said, it'll only take a minute. Well, you better come in, then. 
Thank you. Mr. Gilroy. Uh, Kevin, Mark. Sorry, uh, sorry to disturb your dinner, but I just wanted to catch you. <laughs> I'll bet you're missing Betty's hot pot, aren't you? Eh? <laughs> so? Yes. Yes, well, uh, what I wanted to say was... Uh, I think there's been misunderstandings. On all sides. Perhaps we've been a, a shade hasty. But, well, you know, just a shade. I mean, there are two sides to everything, aren't there? <laughs> yes, well, uh, what I wanted to say, was quite simply, was that I'm quite prepared to forget what went on the other night if you take part in this five side. Well, in other words, I'll do you a favour if you do me one. How about that? And, uh, and of course, you can drink in the pub whatever you want. All of you. I mean, you can't enjoy the flying horse now, can you, hey? I don't know what I like about the flying horse. It's being treated as only glad to see you. What about you, Mark? The beer's good in there, too. I think it's something to do with the landlord cleaning out the pumps. All right, all right. I didn't ask for a flaming double act. I'm just saying you can come back. Oh, that's very good of you. Well, it is, yes. I'm saying I'm prepared to forget. Forget what? Forget what? Brawling in my pub, smashing up the furniture. What else do you want? Yeah, and supposing we're not prepared to forget? You? Yes, us. You see his eye? That was done in your pub by the lads that you've got drinking in there now. Why do you think we want to come back? Yes, well, anyway, I'm, I'm talking to Kevin. No, you're not. You're I... talking to Sally. He was set on. He was beaten up for no flaming reason by a bunch of thugs. And he's the one that gets barred. And you say, come back and play football. You must be a loony. Is that how you two feel? Yep. Well, sums it up for me. What about you, Mark? Yep. Clear as a bell. Right. If you... What? Right. Just don't say you weren't asked. The three of you serving me with the light tail. Your turn, Jacko. Thought it might be. Now, is this a happy man or is it a sad man? Where's he been? Oh, to hell and back, Tina. No. Trying to get his football team together, or rather trying to save his face. Bunch of flaming deadbeats. Jack, I want to see you in the back. I'm serving, Ali. Soon as you've done. It's a sad man. Excuse me, Tina. Everything go according to plan, love? Smug little swines. I stood there flaming well being mocked. I ought to bar the lot of them for life. Well, there's no stopping you, Alec. Except common sense. Common sense? It'd make total sense. What would I lose if Webster and Co never set foot in this bar again? Well, at first count, four punters, a lot of ale sales and a football team. Football team? I could get a dozen football teams from my regulars. Well, I mean, you could, but I don't think Percy and Alf and a couple of drunks would be quite as good, do you? Uh, you wanted me. Half of this is your fault, you know. What was that, boss? I told you to tell him about this football match. You loused it up as usual. I only said what you said, boss. Oh, yes. And what was that? I told them fair and square. I said, you can come back. I said, Alec needs you. Oh, that's what you said, is it? In so many words. Yeah. Well, you were in serious error there, Jack. Because what you've got to understand is it's not me that needs them back, it is you. Because if I don't get them back here and play in football, you are in dead trouble. Understood? Yes, boss. Back to the bar, Jack. Yes, boss. Hey, Alec. And all this for a bet. You there, Mike? Yeah, just made a cup of coffee. Do you want one? No, thanks. I just had one with Robert. 
Oh, oh, what's that? Present from Big Brother? Yeah, typical afterthought. Bought on the plane five minutes before he landed. Still should smell a bit better than Pain Stripper. <laughs> How is he? Oh, full of himself as usual. There's a bottle of scotch as well. I said I'd give it to a friend. Oh, well, Mr. Robert. Cheers. When am I going to meet him? You? Why not? Do you want to? Yeah, bring him round for dinner tonight. Well, I don't know. It might be boring. Oh, I can handle that. Not for you, for me. I can just see the two of you competing about who's the cleverest businessman all night. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah, well, I count the dots on the wallpaper. I don't think so, Mike, honestly. All right. Have it your way, suit yourself. It's not that important, is it? No, it's fine. Well, why are you being like that, then? You're embarrassed about me, aren't you? What? You don't want him to meet me because I'm nearly twice your age. That's it, isn't it? Oh, my God. It's all right, I can on. understand it. Don't worry. That's stupid, honestly. I just don't think it would be a success, that's all. You'd bring out the worst in each other. Robert's been buying up half of Spain and he's so full of himself, it's unbearable. And I know you, you'd see it's some kind of threat to your manhood that someone's making more money than you. Who said he's making more money than me? You see what I mean? Look, I'm sorry. It's just that I get fed up being alone all the time. Look, bring him round, eh, Dawn? I promise you won't be a threat to my manhood. OK. But if it gets to be a contest about money, I'm leaving you to it. There won't be. Because when it comes to that, there is no contest. Oh, hello, Mrs. Pierce. Hello, love. I've been worried sick, though. Haven't she even let you know? No. You haven't seen Rita, have you, Mrs. Pierce? No, why? Is she missing? Well, I don't suppose she's missing. I suppose she's just forgotten to tell me that she was going to be out for the day or something. She's been getting very cavalier of late, has Rita Fairclough. I've a good mind to have a word. Oh, no. With not hearing from her and being on my own all day in here with the whole cabin to run, quite frankly, I'm ready to drop. Oh, don't worry, Mavis, love. I used to serve in cafe. If he can't cope, I'll be willing to stand in for your love. I didn't say I couldn't cope. Well, it's just the way you look, Mavis. You look as if you've scratched your nasty tables. Can I get you something? I mean, there's no point in holding grudges, is there, lads, eh? You're right, Jack. None at all. So tell the little tour round we don't bear him a grudge. If he thinks for one minute we're playing for his team, he wants his bumps felt. Has he got any bumps? Uh, yeah, but he is sorry, though. Sorry? You should have seen him this dinner time. If that's sorry, then I'm a flame and gaze it. Yeah, but he was hasty, weren't he? I mean, he sent me round to say he was hasty. That's bigger than a minute. And, and if you come back, he'll make it worth your while. How? Oh, uh, free drinks. Free drinks on my leg, Gilroy? He's desperate, kid. He can <laughs> stuff it. I've been beat up in his pub, chucked out and humiliated by him. Tell him to post his free drinks. Free drinks for all of you? Well, that's what his bum's feeling. Yeah, yeah, he's a little tall right? Plus, plus a personal apology from him, if not from him, from me. I'll tell you what, Jack. If we do come back to his pub and he says one word, one word out of order, we'll give him something to bar us for, OK? Absolutely, Kev, absolutely. Thank goodness, Derek, there's a light on. I wouldn't be surprised if she's been in there all afternoon, not bothered to contact you. Well, don't you say anything. Let me talk to her. You often talk to her, Mavis. I don't see it does any good. Oh. oh. Jenny, it's you. <coughs> Were you coming here? Uh, well, I'm coming to see Rita. Well, she's not in. Well, where is she, then? Well, ask her. How am I supposed to know? How can we ask her when we don't know where she is? I don't know where she is, and I don't care. I've moved out. Now, look here, you Don't you start on me. After what Rita Fairclough did to my dad, I couldn't care less if she was dead. Oh, come on, Robert. This is a 74. Honestly, thanks a lot, but I think I'll sit this one out. No one's going to take advantage of you. I'm sure. Oh, well, cheers. Good health. You know, I like you, Robert. Thanks. Yeah, you're making something of yourself. Just the sort of bloke I would have employed. Really? Yeah, you're keen, enterprising, just the sort of bloke I would have had on my payroll. Shame you didn't know me before you retired. Who said I retired? Haven't you? Then I misunderstood. <laughs> I'm just biding my time, mate. I'll be offering you a job soon, you'll see. Well, that sounds exciting. Could be. I bet you wouldn't be offended if I didn't accept. What's he turning me down already, is he? Not turning you down exactly. I just hope you'd understand that I might prefer trading in Mediterranean properties to running up curtains in Weatherfield. I've had the curtains bin, mate. 
Made me a lot of money. Now's the time to use it. Mm. And what is it next? Chair covers? There's a fortune to be made in the rag trade, son. Mm. Well, you'd need something to compensate. <laughs> He's a bit of a lad, this brother of yours, isn't he, eh? Oh, quite a lad. Well, I'll tell you what we're doing. See where you are in a couple of years' time, eh? One duff deal in your trade and you're on the dole. Oh, excuse me. That bit of pudding. What the hell are you Enjoy this at? man, do you do? Look, it wasn't my idea. It was Mike's. I knew you wouldn't get on. But you could at least try, Robert. I appreciate the food I or something. I do. It's quite nice. It's the company I find difficult. He's got his good points. Oh, really? Look, please try, Robert, for my sake. Look, how old is he? What's that got to do with him? Uh, do you take cream, Robert? With everything. Look, I must say, it's a very nice meal, thanks. You're an excellent cook. Not the only thing I'm good at, eh, darling? <laughs> Here. There's no sign of the Webster contingent. I thought you said you'd sewn it all up. Oh, it's early doors yet, Alec. Don't worry, they'll be here. Well, they better be, otherwise you won't. Have you got nothing else better to do than stand at a bar? Yeah, uh, I have. But the big fella here, he needs company. It's not company I need, it's peace and quiet. I have to put up with his mouth all day, you know. Well, why are you in here, then? Well, he needs somebody to hold his hand while he stands and gorks at you. Yes, can I help you? Uh, Tina, love, I'll get this. Uh, good lads, I knew you'd come. Well, we thought we'd see how it compared with the flying horse. <clears throat> nice day, Cor. See you about the bar, stuff. Ah, ah, Kevin. <laughs> Sally. <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome. I knew it wouldn't be long before you were back into the fold. <laughs> Are you serving them, Jack? Uh, y yes, Alec. What would you like, Kevin? Well, seeing it's uh, on the house, I'll have a pint, please. Yeah? A bit, uh, and, and you, Mark? Yeah, me too. You've got to often get them on the house in this place. Huh? That's mine and all. Yeah, I'm in. Uh, excuse me one moment. Uh, all right. What the hell's going on? You might have to tell them some of how else we're going to get them in here. You'll bankrupt me with this flaming lot. Is there a problem, Mr. Gilroy? What? Because if there is a problem, we can always go down to Flying Horse. They'll be very, very happy to serve us down there. <clears throat> no, no, there's no problem, uh, Sal. No, no. Uh, uh, would you have one yourself? A uh, small tonic, perhaps? No, I think I'll have half a lager, please, Mr Gilroy. And a half a lager. <sighs> Jack, a good man to take this out of your wages. This is going to taste so Excuse nice. me. <laughs> what? I see there's an invitation to enjoy the management's hospitality, and I wondered if it extends to all your valued customers. Percy, the day you put on a pair of shorts and dribble a ball down Coronation Street, I'll gladly buy you a drink. I always knew the time would come when I ditched the factory. What surprised me was it took so long. Aren't you bored, though? Bored? I've got a million things to do. Uh, it's just I'd have thought that for a man like you, unless he was making money, the days would seem pretty long. Oh, I can always make money. Not like you, though, flying around all over the place, Spain. I mean, who wants that? Quite a lot of people, as a matter of fact, luckily for me. Glad to hear it. Not my life, though. Living out of a suitcase. I mean, no home comforts. It's not that bad. And whereas you've been able to retire before you're 50, with any luck I could retire before I'm 30? Good as that, is it? I doubt if I will retire, man. No, because like you say, if you're not earning money, the days can be pretty long. And I enjoy it. There's a lot to be said for living off your wits. You'd be amazed at the speed property values increase once there's a development plan. Hmm. So what you're saying is, you keep your ear to the ground and buy up sites that the developers have got their eyes on, eh? Straightforward, isn't it? Yeah, no, but I mean, if it's as easy as that, what's to stop every Tom, Dick and Harry doing it, eh? Nothing at all. Mm. Coffee! No, oh, you are an angel. You cook the meal. Your big brother here has just been telling me how to make a million. Easy, isn't it, eh? I, I said it was straightforward, not easy. Oh, come on, all you're doing is a bit of buying and selling. Apart from a bit of cash up front, what else do you need? Nothing. There is one other thing you need. What's that? Intelligence. Black for you, Robert? Thanks. Mm. Derek. Derek.
You should have gone on the stage. It sounded as if they were your most favourite people in the whole wide world. They're prospects. They have to be my favourite people. Mind you, and Ellie pushed her off the balcony twice. Now you're talking as if you're thinking of chucking this job in. Until I do, you're talking to Miss ever so nice. <laughs> well, we all have to pretend we like people, don't we? It's what makes the world go round. You didn't try very hard last night with my brother. Takes two to tango. You don't like him? He's all right. You're very alike, you know. Maybe that's it. Yeah, I suppose I was a bit cocky when I was his age as well. <laughs> and you're not anymore, of course. No, I'm confident. He's cocky. The difference is I made a bit of money and it took a lot of time, effort and experience along the way. He's made it very quickly and very easily. I mean, he's full of it, which is natural. But I don't dislike him. No more than he dislikes me. Have you ever thought of giving it up? I'm always thinking of giving it up. A good go at coughing's the only exercise I get. No, not the fags. The trade. Chuck this business. Chuck the business? I'll chuck it the day they screw the lid down on me, and not a day before. But I mean, you don't have to put up with all this. Not in a normal job. You wouldn't be eligible for a normal job, you fool. Oh, what? Any road? Well, you know, all, all this coming in and creating breaking furniture up. Next thing you've got to apologise for barring them, got to grovel and give them free ale. I tell you, I bet I'm getting too old for all this. Well, you barred little Kevin. You're daft. Ah, little inoffensive Kevin. He was in the thick of it. He was the eye of the hurricane, little Kevin. Nifty little footballer, though. I'm told he goes past defenders like a whippet with three legs and a spring. Ah, well, he better be as good as he says he is, that's all. Oh, you like this? Huh? Ta da! Yes, all right, I like it. So, fellow I got these off can kick your lads out and all. Let's have them looking good when they trot out on the pitch, eh? After all, we're only doing it for the PR. Oh, is that what we're doing it for? I began to wonder. You're not backing down. I put a press release out to all the local rags. Don't tell me you can't get a team together. Oh, all we've got a team. Right, complete strip, five aside, your own slogan, 80 quid. To kit out half a dozen hooligans? I thought you'd jump at it. I'd sooner jump in cut. He would. No. There's no answer. Mavis, you know she's not there. Why do you keep working yourself up, ringing and ringing? Why? Why is she not there? How many more times, Mavis? <gasps> Because she's gone away. You're going to carry on being stupid, Derek. I'm not being stupid, Mavis. Now, look. She's made a fool of herself and she knows it. And being but Marita doesn't think she's made a fool of herself at all. She's convinced that man broke into the house. Convinced of it. And she's not a fool, not Rita. He broke in. Didn't steal anything. Didn't do anything. But things had been moved. Like the biscuit tin. He'd been there and she knew it. Yes, he broke in to steal her cream crackers. Well, maybe she's going a tiny bit crackers herself. Oh, I see. She's going off her head and she's vanished. So that's all right. There's nothing look, to worry about. You make about. it all sound so... Oh, look at the time. Should have been gone hours ago. <laughs> Bye, look. Morning, Mr. Dodo. Morning, Dodo. Can I have this and four of those chocolate bars, please, mate? No, not those, those. There we go. Not some. You all right, Mavis? Yes, yes, thank you. I, I just wondered... I wondered... You wondered what? I wondered why you've come all this way for your chocolate bars when Alf's right opposite. Well, the lads on the site are very particular, Mavis. And Alf doesn't stock this particular kind. Oh, doesn't he? No. Well, you'd better ask him to get them in for you, then. According to Bet, it's a bit of flash gear this strip they've got. According to Bet, she wants to keep this shut. I thought we were talking about a knock-up on the wreck. Next thing, we'll be having cold stream guards. A knock-up on the wreck? My lads are taking this deadly serious, 110%. Well, 
There's things to be settled on that picture. Like... Yeah, like 25 quid to Boris Jones for a start, but I'm not throwing another 80 after it. Where is your pride? Them lads are going out there to defend the honour of the Rovers' return. Are they going out in rags and tatters, are they? Well, they're not going out in 80 quid's worth of strip. You know, you disappoint me, Alec. I thought you had the style, the passion. I've got the style, I've got the passion. What I've not got is 80 quid to chuck around. I'm not a flaming developer. Hey, guess who's just asked me out again? Who? That Eddie off building site as I went past, but I think he's serious. What, Eddie the head case, Neanderthal man? Mm, for an head case, he's quite hunky. And? And what? And are you? I said you'll be lucky. That's probably what he was hoping. But maybe you've just kept him guessing. Oh, no. No wonder they laughed. Well, I mean, they roared. It was like Wembley. Well, at least when it's finished, it'll be better than looking at a factory wall. Oh, I don't know so much. One thing about that factory, past knocking off time, it made a nice, quiet little street. Now, uh, retail units. What's that supposed to mean, retail units? I suppose they mean shops. They could mean anything. Betting shops, takeaway, litter. Layabouts, hooligans, motorbikes every hour of day and night. You don't know that yet, Mr Sugden. I can see that development attracting the wrong kind of people to the area. What does Mrs Fairclough think? I don't know. Well, I'm surprised you don't. She's not usually backward with her opinions, Mrs Fairclough. And, I mean, she's got a, a retail outlet of her own and living opposite. Look, I don't know what Rita's opinion is, Mr Sugden, so I can't tell you. Perhaps she thinks that development's already attracted the wrong sort of person to the neighbourhood. If that's a crack at Mr Bradley, I think she's overdoing it. You don't want to go encouraging her. I don't encourage her to do anything. Look, if she'd have talked to me instead of going to the police prematurely, I'd have told her you didn't burdle that house. We have a neighbourhood watch scheme. And believe you me, it does watch. Well, it's a pity it doesn't watch a bit better, then. It would know what was going on. <coughs> Hello, cabin. Mrs Wilton speaking. Oh, yes, well, I'm, I'm sorry you didn't get it, but perhaps it didn't come in this week. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mrs Delaney. I know you're housebound, but there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, all right. I'll cancel it, then. Hi. Hi, Robert. Dawn tells me I owe you an apology. Does she? I don't know what you're talking about. He spent most of last night needling each other, but it was Robert's fault he started it. Yes, it seems I was rude, arrogant, offensive, insulting. Per many three of those and accept an apology. If I upset you, I'm sorry. Upset me? I think we both need to have a thousand other offences taken into consideration. Now, forget it. Like water off a duck's doodah. We'll see if you can have the sort of conversation ordinary civilised people have instead of clashing your antlers. I would like you two to get on, if it's humanly possible. Well, you keep saying things like that, we've got no chance. Ah, we? but if you'd have heard the way she was going on about you coming back from the airport... I did not go on. I just told you about Mike. By the time she'd finished, I thought you were running for president. <laughs> He's exaggerating. Brothers are always jealous of your boyfriend. True. Ever since I was 14. <laughs> oh, I remember him. The boyfriend you had when you were 14. What a wally. He was not a wally. It was just... Robert used to do this terrible imitation of the way he walked. <laughs> he followed us once all the way down the street doing it. You were awful. It's a good thing, too. I saved you from a fate worse than death. <laughs> or hitching up with a cockney wide boy in the rag trade. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's old enough to make her own mistakes now. Look, why don't you both come and have dinner with me? My hotel. Tonight. Great. Then you can show me your takeoff of the way I walk. <laughs> <laughs> we are the champions! I get this lot. Dead flash. It's a bit, isn't it? Hey, look at them. Uh, five pints of best when you've a chance. Well, if you behave yourself, I'll see what I can do for you. Oh, I've got a good idea what you could do for me, love. Hey, I've said about that. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, miss. Love, sorry. Don't like it, does he, eh? When somebody else is taking the rise out of his gear. Hey, 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 save the Bruce Lee stuff for its proper place on the football pitch. See, they're getting almost to be civilised. Yeah, well, considering their past behaviour, it's flaming hypocrisy, if you ask me. That's what civilization is, you big blamange. Organised hypocrisy. No more, no less. I don't know where she gets them from. I really don't. Have you thought any more about the strip? I'll have to get back to this fellow if you want it. Oh, no, 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 they wouldn't want to change their strip. Oh, no, not with having such a good season, you know. <laughs> you know what they say, change your strip, change your look. <laughs> they don't even wash it, you know. No, a lot of the opponents are overpowered by the smell alone. 
Oh, come on, lads. I got you the free drinks, didn't I? All right, but what are we going to be wearing? Yeah, when we come trotting out onto the old turf. I've seen you on the wreck on a Sunday morning. You've never been that flame in particular. Yeah, cos we don't usually play that lot. I mean, come on, Jack. Theirs is all right, innit? Yeah, we're not going out there looking like a bunch of herberts. Oh, come on, lads. I've tried it. There's no dice. Yeah, we'll go and try him again. Only this time, tell him. It's me and there's Henry Kissinger. Some people seem very quiet today. Good job. So, who's saying they won't turn out? That lot, all of them. Right, I've, I've had this business up to here, Jack. No, hang on, hang on. Think about it, Alec. It's the prestige, isn't it? They are playing for the Rovers' return. All they're saying they just don't want to look rubbish, that's oh, all. Right, right. Well, fine. They don't go out there at all. Forget it. The game's... Oh, God, that's going to look great, isn't it? That mob don't even have to kick a flaming ball. They just put the strip on and we roll over. So one, Talk about a laughing stock. <laughs> Nothing from her. Not a word, nothing. Well, I'd have looked down Viaduct Street and their garage is all locked up and everything. Do you know, I hadn't thought of looking. Well, you can see in the crack of the door and her car's still there. What are we to make of that? I don't know. <sighs> Should we be going to the police? No. But she's disappeared. Maybe it's, I've had enough of the police. Anyway, all we know is that she's not there right now. I mean, there's no reason to think that anything bad has happened to her. Are you sure there's no reason? What do you mean? Well, I haven't been to the house, but you must have. You must have been back there. Yes, I have, and it's all perfectly normal. Are you sure? Did you look everywhere? Well, no, I didn't look everywhere. In Rita's bedroom? No. But if you like, I will do. Well, I don't know. You tell me. How are we doing it, or what? Mm. Oh, I play. Well, so will I, but I'm not playing with a man down. Shirts and old shirts. Well, you were Jack. I can still put my boots on, you oh, know. Right. <laughs> it's about all he can do. By the time he's laced his boots up, he'd be knackered. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy five beside him. There's no idea it'll kill him. Yeah, but who is that it's any good? Wow. Well, it's Percy. He must be good. He was selling me <laughs> the other night how Kenny Dalgleish was easily to neutralise. Mind you, I think Rommel will come into it somewhere. <laughs> yes, but uh, Rommel's not available, is he? Yeah, but who is? Well, is uh, Willie Stevenson. He's good. He's a flying horseman. I thought we were getting regulars from Rovers. Oh, you're splitting hairs there now, aren't you, eh? I'm sure he's had a drink in the Rovers before now. Alright! Hey, Kev. I want to diff up an escort van, what you got. Do you mind, Gazza? We're in the middle of talking here. Well, if talking's all you're doing, you can give us a hand. Have yourself, Gazza. You know what scrap is. All right. Stands out of the mile, doesn't it, eh? What? Him. It's a Jesse. I can always tell. Oh, no, that's Gazza. Oh, aye. Hey. What type of animal's a Gazza, then? It's King Kong with a driving licence. Mm -hmm. One of the banger racing lads. Mm. It's a pity you don't drink him rovers, isn't it? I mean, I don't know if he plays football or not, but, well, it's either a Doberman or him at back for my money. Well, you know. Does he play football? Yeah. He only signed phones for the county, didn't he? I mean, didn't make it. Ended up playing for the Lancashire League or something like that. Well, until he got suspended. You kidding? Ah, what I heard, he got shown the red card. I mean, that would have been fine. Apart from nutting the linesman <laughs> on the way off. <laughs> <laughs> Makes Vinnie Jones look like Mother Teresa. <laughs> oh, Gazza! He's been drinking his rovers for years, hasn't he? Eh? Hey? Years. years. No need to look like that, Mavis. There's nobody. Well, was there any sign of anything? No, but I'll tell you this much. I'm sure she's packed her bag and she's gone away of her own accord. She's not been kidnapped, drugged or dragged out screaming. How can you be so sure? Because a little bag of makeup wipes is gone. She always has it hanging by a mirror and it's not there. And a moisturiser's been taken. Oh, I'm not sure that's conclusive. It is, Mavis, if you think about it. And a suitcase has gone off the top of the wardrobe. I'm sorry. You're being intelligent and I'm being stupid. I was just so worried whether she'd been... You know, but... Or fled into the night. <laughs> you, you don't flee into the night with your makeup wipes. Well, you're quite a detective. Can we go now? All right, all right, you've all been going on about the strip, and fair enough, I've come round to thinking that maybe you're right. Oh, good. But, but, but... 
we don't want just ordinary football gear, do we? Yeah. 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 No, we don't. We want something smart, distinctive, that puts over the message we want to get across. Right. What, that we're, we're a team of rabid killers? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that, no. But that we are a team. The Rovers team. Yeah, right. Oh, hey, anyway, yeah. some butters to keep your strength. Oh, well, 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 oh hang on. Hey, hand them round. Right, I don't want any pickles on carpet. Right. No, right. Well, well, well come on. Now then, look. Isn't this terrific? You don't seriously want us to play in that, do you? I don't get sniffy with me, not now I've been talked into it. It's quality gear, is this? Oh, are you guys that were coming? Yeah. Oh, we'll go through all of them in there. So, mm. No, I found him wandering around. I thought, well, he's a likely character, I don't think. So I challenged him, friendly like, but letting him know. Uh, should I call for help? Mm. Nice to meet you, guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is Keely, he's the skipper. Hi, mate. Oh, and uh, this is Alec. Oh. You better get to know him, because you're supposed to be one of his regulars. Oh. He runs the pub. All oh, right, the free ale man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be a regular, all right. Glad to meet you. Oh, Thanks. You Cheers. Hey, buddy, tonight. Of course she's done it before, just gone off. There was that business with Len. No, she's not the world's most responsible woman. But this is the first time she's not rung up. Oh, Derek, you don't know. She's terrified of that man. Truly terrified. Even if he hasn't done anything, it's because of him. All the same, if she's forever calling the police down on him for no reason at all, she makes herself look a fool. She's gone flitting off because she can't face people. Well, why wouldn't she ring me? Probably to punish you for not believing her. You? Jenny and everybody for not taking her side. Yes, and what if she's going to chuck herself off Beachy Head just to punish us all? Maybe. People who are going to chuck themselves off Beachy Head don't take their moisturiser with them. Now stop worrying so much about her. Worry about yourself. She's treating you very badly. Trouble about your way of making money, you spend all your time making something else. I could make a million in the rack trade in 18 months. I could. Hmm. But the last thing I do is manufacture. Really? Mm. Get somebody like you to do all that stuff. And I'd pay you so little, you'd hardly believe it. I'd believe it. From what you're always saying about the retailers, he seems to have got the idea. He's already talking like a retailer. So how do you expect to make your first million? Then? Oh, it's fashion, right? People are always going to be interested in the latest name. So you start with half a dozen shops and a flash name. So long as it's new. Flash. Why not? There you go. Little logo with a flash on it. So, what's new? Good question. You've got to grab their attention. So you sell skirts to men. Only you call you call them sarongs. Now it's sexy when you get used to the idea. <laughs> You're gonna sell sarongs to blokes in Britain. Why not? Anyway, what does it matter? The press will love it. Will we get coverage? And will we be shifting shirts and trousers, which is what it's all about? I can't really see Mike and I'm so wrong. Well, you've seen me in one. Club mad? Yeah, not in Piccadilly, though. Anyway, 18 months in, I sell to the big boys and get rich. You're geared up to making all those sarongs that nobody wants anymore. You're crazy. Maybe you could make a million except for one thing. Where well, are you going to get enough cash to open a chain of shops? Country's swilling with money. If it's that easy, why aren't you doing it? I've got an even easier way to make money. No, I give you that idea. You know the rag trade. Get yourself in the clever end instead of the sweaty end. I got out of it, remember? Smart. Now, tell me how to make a million in my business. I have no need to. I'm sure you're just about to tell me. We need this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we need the shirt. Please. Yeah, but we'll yeah. the organisation. The fella sitting next to Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just treat him in every way like a regular. In fact, treat him like a long lost flame in brother. And what's his name, this long lost brother of mine? I can't remember. Well, I suppose we were never that close. <laughs> well, this is a rare treat out for a drink with me husband. Oh, come on now. Oh, it is. Do you know, you've been in PT every night this week. Oh, is that a record? And you've not been dragged back to the office. Is that a good sign or a bad sign, do you uh, think? How do you mean? Well, where the paper's concerned. Well, it's a good sign, I hope. Yeah, it means things are getting back to normal. Mm. Good. Maybe we can get back to normal as well. <laughs> what is normal? Oh, just being dull and boring and coming to the pub. I like it. I think things are just quiet at the moment, that's all. I enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> right, here we are, lads. Hey. Hey. Cheers, Alex. See Keep you. him coming, Alex. The road to victory is paved with gestures like this. Uh, road to ruin, you mean? <laughs> yes. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Boris. I don't think I can let you in. <laughs> Not while my lads are in training. 
My lads do a lot of that kind of training and all. I don't think there's any secret to it. Vasilo, how's your mother going on? Gazer it is. Oh, they can do wonders for it nowadays. Give them my love. <laughs> we have got a match then. Oh, too right. And then, of course, there's the little matter of the wager. You've not forgotten, have you? I've not forgotten. Oh, for a minute there, I thought you were going to slip out from under. What? You was good as owe me 25 quid. Oh, all right. You wouldn't like to make that 50, would you? Get on. <laughs> Remember that place? Mm. Eating tapas down the road from Fuangarola? <laughs> that is the place to eat. The pig panther. Right, I'm going to burn this. No, let's have a look. No, you can see this one. You can see more of the view in that one. No, I see. So the idea is to buy a bit of land that developers want next. I can't see it being as easy as that. Oh, well, that's the game. Those are the rules. Simple. How do you know which way they're going to go? Well, it's on the coast. Cuts the possibilities down 50% straight away. They ain't going into the sea. If you know where they're going to go, they must know before you do. So why don't they buy it, the developers? Because they want to minimise the borrowings. You tie up a lot of cash while you're putting up hotels, villas and the rest of it. Yeah, but the really big boys must be buying land ahead of time, surely. Oh, that's the lovely thing. You get yourself one piece of the jigsaw, and if they've already got the rest, they really don't care what they pay you. Yeah, I see. They, uh, they look at the average, and then they're happy. You with me? I wouldn't mind being with them. Have you ever been, uh, landed? If that's the right expression. With a bit of land that no one wanted. Never. Unless you buy something really stupid, it's just a question of waiting. Uh, this place I'm looking at now, do you know Fuangarola? It's just a filling station down the road, but it comes with a slice of hillside and a view to knock you dead. There it is. Mm. And you're not interested in flogging petrol, right? 18 months from now, it'll be some piece of jigsaw. If the rest of the hill was a uh, reindeer, this bit is the red nose. A million? Hmm. I could be interested in something like that. I bet you could. I'm not saying I'd jump at it, but I wouldn't mind weighing it up. Yeah. I wouldn't mind putting some money in something like that. Sorry, sorry, you've misunderstood me. I don't have a problem raising that kind of money, all right? If you want to play this game, deal yourself in somewhere else. <laughs> Come on, Robert. Mike only said he'd be interested in putting up some money. Well, you? find your own piece of jigsaw. And it might be an idea to ensenale hablar español antes de comenzar. Huh? It'd be a good idea to learn Spanish. I've no need to. I speak the international language fluently. No, this is on me. No, no, I'll get this. I'll tell you something else. I'll make a million in the property game a far sight quicker than you will in the rag trade. And you can put money on that. We are the champions! Hey, the only thing you're gonna be are losers. Yeah, by a mile. Is it right they call that goalkeeper of yours, Dracula? Because he hates crosses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Your keeper will think he's in front of a firing squad. Yes, yeah, so up yours. Oh, and I thought she were a lady. Oh, she's no lady, she's Webby's wife. <laughs> 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 we'll see who's laughing tonight, eh? Hey? Yeah, it's gonna be us. We'll see you oh dear, better you than me, darling. We can catch things off an oily rag. <laughs> Yes, boss. So thoughts just occurred to me. What's that, boss? About the game tonight. Who's referee? Are you indicating ignorance, or have you got a ferret up your trousers? Me, boss. I'm refing. You? That's right, Alec. Well, A, do you know the first thing about referee in a football match? And B, aren't the opposition going to object, seeing as you've been putting it about your managing our lot? Well, there's not much I don't know about the national game. I mean, I've watched Jamil many a time on match of the day. Plus, them dingbats over there haven't put his ref up, have they? So, the man with the whistle is king. Have you got a whistle, Jack? No, I haven't, Alec, but I thought you might nip out and get us one this afternoon. It's insurance, Alec. Look, Jack, we are definitely going to win this game, aren't we? Win? When my lads run out of that pitch tonight, they'll have the skills, they'll have the belief, the right attitude. 
They will be invincible. You're after Alex Ferguson's job at United, aren't you, Jack? Come on, admit it, eh? Oh, you're fucking me like No, actually, it's Mel Meeting's job at Man City. I wouldn't mind. I'm in the area today, so uh, if you feel like taking me for lunch at that little Italian place in the precinct... It's only a joke. Butty at the Rovers will be just as acceptable. How can you think of lunch anywhere with Rita still missing? Oh, she's not missing, Mavis. She's just absented herself oh. for a few days. Of course she's missing, Derek. All these say she's missing. Bills, letters from the taxman, the bank, the wholesaler. Rita would never have gone away without telling me what to do with her mail. Never. She'll be back today, Mavis. All refreshed and exemplary again. You see if she's not. Derek, you have an amazing capacity for ignoring unpleasant facts. And you, Mavis, could find an unpleasant fact in a joke book. I'll see you in the Rovers for lunch. Uh, if Derek's responsible for that face, I shall run after him and clock him one with my clog. Really? I know. Rita's run off with a toy boy and she keeps sending you postcards from Acapulco. What's up, love? It is Rita. She's gone missing, Dad. Missing as in disappeared? Yes. You mean she's not landed back from her paper round this morning? She's been missing for two days. Two days? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. She's not been here. She's not at home. There's a suitcase and some clothes missing. Well, you know what she's gone and done, don't you? What? She's gone out at Rhoda Gruesome Bradley. And can you blame her? The strokes he's been pulling, she'll be forgetting him in Arrods or somewhere. Are you stupid, too? Pardon? Mm -hmm. Rita would never have gone to London or anywhere else without telling me. She wouldn't just abandon me and the shop and everything. She just wouldn't. Well, she might have just got to the point of saying to hell with it. I mean, it's not unheard of, Mavis. I know that only too well myself. Oh, no, not Rita. She'd have told me a, a note, a phone call, something. She wouldn't just vanish into thin air like she was. I think you should be telling all this to somebody else, don't you, love? The police. Dead right. He's really got you going, hasn't he? Got me going? Who has? Robert, a villa in the sun and all that. And here's you with money to burn, catching your death in wet weather field in November. It would be pleasanter in Spain, I'll grant you that. So when are you going to buy a villa in Fuengarola? Hang on a minute, I just bought this place. That cost me an arm and a leg. You can afford to be a two-homes man. How do you know? Because I do. And if you should decide to top up on your tan, my boss has got some great contacts in the Spanish property market. You trying to get rid of me? No, I'm after a commission. You learn quick, don't you? How long have you been in the property business? A week? Robert isn't the only one in our family with a brain. Well, I'll see you for lunch. Yeah, probably. Well, don't put yourself out or anything. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hey up lads, uh, trying to build your strength up. You need some more spinach. Hey, it does look a bit like Popeye, does Platty. Oh I. What's the difference between your goalie and Cinderella? Go on. Cinderella got to the ball. Yes, gentlemen. Pint. Two pints, two mineral waters. What's your leg? Was having mineral water? Well, you and him, no booze for you two today. You're kidding. Only fancy two hours in dirty glasses. Two mineral waters. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll make up tonight. After we've murdered them. Yeah. Hey, talking about building themselves up, who's the big lad sitting with Kevin? No idea. <laughs> Hello, Ali. <laughs> What's that? A big fella sitting with your players over there. Yeah, well, him? Oh, uh, uh, Jack, do you know who he is sitting with Kevin over there? Yeah, that's Gazza. You know Gazza comes in here with his mum and dad. Loves his family, does Gaza. Oh, of course it is, of course. It's Gaza. Gaza. Yes, I didn't recognise him, you know, with his haircut. He's playing for you, isn't he? Eh? Hey? Playing for the Rovers, is he? Is he, Jack? Well, he insisted. I mean, him being uh, a regular, I couldn't very well refuse, could I? I've not seen him in here before. Me neither. Right, well, he's a big lad. It is football you're playing, is it? Not rugby league. Hey, tell you what, Gazza, looks like they've clocked you. Yep. The opposition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the geezer I'm marking. It's old chap on the end. 
About the game tonight, Mr Gilroy. What about it, Percy? Have you got an official, a referee? Because if you haven't, I'm your man. Deep knowledge of the game and an actual air of authority. No, I'm sorry, Percy, you're too late. I'm refing tonight. You what? Like I said, I'm refing tonight, as a matter of fact. I've just been and got me whistle. Little belter. You must be joking. You refereeing, you're this lot's trainer. Manager. No way. Oh, and who do you choose? One of your flaming mob, eh? Hey, both? Uh, yes, there would seem to be an element of bias. I mean, unintentional though it may appear. Well, you didn't mind trying to foist him on us, though, did you? You know, this match is beginning to stink. <laughs> what evidence have you got to support? Yes, what evidence? you got giant haystacks there suddenly popping out the woodwork. Now you're trying to put a ringer in charge. Yes, I yes. resent that. Uh, excuse me. What do you want? If you're looking for a completely impartial referee, I'd be happy to oblige. You? What do you know about refereeing? Oh, I've got quite a lot of experience, actually. At, at school, you know, when the teams were being picked, I was always the odd one left. Can't think why. So I usually ended up refereeing. Whistling Wilton, they called me. Whistling Wilton you'll be again tonight, Derek, if these gentlemen have no objections. Have you gone potty, boss? Shut up, he's a better bet than you because he's thicker. And uh, here's your whistle, Derek. Oh, thank you. Uh, do you mind? Whistling Wilton rides again. <laughs> yes, I, I see what you mean. It's really going to shoot up in value. Mm. So I'll leave you the brochure and you can have a look at it. Thank you. Okay. Right. I've given you up. I had things to do. Where are you taking me? Ah, well, I've got to go to London. London? What for? Well, I just... I've got to see a few people, you know, a few friends. Oh, I get it. Robert's not got you hankering after a villa in Spain. He's got you itching to be back in harness, hasn't he? You're getting bored of doing nothing. You know, a woman's intuition never ceases to amaze me. How long will you be gone? Well, as long as it takes. I could come with you. I've got a few days off. No, business is business. I'll, I'll see you when I see you. That's if I'm still here. Don't miss me too much. Weatherfield Police. I, I want to report a missing person, please. Oh, it's you. <laughs> what else did you expect? When the station gets a call from you or Mrs. Fairclough, the message goes out. Get crying. Well, I'm sorry. Did I ever tell you I used to take papers from this shop? No. Yeah, when old Biddulph had it. Oh, you really? Now then, what's all this about Mrs. Fairclough going missing? She is missing. Tell me about it. Well, it's like I told the officer on the phone. Our civil service likes everything in triplicate. We like people to repeat themselves. Very often they can't. Well, I haven't seen Rita for three days now. Oh, have you tried? Tried? Seeing her? Of course I've tried. When she didn't come in, I went round to the house. Eh? It was empty. Hmm. Where's Jenny? Well, Jenny's not living there at the moment. <sighs> when asked why at this stage, it might just complicate things. So, how was it? What? The house. Anything disturbed? No. There was some clothes gone and a suitcase, a small hold -all. So, wherever she's gone, she's probably gone of her own volition. Taking her clothes on. Yeah, but she hasn't gone in a car. That's still in the garage. Well, have you been asking anybody if they've seen her? <laughs> Saw her leave the house? No, they'd have told me if they'd seen her, wouldn't mm, they? Not necessarily. Not if they didn't know she was supposed to be missing. Not supposed. Is missing. Look, that's all her mail. Now, if she wasn't missing, she'd have opened it. Oh, something's happened to her. I know it has. Now, like what? I don't know. Look, let's get things in perspective, eh, Mrs. Wilton? Now, you know and I know that Mrs. Fairclough's had a rough time recently. Well, not just recently. 
for a good few months. Some of it imagined, maybe, but most of it not. And presumably she's had a bust up with Jenny as well. Has she? Yes. So, would it be very surprising if she'd run for cover somewhere? She's a mature woman, free to do what she likes. Oh, she's got the money. Oh, she would have told me. We all like to think we're skin close to somebody. But as often as not, it turns out to be an illusion. Up here's a very private place. Look, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll give her a few more days. Oh. Give her a chance to realise how much worry and trouble she's causing. And she'll come back looking all sheepish and feeling very sorry for herself. I've seen it a hundred times. All right. If you say so. I do. And you look after things here in the meantime. Well, it's probably another reason why she's just skipped. She knows everything here's in good hands. Thank you. Oh, and I'll go and see the bloke. I think nicked the badge off my car. Should enjoy that. Cheerio. Bye. Oh, Mr. Wilton. Been out and about flogging novelties, have you? <laughs> Takes all sorts. What do you want? I've reported Rita missing. Oh, maybe. It's all right. He doesn't believe me. Nobody believes me. It'll be too late. <laughs> I, I was going to tell you I won't be in tonight. I'm refereeing a football match. Hey, Les. Have you seen their strip? Oh, oh, I've been blinded. Hey, yeah, yeah, you never mind the strip. You watch the feet. Yeah, they don't call me Twinkle Souls for nothing, you know, mate. And they call me the destroyer. Yeah, look at the faces there, eh? He's a bit big, though, isn't he? Size don't matter in five aside. It's control and speed what counts. Just watch me nutmeg him. Be like his nail to the ground. <laughs> right, boys, gather round. What for? Team talk. Oh. Yes, Jack. Right, now, remember what I said. Keep it simple. Zonal marking. What does that mean? It doesn't involve you, Curly. You're the flaming goalkeeper. Unless you want to go and cripple there, keeper, Curly. <laughs> right, lads, I want one-touch football on that part today. Kevin, Mark, out wide. Martin, Gaza, at the back. But always ready to funnel into space when required. Mm. And uh, let's vary it a little bit, eh? Chandley odd pass from the back, eh? Have you got that, Gaza? Yeah, I think so. I don't forget, lads. Play one game at a time. This is the only game we're playing. Might not be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Oh, Tip right. top, boss. Oh, good, good. Now, just remember, get out there and sock it to them for the greater glory of the Rovers' return. Not right. to mention me, of course. <laughs> and Curly, yeah? just so you remember, you're allowed to use your hands. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Very smart, yes. Good luck. <laughs> hey, has he got a bat on us or what? I don't know about him, but I have. Right, everybody, the drum beats for battle. Come on, then. All right. Now, remember, it matters not to win or lose, but how you play the game. Yeah, you can tell them what boozers are, can't you? They've all gone to this daft football map. Yep. Give us a packet of fags, love. I thought I had a spare packet and biscuits in, but, well, he must have found them. I hope they win, don't you? Well, they seem pretty confident, V. Yeah, well, I don't know how Jack's sulking all week. You know, my dad when City used to lose. He used to go to bed for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> They've got some daft crazies, fellas, haven't they? Very childish. Never seem to grow out of them, either. Not like us women. We have to. Life's too damn serious, isn't it? See ya. See ya, V. Sorry to interrupt. I don't suppose you've heard if Rita's turned up? Not as I know of, no. No, it's just with... What? Mavis, reporting a missing to the police. I thought there might have been some news. Mavis has reported a missing? Yes. Didn't you know? No, I didn't. I thought it was time she did, too. The police. Not again. I don't believe all of this. They won't take any notice of Mavis, though. Well, what do you think, then? I mean, do you think she's missing or has she just done a bunk? I've no idea. I wish I did.
Now, what we're playing? Anything over head heights, free kick. No one but the keeper allowed in the area, you know what? Yes. What? What you said. Right, stand by. Should have died for it or something. I didn't even see it. All right. So we got caught bloody cold. Come on, let's get stuck in. Come on, Come on, on. Come on. Poetry in motion, eh, Alec? Yeah, Just wait till we settle down, Morris. Wait till we settle down. <laughs> Where am I going to settle down on my Jack? There was a flute goal that box. Just got the rub of the green. It didn't look like a flute to me. It looked like they knew precisely what they were doing. My well, eyes stood there like looking at pot plants. Come on, Jack! Oh, I'm torn. I don't need to shout for. Girlfriend. Come on! Come on! You big dirty pig! What's up with you? It was accidental. Yeah, the way it looks for me, definitely. Behave, mate. You kicked him. What do you say, ref? Oh, you what? Come on, don't be daft, eh? Off! 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 Be gone, mad! What's your idea for him to referee, boss? Off! 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 Oh, you can't send him off. It's his first defence. What are you talking about? I've, I've already booked him once. No, it was him you booked. Oh. Huh. Well, in that case, you can stop on. But you're booked. And I'll be watching you very closely, Sunshine. Now, can we get on with the game? He's lost control now. Bound to. You should be in charge, Percy. You're right, I should. Shut up, the pair of you. You better decide which side your bench put it on an old young lady. you did. Had a good holiday? Fabulous. Oh, you didn't miss me then? Nope. Well, actually I did. Nah, I suppose it goes with Ken's job working late. The eye that never sleeps, as he likes to call himself. That's why he's got bags under his eyes. Well, I hope it is. <laughs> yeah, but at least your Ken's doing something sensible, not running about a football pitch. Well, is that what all the grub's for? Yeah. A celebration, I hope. <laughs> Show your face, the money you owe. We were stitched up, Alec, you know it. 
imported hitman home rep. The only thing you didn't have was machine gun. Oh, you're not Welshing, are you, Boris? Here. Here's your blood money. Oh, next time I shall have Vinnie Jones playing in our team. He's a relative. And a five-year-old me, Mr. Jones. Ta. Uh, well, we'll call that straight drop. Thanks, you pinched off me this oh, week. We should have had you playing in our team, love. Yeah. Oh, you're a wonderful girl. You really were. Yes, I was very athletic, very live, just a bit like a jungle cat, really. You only had two goals for saving your letter both in. Look, nobody's talking to you, right? Right, I'm off bet. Go and see if my husband's turned up. Anyway, I can't stand all this revelry. See you, dear. See you later. Right. Three cheers for the best team in Coronation Street, eh? Can we have a quote for that old Wellsby, Jack? Go on. Uh, it were all down the lads. <laughs> they were very positive. Showed a lot of composure. Yeah. Yeah. You're exhausted, aren't you? It's been a long day. I've been up since four. This will be law against travelling in the middle of the night. This should be. Come on, I'll take you home. Oh, you don't need to. I can get a taxi. I'll take you home. Forget, are they? A bit more, son. A bit more. Yeah. How does that look, darling? Yeah, yeah, it's terrific, that. Smashing. Um... Look at them, honestly. You think they'd won the World Cup this summer? So that's what they were doing. Eh? I saw him with a can of paint in his hand. Where do you get that sheet from? Don't worry, it's an old one. An old one? You didn't get it out the airing cupboard, did you? They're all good ones in there. They're all old ones. We keep on old ones. Right. Oh, got them Good oh. lad. Hey, listen, we might kip on them, but we don't write all over them. I'll be having a look in that airing cupboard when I get back. Look in it if you want. Move in if you want. It don't worry me. That's provocation, is that? Blatant provocation. Might be. I shall let his missus deal with it if I were you. Looks as if she might have more striking power than you lot managed. Oh, ta. You know Mavis has contacted the police. Oh, really? Yes. Golden Richter is missing and they should be mounting a full-scale search. What did they say? Well, they can say what they like. You tell, still... tell Emily what they said, Mavis. Well, they didn't seem very interested. Seemed to think I'd got an overactive imagination. What amazes me is how little imagination so many people seem to have. And precious little concern either. Oh, I'm sure we're all concerned. Oh, Rita is a grown woman, Mavis, quite able to take care of herself. And I must say, she hasn't shown too much concern for other people, letting you cope here on your own. Anyway, I must be off. Excuse me. It's a busy time of the year for Santa's helpers. Gotta make sure our stocking fillers are on the shelves. Yes. Bye, Mavis. Bye. Emily. Bye. Honestly, sometimes. Well, perhaps you were a little quick off the mark. Can I beg your pardon? Well, I mean, in going to the police oh, when... Oh, I see. Well, I know Rita hasn't been seen for a few days, She's but... disappeared, Emily. Disappeared? Oh, perhaps she's just gone off somewhere. Without telling me, or anybody else for that matter. Well, people sometimes do, especially when they're on their own. Oh, so it's just my silly, overactive imagination, is it? Well, of course it is. Perhaps I should see a doctor and have something done about it. Mavis, I don't want to fall out with you. Then what do you want, Emily? Well, I'd actually come to see if you needed any help. I mean, you're here on your own. While oh, Rita's I... away. You're here on your own and I've got time to spare. Oh, I'm fine, so... thank you. I don't need any help at all. Well, you know where I am if you change your mind. <laughs> don't worry. I should be quite happy with my imagination to keep me company. You want a coffee? No. I know you're a busy man. Deadlines to meet. Foreign correspondents ringing in. 
Yeah, yeah, lots of those. Anyway, I'm a busy woman. I have a house to restock. Now, Greece is just a fond memory. You're not still worrying, are you? About Baldwin seeing at the airport? Mm. Oh, I've told you what he's like. Lizard, reptiles, they don't come into it. I can't believe that he's just going to go marching up to Deirdre and tell her... Well, not, not that he could tell her all that much, anyway. Well, you saw us together, kissing? I doubt he even remembers who I am. I think she could work that bit out for herself. She might, if he told her. But what I'm saying is well, I can't you believe... just don't know what kind of a man he is. Well, pretty pathetic if he's going to try and bust up somebody's marriage. I mean, what would be in it for him? Ooh. Don't ask. Well, I wouldn't, except you seem convinced he'll be on to Deirdre the minute he's back in the country. He was married to my daughter. Yeah, he said. And I was against the marriage. In fact, I did everything I could to try to stop it. Well, why? Oh, well, because he was twice her age and I knew he was a pretty unscrupulous and nasty sort of character. And I was right. Not that it gives me any pleasure to say it, but the marriage lasted barely two years. And he blames you for that? He blames me for pretty well everything, I shouldn't wonder. So seeing us last night was like a dream come true for him. Gave him all the ammunition he needs. No, sorry. Still can't believe he's going to go running to Deirdre. I can't. I think this is one time, Ken Barlow, you're getting your knickers in a twist over nothing. Anyway, I've got to get going. You coming around tonight? You want me to? Only on condition I don't hear another word about this Baldwin character. Forget him. It doesn't matter. That's, uh, what did I say? Oh, yes, 175. Thank you. 180, two pounds, and three makes five. Thank you very much. Oh, hello, Jenny. I've not come to buy anything. I just want to know, Mavis, what you think you were playing at going to the police. Well, I was very concerned about Rita. Why? Something happened to her? Well, we don't know what's happened to her, do I? She's just... She's just gone away. Which I think she's entitled to do, Mavis, at her age, without the police being called in. Have you heard from her? No, but then I haven't been at home, have I? Well, then how do you know she's gone away? Anything could have happened to yes, her. Yes, like she could have booked herself into a four-star hotel or she could have taken a package holiday to Spain. I mean something unpleasant. Mavis, what's going to be unpleasant is when the police get on to my dad again. Well, perhaps that's what you wanted, was it? Maybe that was the whole point. Oh, now, Jenny, that's not very fair. No, Mavis, what I think is unfair is when people go telling tales to the police because they're going to drag my dad into this if they can. You know that, don't oh, I you? I don't care what they drag him into. They can do what they like to your father. All I can say is he deserves it because he started all this in the first place. Oh, well, now we know, don't we? Now we know. Well, I only came in for some envelopes. I know I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said it. Now, Mavis, don't go blaming yourself. Oh, I not everybody else is blaming me, aren't they? No, I'm certainly not. I think you've done the right thing. You do. You're not just saying that. Of course I do. Uh, you can go before me if you like, love. 17 Maudsley Street. Yes. You've delivered the wrong paper. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the star we get. Oh. You should have heard my Norman. He can't bite it if he doesn't get the right paper. I'm sorry. Would you like to take a star? He wanted it with his breakfast. Yes, well, I'll see it doesn't happen again. Well, I hope not. You should have heard the ructions we had. Oh, look. You see, that was my fault as well. I must have marked it up wrong. So Norman's had to suffer. It sounds as if it might have done him good. And what was it you want? Uh, envelopes? Mavis, <laughs> calm down. Yes, well, I will. Look, why don't you go and get yourself a coffee? I can step in here oh, for half an hour. Go no, and put your feet it's up. It's very kind of you. But what time did you start this morning? Oh, well, about um, half six. And you've been trying to run this place by yourself? <laughs> now, come on, Mavis. It's not going to do Rita or anybody else any good, you driving yourself into the ground, is it? Right, two pints, please, and a... Orange juice, please, Jack. Orange juice and three hot pots. Hey, I like the electronic scoreboard. <laughs> Are, uh, electronic sheets? No <laughs> point in being modest, man. I'd say there's a lot of point. All you did was win a grotty five-a-side game. Women. Hey, it was a matter of pride. <laughs> Getting your own back, you mean? I was stuck out there at Old Trafford, you know. And all you could get out of her was, why can't you kick it straight? Why does it keep falling over? I had to take her home before half time. What you got? Well, Lynch. What are you going to have? Oh, oh. oh dude. Oh, hello. Where's the big fella then? 
Back in his cage, is he? <laughs> Listen, we had you beat for skill without him. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm standing here half crippled. Come on, Kev, let's sit down. We're all right. I want to sit down, please. Yes, love. Two pints, we'll especially, please. Right. Here, Tina. Oh, hiya. Hey. Aren't you going to ask me how my leg is? How's your leg? It's not so bad, thanks. Nice of you to ask. Yeah, well, I'm like that. What food have you got, on, Betty? Well, you've got a choice. Hot pot pies or sandwiches? I'll have a pie, I think. Do you want a pie? Yeah, yeah go on, then. Two pies. Hey, Tina. What? Hey, Come here, I, I want to ask you something. Look, I'm working out. I can't stand here talking. Oh. Betty, I'm going to shift this lot out to the yard, all right? Oh, Jack will shift it. Look, where's he got to? It's easy for I do it myself. I'm sick of catching my shins oh. on it. So, that's uh, two pies you want? Uh, that's right, yeah. yeah. Back in a minute. Hey? Hey, hey, where's he off to? I have no idea. Perhaps you thought I was going to ask him to pay for all this lot. <laughs> Tina! What are you doing? You nearly frightened me to death! Well, it's not right easy to talk in there, is it? Yeah, well, I'm not stopping out here. Look, uh, are you doing out tonight? Why? Well, just wondered. Yeah, well, I wondered and all. I mean, it's a long way off. It's tonight. There's all I have to do to go first, isn't there? I wondered if we might, uh, you know, uh, have a drink, go out somewhere. I suppose we might. It's uh, my night off, is it, Alms? Great. I tell you what, I'll think about it. Let you know later. Yeah, yeah, but when, I mean, Tina! Oh. But you do know we only feel in our second team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Favour. yeah, well, they played like a second team, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any time you fancy a rematch, my lads will be ready, won't you? Uh, will we? Uh, as long as it's not this week. No, don't worry, <laughs> I can't afford to risk any more of me brickies. Uh, you all right? Yeah, not so bad. Well, what happened to you all of a sudden? Oh, uh, I just forgot something over on site. On site? And what is he hopping in the opposite direction, down the side of the pub? Uh, cos the bloke I had to talk to, he'd left the site. He'd gone down that road down there. This mine, is it? Cheers. Hey, I love it. I'll have mine when you're ready, love. Oh, right. I've thought about it and the answer's yes. Oh, great. I'll see you in here about half past seven then, shall I? Yeah, yeah, fine. <laughs> But it happens a lot, does that? Women just <laughs> come up in pubs. Oh, thank you, Mavis. It is nice to see you. I didn't expect you'd be back. Well, you seemed a bit upset. Anyway, I needed these invoices for this afternoon. Deirdre Barlow's been very kind. She says she'll come in for an hour or two to the shop. Just help take the weight off me. Good. Don't like to think of you working yourself to a shadow. And she thinks I did the right thing in going to the police. Oh, does she? Yeah. <laughs> Though Jenny Bradley doesn't. She came in specifically to tell me I'd no right to go to them because it could get her father into trouble. Her father? Well, yes, I suppose it might. Well, then I started thinking. Thinking? Yes, after she'd gone, I started thinking. What if the police do decide to question him? Well, he is on a suspended sentence. Well, perhaps sent they should. Perhaps then they'd realise that he is the one responsible for Rita's disappearance. What, you mean... She's gone off in order to get away from him. No. I was thinking something much worse than that. Mavis! Oh, why not? It happens. I mean, we read about these things. And that was what Rita was most frightened about, wasn't it? That he was going to do something to her, but none of us would take her seriously, not one of us. Well, perhaps now it's too late. Perhaps he's already murdered her. <laughs> I didn't know you were taking on extra stuff. Oh, uh, he's a youth enterprise lad. I think he's a bit intimidated by the word processor. <laughs> I know the feeling. Anyway, why I've called. How would you feel about me taking on a part-time job? Strictly part-time and strictly temporary. Well, uh... Only Mavis is in a state. More than usual? Oh, a lot more than usual. She's trying to run the cabin by herself. She's worrying over Rita. So I said I'd step in for the odd hour. I bet you help lame dogs in the styles as well. Oh, but if no, you It's saw... all right, love. If you've got the time, great. You do it. Why don't we row anymore? Huh, we used to. I seem to think we exchanged the odd word on uh, why I was giving so much time to council business and why you were publishing certain stories. Can't remember. <laughs> I'll show you the scars if you like. Oh, I don't know. Under the ladder, I don't <laughs> want to give him ideas. Yeah, OK. No, but you're not, um... Oh, I don't know. 
You're not nursing secret grievances or out like that. I mean, you are happy with the way things are. The way things are now, I'm very happy. Good. I suppose you've heard anything from Rita. No. Back to stay, are you? For the time being, yeah. Well, I'm sure she'll be glad to find you here when she gets back. Bye. See you then. Yeah. Yeah, so there's no sign of Rita yet, then. Wonder where she could be. Got any theories? Do you know your drain pipe sprung a leak? If we get any freezing, it'll be like a skating rink out there. Yes, thank you, Mr. Sugden. Uh, yes, but we, we, we thank you for pointing it out all the same. Oh, it's my pleasure. Could I have my paper, please? Uh... <clears throat> 20p. All right. Yes. Well, you're not going. Well, I had intended. But I, I was just going to make a cup of tea, if you'd like one. Well, that's very neighbourly of you. Bye now. Bye. Nothing the matter, is there? No. Tell me about the war. How long can he stay? Well, I've got some very boring meetings that are going to keep me out most of the evening. Oh, no. Mm. Well, anyway, that's what I've told Deirdre. Oh, so you can stay? Try and stop me. Have you eaten? No. Good. Come on, then. Relax. Sit down. What do you want to drink? Beer? Are you trying to seduce me? Of course I am. Well, yes, then. The beer will be lovely. I hope you're not starving, because food's going to be a good while yet. No. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. What for? Making time for us. I know it can't be easy having to, well, having to lie to Deirdre. Funny thing is, I don't know whether I need bother. I honestly don't think she'd notice if I just said I'm going to be back late and didn't give any reason. She's so tied up with her own life. She mentioned that uh, we didn't argue anymore. Well, quite honestly, I think we don't argue anymore because neither of us cares enough to make the effort. I'm not dragging you away from your studies, am I? Oh, no, they can wait. Only, uh, I noticed you're letting yourself back into number seven. Yeah? Yes, love. Uh, five, Miss Betty. OK. Oh, um, just a bit of lemon. And a bit of lemon. I don't know. Should we sit down? So, listen, are you, uh, have you moved back in again or what? No, I've moved back in for the town being. Hi, kid. What are you doing here? Meeting somebody. Evening, Vera. Evening. Evening. Well, you'll have to wait and see, won't you? Uh, can I have a glass of white wine while I'm waiting? We're not, kid. Can I have somewhere, then, are you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, just so long as you're not planning to go out somewhere as well. I'm working, Vera, working very hard to stay sane and pleasant. It's not always easy. Tarlon. Thank you. Go. Cheers. There you go. Oh, before I forget. Yeah, present for you. No, Jenny, no. I can't look after you properly, so just take it and don't argue, please. But you can't afford it. I can't afford it. I'm working, aren't I? What else am I going to spend it on? Thanks. I take it there's no word from Rita, then? No. I'd like to know what she's playing at. Well, I went to see Mavis today. I told her that she had no business going to the police, but I don't know what she's like. Mm. I should be expecting a visit from them then. Don't worry, I'm getting used to it. Hey, up, hey, up, who's here? Oh, hiya. Hello. You look nice. Well, you know. Well, you can say I do too. Oh, yeah, you do. I mean, you do, yeah. 
Do you want a drink or a... No, no, no. I think we'll go, shall we? Yeah, sure. See you then. Bye, Vera. Bye. Bye. Well, I hope he treats her right. I hope he knows what he's let himself in for. Ooh. Well, he knows what third time I'll say that. Dog rough with only one thing on his mind. Here, puts another light ale in there. Go on, Jack. Promise you won't shout at me. Shout? I'm not in the habit of shouting, Mavis. Only I still think that Alan Bradley's done something terrible to Rita. I was hoping we could drop this subject. What do you expect me or anybody else to do about it? Will you come with me to the police? You've already been to the police. Oh, again, just to tell them what we think. We don't think it, All Mavis. right, then, what I think. He came in the shop tonight. Who, Bradley? Yeah. What do you want? Well, he bought a newspaper, but... He bought a newspaper? If he's buying a newspaper in a news agent's is not a criminal offence. Doesn't make the man into a murderer. He did pay for it, I assume. Now you're being sarcastic. Yes, I am, and not without some justification. So you won't come with me? Mavis, I'm sure the police have plenty to do without us. Oh, Derek, I'm sorry I've asked you, and I won't ask you again. If you won't come with me and you won't give me your support, I shall go and find somebody else who will. Chet, will that me? You don't seem to have done much else, since you've been coming around. I don't go looking for fights. I don't run away from them either. Well, I'm not into all this big he-man stuff. My dad were a big he-man. He used to knock my mum about. Hey, that were a tall one. That's clocked him one with poker. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Where'd you live? Lived in his state. By yourself? With me, ma'am. And how old are you? Why? I'm just interested. <laughs> 24. How old are you? You don't ask a lady her age. <laughs> Do you have a lot of girlfriends? Dozens. What do you want to take me out for, then? But what is this? You're trying to give me a hard time, or what? If you've got dozens of girlfriends, I don't know why you're so bothered. I haven't got dozens of girlfriends. That was a... That was a joke. Yeah. Well, I didn't believe you anyway. <laughs> oh, I do like you, Eddie. Honest, I do. Or else I wouldn't be here, would I? We said we wouldn't talk about it. Yeah, well, you don't solve anything that way. There's nothing to solve. Look, Baldwin saw us the minute he returns to Weatherfield. You know what you're doing, don't you, Ken? You know what game this is you're playing? Game? You're pretending we're going to be discovered. Pretending Deirdre's going to find out about us. Then you can go on about what we should do, what we should say. And it's all fantasy, because it's not going to happen. And I'm sorry you obviously find us so boring. You've got to... Jazz things up like that. Mike Baldwin, who saw us at the airport, and Deirdre, my wife, they were once lovers. They had an affair, quite a long affair, that nearly wrecked our marriage. You're serious? No, I'm serious, all right, about the worst time in my life. That's why I can't stand the bloke and why he hates me. I wish I was fantasising, but uh, he's quite capable of going to see Deirdre, no question. I didn't realise. No, well, you wouldn't. And if... What? What will you do if he does? Well, I've thought about it. I've thought about nothing else, but... Um... Look, you can stay up later tomorrow night, but just for now. It's only nine. Oh, it would have been late enough for me when I was your age. Really? Tracy. I'm going, I'm going. Good night. Good night. Night, love. Anyway. Look, I I'm sorry to be bothering you at this time. Oh, it's all right. Ken's not back from work yet. Oh, and I will be able to come in and help out. Oh, that's no problem. That's wonderful. But I, I wondered if you'd help me with something else. What? Well... I know it sounds awful, but I can't help but think that Alan Bradley has killed Rita. Blimey, Mavis. You don't go in for half measures, do you? If I went to the police station, would you come with me? Well, I, uh, I think we'd have to phrase it a bit differently. I mean, not just come out with it. But you, you would come with me. You see, I've asked Derek and he said no and I don't know who else Yes, to... Mavis, I'll come with you. Thank you. Because the more I think about it, the more I'm sure he's murdered her, Deirdre. Are you all right on your own? Yeah, of course I am. 
Makes a change from that hall of residence anyway. You never get to be on your own there. Because, you know, you can always come round to us if you want a meal or if you want a stop. I'm all right. Are you all right for money? Yes. Oh, great. Well, you can lend us some then, because I spend all hours. And if anybody asks, no, I've not heard from Rita. People want to mind their own business. So what if Rita goes off somewhere? What's it to them? Exactly. I mean, she's a free person. She can do exactly what she likes. You know what? People around here, they seem to think they have to tell everybody what you're doing 24 hours a day. I'm serious, Ken. Mavis thinks Rita might have been murdered by Alan Bradley. What, she really believes? Oh, yeah. She wants me to go with her to the police station this morning. Hello, love. You off. Who wants she go to the police station with them this morning? Never you mind. Mavis, it must be her, cos she ran last night. And if you take my advice, Mum, I think you should go with her. You do? Yeah, she needs locking up for her own good. See ya. <laughs> bye, love. Bye, bye. And how are you going? Well, I said I would. What, to accuse Alan Bradley? Oh, not in so many words. I'm going to try and persuade her to tone it down a yeah. bit. Well, I think you should. Yeah, but she's concerned, Ken. And I think she's got a right to be. I mean, Rita is not the sort of person just to take off like that without a word to anybody, especially to Mavis, who's been left having to run that business. Well, I still can't see the police being very impressed. Why not? Well, she's been once before, hasn't she? Yeah. So, what's changed? Well, <laughs> nothing has. That's just it. So we're going to go to there and say, look, we think you should be taking this a lot more seriously than you seem to be. Well, best of luck. Hey, come with us if you like. Oh, uh, well, I'd love to, but, uh, busy day. Oh. Busy day. I've never known anybody have so many busy days. Oh, it was really nice. Oh, I am glad. It's amazing, isn't it? How different blokes are when you get them away from the mace. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, they're just human. <laughs> so you'll be seeing them again, will you? Well, there's this disco he wants me to go to tonight. So I thought I'd ask Jackie if it's swap nights off. What do you think? Oh, well, I mean, ask him out. Jack? Yeah? Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, go on then, yeah. Two sugars? Yeah. And a couple of biscuits to go with it? Go on. Only young ones, aren't I? <laughs> Only, uh, by the way, I was going to ask you to do me a favour. Yeah. It's your night off tonight, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Can we do a swap? You work tonight and I'll cover for you this weekend. Only there's something special on. Well, it's uh, the bricklayer bill, is it? Eddie, yeah, it is. So go on, Jack, please. No, sorry. No? Yeah, I've got something on myself. What? You haven't got anything on? When do you ever have anything on? You just don't want me to go out with him. That's it, isn't it? It is my flaming night off, and I am quite as entitled as anybody else, you that know. That is pathetic. That is the most pathetic, nasty, mean, small-minded thing I've ever heard of. <coughs> Shouldn't bank on that cup of tea if I were you, lover. I mean, mention Alan Bradley, by all means. Remind them of what's gone on in the past. But still say that I think he might. No, no, I think we should leave them to form their own conclusions. Yes, I think perhaps you're right. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, where's Derek got to? Why well, can't we just shut the shop up? I think we're going to have to. But he did say he'd be here, only he thinks I'm being silly and letting my imagination run away with me. Ah. Oh, oh. Derek. I know. Sorry I'm late. Now we're all right. I got held up at the warehouse. You wouldn't believe the run we've had on our monster accessories. There's not a set of fangs to be had between here and Birmingham. No, Derek, we're going to have to go now. There's plenty of change in the till, yes. so we'll try not to be long. All right, but I still think that... Oh, we know what you think, Derek. I don't want you to be arrested for wasting police time. Oh, they'll have their work cut out if they try. They will, yes. You never mentioned this. Ken, I can't live on fresh air. I applied to this agency this morning. I mean, it's only temping, but they pay well. And they said, yes, they had a vacancy, and could I start this afternoon? So I said, yes, I could. You mean you haven't got time for lunch? I haven't, I'm sorry. Well, it would have been nice to be able to talk. Well, would it? Or don't we have to wait for this Mike Baldwin to get back from wherever he's gone? See whether he actually does tell Deirdre. I mean, uh, you do realise it's a real threat, don't you? They were lovers. Yes, I do realise it's a real threat, Ken. I do feel very threatened. Believe me, I do. Yeah, well, I've been wondering about whether I should tell Deirdre first before he has a chance to. Telling her about us? Mm. Why? Better coming from me than from him. Hmm. Might be if we're going to stop seeing one another. Is that what you want? 
Well, at least it would be a more honourable way to behave than just sitting around here waiting to see if Baldwin's going to spill the beans. And your conscience would be clear. Well, let's be honest, Ken. I mean, what are you after? Forgiveness? Some kind of absolution? It isn't me I'm thinking about, it's Deirdre. Do you want us to finish? No. Do you want your marriage to be over? No. Well, you tell Deirdre, and it has to be one or the other, doesn't it? Yeah. You want to tell her, I can't stop you. Just don't pretend you don't know what you'd be doing. I think the sergeant was quite impressed when you told him you were Councillor Barlow. You think so? Yes. It's not always an advantage, you know. Sometimes they can put people's backs up before they even know what you've come for. Oh. What? That's the policeman I saw before. And you're not keen on it? I don't think he's very keen on me. He told me I was panicking. I'm quite not, if you'd good reason to. Well, he didn't think I had. I'm not being silly, am I, dear? No. Look, Rita's missing, and we want to know what they're doing about it. Yes. You can't... I'm um... trying. It's Jack's acting like a right nerd and won't swap his night off. Do you want me to have a No, 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 no. I'll have another go with him. You know, I don't know what's got into him. I used to be able to twist him right around my little finger. <laughs> <laughs> Still no news of Rita, then? Don't think there is, Betty. Oh, no. And I spoke to Jenny yesterday. She hasn't heard oh. anything. Oh, is this about Rita doing a flit? Yes. Well, the gin and tonic, Betty. Okay, Do you know, I was reading a magazine article in the hairdressers the other day. That's it. Thousands of people every year. And I mean, literally, thousands just walk out of their homes and are never seen again. Oh, I'm sure it's more common than we realise. Oh, well, most it's because they can't stand it and they want to start a new life. Mm. Actually, it's quite an attractive proposition when you think about it. Slate wiped clean. You can even change your name if you want. <laughs> oh, about 15, love. Oh, right, thanks, Betty. Actually, do you know, we should all try it just the once. I mean, try starting a new, see what happens. Oh, I think most of us would end up much the same. Mm. Oh, dear, Emily, I hope I wouldn't. I mean, a grocer's wife. It was quite nice just the once, but... <laughs> I want to do it again. Well, if I could live my life all over again, I wouldn't change one minute of it. Oh, dear, I do think that shows a rather lacking in imagination. Mm -hmm. Look, Jack, I'm sorry about what I said this morning about you being pathetic and small-minded, cos I know it's not true. How do you? In fact, you're one of the most generous, big-hearted men I've ever met. I bet I am. And I bet Addy didn't have to go and put his hand in his pocket for champagne last night like his, I did. I bet he got away with a bag of chips, didn't he? Did our Eddie? 160. On please, second pal. thoughts, Atna was just right this morning. At me apathetic and small minded. Now make your mind up. You know, you're just like a little kid. If you can't get what you want, you're going to make damn sure no one else can have it. Well, don't ever ask me to do a favour for you again. Still not going your way with Jack. Oh, I could kill him, Betty. In fact, I might do yet. I wish I could help. But you see, Bet's already asked me to come in here anyway. Never mind. It's going to be too late if I can't tell Eddie something definite. Oh. I must say, though, if Rita has decided to up sticks and start a new, I admire her for it. But what about her home and her business? And then there's Jenny. Oh, I mean, Jenny's not hers, really. I mean, not really. And as for the homes and businesses, well, you can always sell them. I mean, that's what I'd do if I would have happened to Alpha. <laughs> and the longer it's gone on, the more I can't believe that Rita would just go away and leave everything and not make an effort to contact anybody. Yes, well, you did tell me all this before. What have you done about it? What I mean is, have you got anything new? No, no. No. Look, what is new is that... When Mrs. Wilton spoke to you before, Rita had only been missing a couple of days. Now it's been over a week. True, all that little bit older then, aren't we? Yeah, but surely that makes it more serious. You could say that. Yes, that's what we are saying. You could also say that as time passes and there's no sign of her, I mean, no hospital is reported admitting her or anything like that, then that suggests she's all right. Hasn't come to any harm, but just fancies a bit of time by herself, so. Yeah. I... No! I'm sorry, but it's, it's just too easy to say that. So what would you say? Well, what about everything that happened before? I mean, surely you know about that. You know what? You mean this character she was living? Yeah, Alan Bradley. Yes. Well, yeah, we know all about him. Certainly we do. 
So you think that may be why she's gone away? To get away from him? Yeah, she might have. There's not much we can do about it, though, is there? Not unless he's actually been making threats. Or unless he's murdered her. I suppose you would do something then, would you? Oh, yes, we would. Why, have you any reason for thinking that's what's happened? Well, I mean, he's already been in court charged with attacking her. Mm. Well, ever since he came out of prison, she's lived in fear of him. I mean, she's been terrified he was going to do something to her. Especially when he went and got himself a job right across the street from her house. <laughs> You're not telling me that's a coincidence. Yeah, but she's already accused him of breaking into her shop when it wasn't him and of breaking into the house. But doesn't that tell you how frightened she was of him? <laughs> All right. I mean, she, she was wrong on the other two occasions, but doesn't it just go to show you what she's thinking? OK. I'll buy it. No, I'm not saying that. Not yet. But I think a few discreet inquiries might be in order. Just stir things up a bit and see what floats to the surface, eh? in my platoon that went missing. Of course, it was wartime, so the first thing you think of is desertion. I doubt if Rita's deserted. I'm not saying she has. I'm talking about this corporal we had out in Egypt. Sorry, yes, go on. No one day, gone the next. Nobody ever saw either aware of him again, except for his shaving mug next to a camel track. Oh, oh Mavis. Too long. Uh, Mr. Soto. Uh, so what do you have to say, then, the police? I'm sorry, I, I just happened to mention it. I'm afraid I can't tell you, Mr. Sugden. Whatever was said must be regarded as totally confidential. Oh, I won't go blabbing it around. You can rest assured on that score. Nevertheless. And were they any more interested than last time? Yes, they were. A lot more interested as it happened. Oh, so there's going to be a full-scale investigation then, is there? I thought I'd see you come in. I'll see you. Hello. Why did you have to go and tell him of all people? I'm sorry, I didn't know it was meant to be secret. Anyway, if the police really are going to do something, it won't stop one for very long, will it? Look, I must get on. I've got a whole day's work to do. Yes, well, have you eaten anything, uh, Yes, I've got a sandwich from next door. Oh. Don't worry about me. On it, we might be eating a bit late tonight because Deirdre Barlow is coming round to help me. I'm all behind with the Christmas window. All oh, right. And the police really did take you seriously, did they? They did, yes. And you told them that you thought that Alan Bradley might have... ..might have killed Rita? Yes. Good Lord. To think I've stood here talking to him. Sends a shiver down your spine, doesn't it? Of course, now that I've got them to believe me. All I want more than anything is to be proved wrong. Hey! There, uh, by the way... What, Bobby? You can say it's not to do with me, but... All this argy-bargy you and Tina are in about your nights. Oh, now, so. come on, Betty. I am entitled. Look, I know, but don't you think we should be careful not to let your Vera find out? What do you mean? She might get the wrong end of the stick. She might think you want to stop Tina from seeing this, Eddie, because... Well, because you've got ideas about yourself. No, not... Not she knows me, our Vera, don't she? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. See you, Betty. Then I'll love yeah, it. Yeah, tell her. Hey, Tina, Tina. What? Hey. Got you going there, didn't I? Look, I've just had about enough of you oh, today. Now, come on, I was only joking, wasn't I? Surely you don't think I'd try and stop you seeing Eddie, do you? Did I not? Well, we mates, aren't we? I wouldn't pull a trick like that. Look, if you want to swap, it's all right by me. Do you mean it? Are you go and have your night. Oh, on thanks, Uncle Jack. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, I'll have to go and tell him. Bye. Hey, and that wasn't because of what you said about our Vera, neither. Oh, no, of course it wasn't. Hey, Eddie, I've swung it. I can get the night off tonight. Oh, great. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll meet you in the Rovers again later. All right. Yeah. Jan? Hey. Are you all right, love? Nothing wrong, is it? No, I'm just on my way back from Polly. Oh, well, I don't think I could manage the study, but I wouldn't mind the hours. <laughs> hey, listen, do you want me to make you a meal tonight? Uh. No, I don't think that would be a good idea, love. Why? Well, 
I don't think I should be in the house when Lisa's not there, you know. Well, she won't know, Yeah, she? I know, but... I'll tell you what, I'll take you out for a burger and chips, how's that? All right, then. Good. Listen, I better get back, so I'll pick you up when I finish, OK? OK, then. See you later. Good luck. Ciao. Hey, do you think I've got enough time to have a bath and do my hair in four hours? Oh, I should hope so. <laughs> Hi. Oh, OK. Be nice to me. I've had a rotten afternoon. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I am very sorry, if I was nasty too early. You weren't nasty too early. Yes, I was. I think we were both on edge. But when you're on edge, you start acting worried. When I'm on edge, I start acting nasty. Oh. And why have you had a rotten afternoon? Oh, I can't stand being the office new girl. Not knowing where anything is or what's what. You feel so stupid. I told you you should have stayed here. <laughs> Perhaps I just got out of the habit of working. I don't know. So, what's been happening in your life? Well, I've, uh, I've been thinking about what you said. Oh, you should never do that. I say the most terrible thing. Yeah, about telling Deirdre, and you're right. It would be pretty suicidal. For your marriage? I'm thinking more of us. I don't want to lose you, Ken. I don't want us to stop. No. But what if this Baldwin does tell her when he gets back? Oh, no, don't answer. I have no right to ask you things like that. Well, why not is what I keep asking myself. Can you come round tonight? No, I shouldn't ask you things like that either, should I? You've got your family. It wouldn't be too clever. I mean, I was out last night. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You go home. I'll be all right. I think it's this afternoon's work that's got to me. I'm just not used to it. Oh, I'm surprised she's going out with him. What? Well, after the way he shaved and what he did to you, Ken, he's just a thug in the world. No, he's not. He's all right when you get talking to him. Yeah, well, let it be up. She keeps him talking. Uh, drink for you, my little swamp dog. Yeah, and you can pay for it. Because you would have been taking me out tonight if he hadn't given you a night up off for somebody else's benefit. Right, I'm off. See you then. Where's your young man, then? He's not here yet. I'm going to wait for him outside. OK, draw, love. Bye. Enjoy yourself. Go on, then. I'll stand you out. I think so now. You see, you've got to give these young folks a chance to get out. She shouldn't be in here every night. I'm not at her age. Well, she gets paid for it. Well, I know, but there's more to life than working, you know. Anybody been visited by the police yet? What are you about? Why, well, should we be? Well, I believe there's an investigation going on as to the whereabouts of Mrs. Furtlough. Why, where do you think she is? Well, that's a question. I mean, when you think back of all that's happened to that woman over the last 12 months, mm. I mean, you think, what could happen next? I mean, they're in hospital once, wasn't she? Then the court case. Mm. Oh, dear me. Why well, that man got away as easy as Yes, he did. Alan. Fine, is it? <laughs> yes, please, Bessie. And uh, a bit of lemon for my daughter. Right. What was that you were saying, Percy? Just that the police are uh, trying to find Mrs. Fairclough. Well, I'm very pleased to hear it. The sooner they find her, the sooner it will stop all this idle gossip, won't it? Yeah, there yeah. is that. Mm. I shall help them all I can, and I'm sure everybody else around here will know, won't we? Well, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Right, I'll bye. see you later. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye, bye. bye, -bye Lily. Bye, bye, darling. Yeah, we'll see you later. On. Okay. Hello. Won't they let you in? I'm waiting for somebody. <laughs> At least I'm supposed to be. I think what I'm really doing is making a fool of myself. Oh, no. You got the right time? Yeah, it's just gone quarter to eight. Right, I'll give him till eight. If he turns up after that, I'll give him hell. Yes, she's still here. Deirdre! What's the matter? Well, we heard your voice and uh, we needed a ruling. Didn't you say yesterday that I could stay at wait tonight? Did I? When you were trying to get rid of me so you could talk to Mavis. Ah. Uh, yeah, so it's true then. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry uh, about that. Okay, well, oh. bye bye. Bye bye. Have bye. a good time. Bye. Come on, you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, I'll leave you to it. Why? Well, you don't want an old man like me hanging about. You're not an old man. Anyway, I've got things to do, like washing and cleaning, stuff like that. Oh, get yourself a wife. You're good at them sort of things. Well, if you know one that's available, send her round. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Well, that were a clever thing to say, weren't it? What? About him getting a wife. But you didn't enjoy that much either, did you, Jenny? It doesn't matter. Oh, I am sorry. I'll tell you what the safest thing is. If I sit here and say no, I'll let you two talk and I'll sit here and say no. Yeah, good idea. Hey, oh, hey, she's back. None of the matter is, hello. Oh, everything's just great, Betty. Oh. Fabulous. Best night I've had off in a long time. 
Did you have pass there? Yes, he has, Fiona. So have a good laugh if you want to. Everybody have a good laugh. Oh, no, we wouldn't do that. Probably you're better off without him if he's not reliable. Oh, thanks, Jack. But I'll take over now, shall I? Oh, just as you like. Uh, hang on. No, she can't do that. You've already done nearly half a shift. You'll stay where you are, then you can have that. Yeah. Look, I don't want to argue. What do you want to do, Jack? Do you want to carry on working or should I take over? Well, I'm... No, he wants to carry on. You did that without moving your lips. Well, if you serve me, I'll have a drink. Right. Oh, I am sorry, lovey. And after you've been to all that trouble. Well, if you teach me a lesson, then none of them worth it. Oh, don't say that. He'll have a good excuse, though. Yeah, well, wherever it is, it can stick it, cos nobody makes a fool out of me like this and gets away with it. Goodness, everything gets so dusty. If I climb into the window, Deirdre, do you think you can pass me these things? Whatever you say, Maeve, I'm just the assistant. Oh, well... Oh, you've caught us right in the middle of it, Derek. So I see. I shouldn't stand still for too long, Derek. You're liable to get sprayed with snowflakes. <laughs> yes, I'll keep well out of your way. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, we're not... Detective Sergeant Crichton. We had a bit of a chat earlier on today. Yes, of course. Well, we'll go in here by the looks of that. <laughs> Councillor Barlow, Mr. Wilton. Evening. Right, well, it's really you I've come to see, Mrs. Wilton. Me? I'd like you to come along with me to the mortuary. We've discovered the body of a woman in a derelict house. Been rather badly mutilated, I'm afraid. But I'd like you to come along and have a look and tell us whether or not you think it's Mrs. Fairclough. You don't know it is Rita. Well, the police think it is. No, they think there's an outside chance it may be. More than an outside chance, or they wouldn't have brought me here. Would they? It's all right, all right. Calm down. Well, it's easy for you to say. Look, would you like me to go in there? You? Well, to, 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 to identify her. No. No, it's something I've got to do. Don't ask me to explain why it just is. If that's the way you want it. I just want it to be over and done with. I've just got to know one way or the other. Hi, right, Mrs. Wilton. If you're ready. Are you all right, Mrs. Wilton? Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. You can come with her if you'd like. No, me? Oh, no, no, no I, I don't think so. Um, we have discussed it. I think it's something she would rather do herself. Right. Well, let's get it over with it, shall we? Do you want a coffee? Jen, if you want to get on with some work... Oh, then... no, I can't get into it. That's why I went the Rovers. It's not that I find it hard. I don't. It's just I can't concentrate. The more I try, the more my mind goes blank. And every time that phone rings, every time there's a knock at the door... Yeah, I know. Look, Jen, if you think it would help to get out of here for a bit, it's not doing you any good, is it, being stuck in here all on your own? It'll be all right. Well, if you change your mind, you know where we are. Thanks. I think if it hadn't been for my dad being nearby, they'd gone round the bend days ago. But why did she have to do it, Sal? Why did she have to take off without a word to her soul? She's caused all this bother. I mean, what have we done to her? Right, thank you very much, Mrs. I'm sorry you had to go through all that. But it had to be done, as I'm sure you'll appreciate. Was it? No. Thank God for that. Take me home, Derek. Thank you, Sergeant. Look, if you'd like a cup of tea no, or something. No, thank you. No? Just take me home. Yes, come on. Yeah, he's a big lad. Built my beat was cheap, then. Well, that was some night off, weren't it? Don't yeah, worry, love. I'll see you, right? I'll see you home. What are you trying to do? Put our fellas for life? Oh, I'll ring for a taxi. Forget it, lovey. I've got a taxi coming in five minutes. I'll drop you off. Oh, thanks, Betty. Okay. 
Good Lord, if you ask me... Nobody's to... asking you, Jack, so shut it. Look, I just don't want to see you get hurt, do I? Especially with a toe rag like that flaming Eddie Ramsden. Now to pound, fellas like him, only after one thing. And if they find some... Shut better, it, then... Jack! What did I say, Betty? You really did miss your way, didn't you, Jack? <laughs> I mean, have you ever thought of taking up marriage guidance? If it's, uh, if it's young Jenny you're after, you're wasting your time. She went off to college about half an hour ago. Oh, I see. Well, do you know what time she'll be back? Yeah, about tea time. Uh, perhaps I can be of assistance, oh, you don't know. Don't think so, thanks. Tell her you call, give her a message. 0905 hours precisely. And you are? Uh, uh Sugden, Percy Sugden, home watch organiser. There's nothing goes on round here that uh, escapes my eagle eye. No, trained in observation, you see. In the Boy Scouts, were you, Mr Sugden? I was in the Western Desert campaign, when keeping your eyes open was the difference between life and death. About tea time, you said? Eh? When the young lady will be back. That's right, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, I know the sergeant here, but I didn't catch your name. I didn't give it. Jordan, Detective Inspector Jordan. Oh, Detective Inspector, eh? Well, if you'd like to give me some idea what you want to uh, speak to the young lady about, I might be of some assistance. Well, I think we can handle it for now, Mr. Sugden. Hello, Weatherfield recording. Oh, Wendy. Hi, what can I do for you? Lunchtime? Oh, I'm sorry. No, not today, I'm afraid. Deirdre? No, no, no. No, I'm not seeing Deirdre. I'm just up to my eyeballs in it. Mrs. Turner hasn't turned up. The phones never start ringing, and lunchtime is just a luxury I can't afford today. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid you have rung at a bad time. Look, I, I can't talk now. I'll catch up with you later, OK? I'm sorry, but, I mean, that's the way it is today. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you later. All right, bye. Good morning. Morning. Sorry, I spoke, I'm sure. Tina! Hang on! Don't believe a word of it, love. You fancy her yourself, don't you? You've only half of it, mate. Tina! Hang on a minute. Oh, I, I'm gone, just like I did last night. All dressed up to the nines and waiting for the invisible man. I can explain about last night. Something came up. Why, heck, Eddie, you amazed me. Why didn't I work that one out for myself? Honest, it was me man. Oh, oh, your man was it? Said so you had to stop in, did she? Think you're too young to work with girls. She were ill, weren't she? I couldn't leave her. Oh, very touching, Eddie. And I suppose you've never heard of a telephone. Well, why couldn't you let me know? Or didn't you have 10p, hey? Selena! Selena! Nice one, Eddie. You really told her there. What? You could charm the bird out the trees, <laughs> Eddie. I'm sorry, Mrs. Green. I don't know how I forgot to... Hi, on your own, are you? Yes, since nine o'clock. Derek had an early start. I don't know how I've got through this morning, dear, be honest. Looking at the state of you, neither do I. I just can't get that poor woman in the mortuary out of my mind. The thought that Rita... Now, <laughs> come on, Mavis, stop it. It's not helping anybody, you carrying on like this, is it? Well, I can't help it. Oh, look, I've got the rest of the morning to myself. Why don't you just cart yourself off upstairs for a couple of hours and have a lie down? I can manage here. Oh, well, it wouldn't do any good, would it? I wouldn't look, be able to sleep. I am not asking you. I'm telling you now. Come on, get up those stairs. Well, if you don't mind. I wouldn't have offered if I did, would I? Now, go on. I, I am capable of answering the phone, you know. Cabin. Oh, yes, hello, Mrs. Bottomley. Uh, yeah, just hang on a minute, please. Oh, go on. Yeah, sorry about that. Now then, what can we do for you? Tina! Tina! Look! Will you just give me a chance to explain? Look, Eddie! I may not be as bright as a North Star, but I'm certainly not dim enough to fall for some daft tale about you having to look after your mother. It's true. Look, I can't stop now. Boss is around. I'll catch up with you when I finish. You're working tonight. Yes, I'm working. I 
had last night off. Remember? Well, I'll see you. Bradley. What do you want? This is Detective Inspector Jordan. He's in charge of the search for Mrs. Fairclough. He'd like a word. I know nothing about Mrs. Fairclough's disappearance. Okay. No one suggested you did, Mr. Bradley. I talked to everyone that knew Mrs. Fairclough. I would greatly appreciate your cooperation. Can I help you? It's all right, boss. They just want to wear with me. They have as many words as they want, but not in my time. This won't take more than a few minutes, Mr. Jones. This is Detective Inspector Jordan. Yeah, I know who you are. So, what do you want with him? Just a few questions. Anywhere a bit more private than here. You better use my cabin. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. All right, the show's over. Get back to work. <laughs> Thanks, All right. right. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh. Am I glad to see you? Sorry? Oh, I got a meeting at the town hall at half past three. I didn't know how much longer I could hang on. Hang on? Sorry, I'm not with you. Where, where, where's Mavis? Oh, I sent her upstairs for a lie down. She ah. was no use to anybody the state she was in. No, understandable, after the night she had. How is she now? Well, she was dozing. She's trying to get rid of this migraine that's come on. Mm. No news of Rita? No. Well, I'll go upstairs and see Mavis, and then I must be on my way. Well, you're not stopping. No, can't, I'm afraid. I'm sure Mavis will be down shortly. Thanks, Deirdre. I don't know what we'd have done without you. Um, Mavis is all right, is she? Yeah, yeah, she's just tired out. There's no way she can carry on down here today, that's for sure. Well, if Derek can't take time off, they'll just have to shut the shop. Well, if it's any use, I can give you a couple of hours. Oh, could you? Nothing else on this afternoon. I was just going to pay my papers and call next door for a cup of well, tea. Well, if you don't mind. It will be my pleasure. Just take my coat off. Emily, you are a saint. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you? I don't know where Mrs. Fairclough is. I've no idea where she might go. And quite frankly, I don't care. Ever since I came to work here, I've had enough of Mrs. Fairclough and I've had enough of you lot and all. Now, oh, come on, Mr. Bradley. This sort of attitude isn't being very helpful to anybody, is it? What sort of attitude do you expect, eh? You tried to pin the robbery at the cabin on me. That's not true. And then they tried to nail me for the break-in at Mrs. Fairclough. And now you reckon I've got something to do with her disappearance. I mean, where is it all going to end, eh? Just calm down, Mr. Bradley, eh? Nobody's accusing you of anything. Well, it doesn't look like that to me. Look, a woman has disappeared. We want to find her. We're questioning a lot of people. If you think you're something special in all this, I can assure you that's all in your mind. Now, you're quite sure you've no idea where Mrs. Fairclough may have gone? No. No relatives you can think of, no friends, no links from her past that we could follow up? I've told you, no. Has she contacted you at all since she left home? You're joking, aren't you? I'd be the last person in this world that you'd contact. We do have to ask these questions, Mr. Bradley. All right, boss. Well, I don't think we need to keep you any longer. If you do hear from her or remember anything you think might be useful to us, we expect to hear from her. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Finished? Yes, thanks. For now. What was all that about this time? When investigating the disappearance of Rita Fairclough, they thought I might know something about it. And do you? No, I don't. They're making quite an habit of it, aren't they, coming here, chatting to you? Yeah. I'm just about as much as I can take, I don't mind telling you. I'm not in raptures over the situation myself. Hiya. Hiya. 
thought you were really busy at the office. Well, yeah, sorry about this morning. It really was a bad time for rain. Yes, I did get the message. It really was work then. Oh, of course it was. What else? I don't know. I'm sorry again. I couldn't help wondering if something had happened at home. Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. If this Mike Baldwin business was getting to you. Look, Mike Baldwin's away. He can't spoil anything for us. If and when he does decide to make things awkward for us, well, we'll handle it then, together. So nothing's changed then? That's not quite right. Oh? You know, there's been a, a bit of a crisis at the cabin and Deirdre's decided to step in and help. I'd have thought she had enough on her plate. Yes, yes, it does mean I won't be seeing much of her over the next few days, that's for sure. Looks like a good time to put in a few extra hours about myself. I think you work far too hard. I think you need to relax more. Sure you don't want anything? Yeah, thanks. I've got to be getting back. I just thought you should know that the police have been looking for you again. Well, I've told them everything I know. Yeah, I know. Like everybody else around here about ten times over. They've even been to see your dad again. Well, it's not just your dad, Jen. It's anyone who knows Mrs Faircloth. They're just making sure that nobody's overlooked anything, I suppose. Yeah. Look, I've made a steak and kidney pie for our tea. Why don't you come round and join us? Because there'd be loads for all of us. Thanks, but I think I'd better stay here. Well, I'm not pushing you, but if you change your mind. Thanks. Miss Bradley? Have you heard from her? Have you no. found her? No, no, I'm afraid we haven't. This is Detective Inspector Jordan. He's in charge of the case now. Well, I don't know what you want with me. I mean, I've told you everything I know. I'm sure you have, love. We'd like to take a look around, if that's all right with you. See if there's anything that might give us a clue. So, if we could just come in. Time yet. Look, perhaps he's got a look. I don't know what you're on about. Eddie Ramsden. If I never hear that fella's name again, it'll be too soon for me, Betty. Oh, is that why you've had your eyes glued on that front door ever since we opened? Is it? Ooh, because what it is, it's victimisation. I mean, that's what it is. You know, they haven't given me five minutes' peace since I walked out of that court. And all I want is to be left alone and get on with my life. Yeah, well, you've got no chance, have you? I mean, once they get your number, they're there for life, aren't they? You'll be on their Christmas card, lest I shouldn't wonder. Thanks, Jack. That's a big comfort to me, that. Yeah. Oh, pint, Jack. Right, right. Where did you slope off to? Oh, a bit of business in the office. I'll mix up with my pay slip. You got it started, did you? Yeah, yeah, no problem. A uh, message for you, love, from uh, Lover Boy. He's not going to make it. Oh, you do surprise no, me. No, straight up. He got his telephone call just as we were finishing. I bet he did. Let me guess. Female, 20? <laughs> Female, yeah, but she was a bit more than 20. It was his mother. And that's what he told you, is it? Well, he doesn't give up. I'll give him that. It was, honest. I answered the phone myself. Anyway, after we'd finished speaking to her, he said he'd have to dash off home. He said to tell you he was sorry. Oh, the heck, he's a flying, isn't he? He can get in his mother to ring him for alibis. Shut it, Jack. Do you reckon it was really his mother? Oh, yeah. Where does he live? Cromwell Street, just up road from Shippy. Betty, what? Will you cover for me? I'm going to have to nip out. Mm. I must have enough egg on my face to make an omelette. I don't flame and believe it. Now, come on, Jack, now that's enough from you. What have I said? You don't have to say anything. I can hear you thinking from here. Better give me a gin and tonic, please, a large one. You're starting early, love. We've just had a phone call from the estate agent. They've accepted our offer on the house. So we're going to be neighbours. Well, near us makes no difference. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, that must be a relief. Oh, a relief. You've no idea. Of course, it's going to take a while for us to get it exactly how we want it. Mm. At least a fortnight, I'd reckon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you'll both be very happy there, love. Well, it won't be my fault if we're not, Betty. I promise you that. Oh, cheers. Cheers, love. Eddie! Tina, what are you doing here? I've come to apologise about not believing you about your mum this afternoon. It was Les that put me right. Is she all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, she, she's a lot better. She, she could be worse. I'm sorry, Eddie. Honest, I am. Is there anything I can do? No, no thanks. Uh, it, it was good of you to pop round, but... I better get inside now. Uh, 
I'll catch up with you tomorrow, all right? All right. Are you sure there's nothing I can do? Yeah, I'll see you, eh? Right, son. I'm off. Now, I shouldn't be too late. Hospital visiting ends at eight. I might just call in and see your Auntie Edna. Son! Are you his mother? Well, unless they made a mistake in maternity, that's what I've been led to believe all these years. Look, I'll have to dash. I'll see you later. Yeah. Bye, love. Bye. Bye, Eckeddy Ramsden. I've come across some two-timing rats in my life. But it's not like it seems honest. Oh, of course it's not. No, she'll be back in a sick bed as soon as she gets back from her Auntie Edna's, won't she? Unless she takes in some bingo on her way back. Look, I, I had to get straight home tonight, like I did last night. And you want to know why? Sure, you want to stay for a cup of tea? No, thanks, Derek. I've just popped in to see how the invalid is. Oh, well, you don't look set to tackle the four minute mile to me. No, you ought to be in bed. You look oh. worn out. Derek's right, you know, love. Couple of days with your feet up, you'd be as right as rain. I can't, can I? I've got to keep the shop going. For Rita's sake, I'm it's the least I can do for it. Well, you can forget about the shop. I mean, we've managed to muddle through today, haven't we, without causing a riot? We can carry on till you feel up to it again. Emily's pleased to have something to do with her spare time. I can pop in whenever I'm free. And there's Derek. Right. Well, I'd make myself available whenever I can. You can rest assured about that. But I do go out at nine and I'm rarely back before six. Oh, no problem. No problem. I don't see how Derek can be much use to you. Oh, he will be. He'll be priceless because he'll be here when me and Emily can't be. Uh, sorry, I'm not with you. To do the morning papers. So you see, you've not got a thing to worry about. Everything's in hand. Right, Derek? <sighs> I mean, <laughs> I could hardly have brought him down the road, was, could I? Yeah, but why did you have to stop him with him for any road? Well, it's not easy for me, ma'am. Not at her age. Not being tied to a little nipper morning, noon and night. Well, I can see that. You know, it must have come as quite a shock when she found out he was on the way. Oh, yeah, it did, uh, to all of us. So at least I can do is, uh, Give her a break on them nights when she does want to go out. Well, there's no wrong with that, but why did you have to lie to me? Make up all those tales about your man being ill. That wasn't on, was it? Oh, come on, Tina. What would you have made of me if I'd told you the truth? Big macho bricky, Jack the lad, having to stop in to babysit, ducking out of a date. You're not quite the untamed animal you like to make yourself out to be, are you? Hey, you just wait till I've put him down for the night. Oh, no chance. I'm sorry, Eddie. It's time I wasn't here. Not if I want to keep my job. Come on, you can stop a bit longer. If Betty help, thinks you're helping me look after me sick ma'am. Don't start that again. Not now we've got things straight. Let's leave it that way. All right? Yeah, if you say so. I do. Thank you, love. Where the ex Tina got to? You know, I was just wondering that myself, Betty. Do you think I'd better go and have a look? Mate? She's all right, eh? Cromwell Street, isn't it? You stop here. I'm not having the pair of you missing. What are you thinking of Tina? I know what you're thinking of. Oh, I'm sorry, love. Honest, I am. But we've all got to rally round. Don't worry about it. I understand. I do worry about it. I mean, all this extra work at the cabin, on top of me council work, I really feel as if I'm neglecting you and Tracy. Oh, we're not complaining, are we? No, you're not. It's what makes me feel so awful. You've been so understanding. Especially you. Thank you, love. <sighs> Oh, so you've decided to come back, have you? I'm sorry about that, Betty. I got back as soon as I could. How is she? Oh. Eddie Ramsden's mother. Oh, she, she's much better. Oh, I'm very pleased to hear it. Right, well, you can make a start on this lot when you're ready. All right, Betty, and thanks. All right, love it. Sorted him out, did you? There was nothing to sort out, Jack. Oh, now, come on. You never fell for that old line about his sick mother, did you? I don't think he's got a mother. I reckon they were quarried. Look, Jack. You can believe what you like. And yes, if you must know, I have got him sorted. It seems I've got Eddie Ramsden worked out all wrong. Good on you, kid. I knew you'd see, Sam. You see, you're only after one thing. Lads of that type. Yeah, and you should know, Jack. Yes, my love, what can I do for you? Just no. a pineapple juice, please. My pleasure. On your own again tonight, I see. Tonight, yes. Do you know he's got to be out of his mind, that Mike Baldwin, neglecting a bird like you? Well, then you'll be pleased to know he won't be neglecting me much longer, won't you? Oh, aye. Right. He's back tomorrow. Oh, oh my kid. <laughs> I wonder what advanced state of dither we'll find Mavis in today. A bit harsh, considering. Oh, I know. Poor soul. Still, she has 
rather made an art form out of falling to pieces, hasn't she? Uh, come to think of it, you're another one who looks a bit frayed around the edges. Don't bracket us together, please. You've not touched your breakfast. I hope you're not coming down with flu. There's a lot of bugs about. No, no, I'm all right. Don't fuss. You're still worrying about the recorder? Uh, among other things. Yeah. What things? Oh, well, nothing major, you know. Now, come on, why don't you get off and go and polish humbugs or whatever you do in a toffee shop first thing oh, in the morning? Right. Mm, bye, love. Bye. Right, thanks very much. Love. Thanks, love. Bye bye. bye. How is she? She's fallen into a light doze. She's hardly had a wink of sleep all night. Nor for that matter have I. She kept going rigid and then she'd twitch all over and then she'd moan. Well, it's not surprising if she's having nightmares. Well, the whole thing's a nightmare. But one of us must soldier on, earn us this day our daily crust. If I can keep my eyes open, getting up at the crack of dawn to do the papers was the last straw. I may look sprightly, but I'm not a young man anymore. Well, you've no need to rush back, Derek. Me and Emily have got the day organised between us. Oh, the one bright spot. I don't know how we'd have managed without you both. Ah, there's always some good Samaritan pops up in times of need. Oh, I know. When my Alfie had his heart attack, people couldn't do enough. Well, that was a different thing altogether, and people are only too glad to help when someone's fallen ill. But a willful disappearance like this, causing no end of inconvenience... Hey, hang on a minute. What do you mean, willful? We don't know what's happened to the poor woman yet. Oh, Rita will be all right. She's a survivor. No, it's my poor wife I'm worried about. What she's had to endure recently. Culminating in the identifying of dead bodies. Dead bodies! Well, our, our entire lives have been thrown upside down. I mean, quite apart from lack of sleep, I don't know when I last had a home-cooked meal. Goodbye. Bye, Derek. Why? He's only interested in his own comfort and convenience. Uh, Ken's not had much in the way of home cooking since I started helping out here. But, to date, he's not complained, bless him. Hello? Oh, hi, hi, it's me. Yeah, I, I tried before, about 20 minutes ago. You were early. I was in the shower. Well, uh, I wanted to get you before you went to work. The thing is, uh, I heard last night that Baldwin's due back today. So? Yeah, well... I've got a nasty feeling you're going to spill the beans about seeing us at the airport. Well, you could always beat him to it, tell her yourself. Look, we've been through all that. Anyway, uh, listen, love, uh, I want to see you. So what do you do, then? What do you mean, what did we do? We talked. Where? In his mum's front room. Anything else? We didn't take you out to no posh restaurants, then. How the heck could I have to get back to work? But you didn't get any champagne, either. Champagne? Take the notice. Listen, Jack, when a man and a woman have something good going, they don't need all the fancy trimmings. Something good going? That rat bag stood you up twice. He had his reasons. Oh, yes, he had his reasons. I bet he didn't. I bet you believed him and all. Listen, Jack, when it comes to falling for fellas' lies, why don't you talk to your Vera? She's the expert. Hmm. I certainly weren't going to tell him Eddie couldn't make our date because he had to babysit. Babysit? Too far? His little baby brother. Oh, he's very good with him. And I know you won't think it flash where he comes in here. But he's quite different at home. It's dead sweet, really. Yeah. Hey, you, Ramsey. Where the hell have you been skiving off to? I'm over to a shop, Gov. You bet it was rumbly loud and cement mixer. Yeah, well, this is a building site, not a play school. You'd be wanting milk and bickies next. Oh, no, it's the flaming fuzz. Sorry about this, mate. Uh... We need Bradley. Yeah, well, our flamer need him and all. How the hell am I supposed to keep up the schedule with blokes mizzling off every five it's minutes? All right, Look, I told you yesterday. I don't know anything about Mrs. Fairclough's disappearance. I've got no more answers for you, okay? I dare say. But we've got a few more questions. Like what? Not here. At the station. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Hey! Is this an arrest? No. Just a uh, request to assist us with our inquiries. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Mark. I should be organising things for the new house. There's tons to do. 
Any regrets about letting the Docklands place go? Oh, yes. But amongst other things, half I wanted his little garden. Still, maybe one day. Well, when I decide to sell, I give you the nudge. You may be fed up with mowing the lawn by then. <laughs> so, you've only just moved in. I could be going on to bigger and better things. And sunnier. Mm -hmm. You fancy the Roberts moving down your street then, Bessie? Well, uh, I preferred some I could think of. Aye, aye. Well, never gives us no trouble, you know. I just hope the next mob that move in behave themselves, because he's now worse than noisy neighbours. Half a minute, please. All oh, right. They've just taken him away. Who? Alan Bradley. The police have just arrested him. Oh. Hang on, Mr Sugden. They, they've just taken him in for questioning. Nobody's been arrested. That'll be the next step. No, uh, he's done her in. It's been obvious to me all along. Hiya. Silly old blighter. Why? He's probably right. I always thought there was something creepy about that mate of yours. Listen, I hope you didn't mind me coming round last night. Why should I? Well, I know I come on a bit strong sometimes. My mum always used to say, at first, think after. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe that's what I like about you. Well, you see, I had you down as one of these loudmouth yobbos like the rest of them. What's that? Well, you did your share of shouting the odds. But seeing you was with your Jamie, well, it showed a different side to you. Yeah, I'm just an ordinary bloke, you know, Tina. My name's Eddie, not Freddy. Ain't you seen Nightmare on Elm Street? No, I don't like horror films. But maybe if you put your arm around me, I could sit through one. <laughs> Ah, oh, there he is. The man I owe everything to. Well, what you having? I'll have the same as you, too. Scotch brief. Right, yeah. Oh, well, what to? Well, I'll send you the factory. Put me on the yellow brick road to me first million. Where are you up to, Michael? Taking a leaf out of his book. Property. That's where the money is, right, mate? If you know what to buy and when. And where. If it's such a sweet deal, I don't suppose you want to let anyone else in on it. You suppose right? Viva España! Well, I wonder if the Joker's landed back yet. Who? <laughs> Weatherfield's answer to Gotham City, Mike Baldwin. He's getting to be an obsession with you. You don't know him like that. Ken, I'm sorry. I thought I could handle this, but I can't. Handle what? Us. This whole messy situation. I thought I was different. I wasn't the cliché, pathetic mistress. I was the independent woman who could enjoy a relationship without needing or, or wanting commitment. I was wrong. Look, um, I can't... Um, Give me that. I know. No, no, no I was going to say, I'll make any promises. Not until I know I can keep them. Don't ask me to be patient, Ken. Don't say these things take time. Fast forward two or three years and we'll still be in exactly the same situation. Except by then you'll have a different set of excuses for inertia. Look, I've been together with Deirdre now for eight years. And there's Tracy. I can't just walk out. Why not? I agree, it's painful, but in the end, isn't it cleaner and, and more honest than constantly lying to her? Splitting yourself into little bits between us. You don't imagine she's happy, do you? I mean, she must suspect something. Possibly. Ken, I'm, I'm not telling you to leave her. I'm not going to put myself in that position so that one day you can hurl it in my face. Then what do you want me to do? Whatever you think's right. If you want to have a shot at making some sort of a future with me, then, then that's fine. If you choose to stay with Deirdre, well, I can live with that. But you're the only one who can decide. And until you do, I don't want to see you again. Don't say that, please. I mean it, Ken. This hurts too much. When you know what you want, ring me. Either way. But until then, just stay out of my life. Save us all a bit of time, eh? Come clean. Get it off your chest. 
I've given you my statement. Yes, yes. You know nothing about Mrs. Fairclough's disappearance. You're as innocent as Snow White. I have nothing to add to what I've already told you. OK. Let's run it by again, then, shall we? First, you viciously attacked the woman at least once. It was a domestic tiff that got blown up. You don't get a stretch for a family barney. There were two charges. So there were. Assault and fraud. She blew the whistle on that little scam as well, didn't she? All right, so I made mistakes. I'm not denying that. But it's a can of worms I don't want to open up again. That right. So when you came out of the nick, where was the first place you went? Straight back to Coronation Street. Back to where she lived. My daughter lives there as well, no thanks. And you got yourself a job right across the road. I needed the work. Those jobs is work. But you had to be in the one place where you could watch Rita Ferkel. Get to her. Look, I've told you, this persecution thing is all in her mind. She swears the man who broke into the house was you. Like she swore I broke into the shop. Shall I tell you how we see it? I can't stop you, can I? You'd lost everything because of her. Your business, your reputation, the works. You'd even done time because of her. And her latest accusations meant you could have gone back for another couple of years. Oh, you must have hated her guts. So what did I do? Go round and duffer up again? Maybe. Maybe this time you went a little bit further. You're known as a very violent man, Mr Bradley. I didn't kill her. Didn't you? No, I didn't. I didn't even see her that night. So where is she? You'll find her. That's your job, not mine. Oi! Hang on a minute. I'm afraid I've got to go. Listen, you've got my number, so you know okay. where to find me. Yeah? Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Afternoon. Afternoon. Hi. Mm. Well, thanks very much. You could have interrupted a major negotiation there. And did I? Nah, they're just vaguely interested in phase three. They won't be ready till the end of next year, but from the way they're already arguing, my bet is the wedding will be off by then. Oh, I said you were a cynic. Can you spare a minute? Well, my next appointment's at three. Good, come up for a coffee. I've got something to tell you. Listen, well. I've only got a minute. What are you doing Friday night? Why? My mate's just rang and it's the 21st and she's having a bit of a rave off. Can you come? They said I can have time off work. Well, I don't know. Oh, it'll be a really good thrash. She's not short for Bob or two in Marie. Her dad sells pots on market. Uh, I'll have to let you know. What is it with you? We're only a bit ago. You were panting for a day. I, I don't go in for all of this pre-arranged stuff, mate. I prefer taking things as they come. Well, that's just tough, isn't it? Because party season's coming up and whatever's going off, Fowler's going to be there. So do I take someone else or what? Suit yourself. Oh, yeah, it's great this time of year. No crowds, no sunburn, no, uh, here we go, here we go, lagerlouts in the Union Jack shorts. So why all this stuff about going to London? Why did you lie to me? Because I wanted to make sure that the deal was all settled first. What deal? You are now looking at the proud new owner of a petrol station, not far from Fulingirola. You mean Robert's deal? Not anymore, it's not. He was negotiating for that place. No, he put in a bid for it. I put in a better one, that's all. That was a diabolical thing to do. No, it's a smart business move, darling. Look, if it hadn't have been me, it'd have been somebody else. Way to teach him to get his finger out in future, wouldn't it, if he wants to pick up all the plums? But he trusted you. He told you about his plans in confidence. Correction. He couldn't stop telling me what a smart operator he was. Wouldn't let anybody else in on the deal. Well, he should have been so greedy, should he? Well, I've heard of some lousy tricks, but this is about the lousiest I've ever come across. Oh, come on, darling. Your brother Robert's probably pulled this trick himself a couple of times. It's what they call enterprising. I don't call it enterprise. I call it sneaky and underhand and dirty. This wasn't some smart developer like Morris Jones you were putting one across this time. It was my brother. And if you can't see that makes any difference, then you're even more arrogant than I thought you were. Then there was Egg, the acid bath murderer. Now, he nearly got away with it. And Nielsen, 
you to chop them up in little bits and rinse them down the sink. All right, Percy, we can do it without your lorried tails for once, if you don't mind. I'm just saying how many ways there are of getting rid of a body if you put your mind to it. Yeah, well, I know one body I'd like to get shut off, and now, fast. I think it's best if you keep your theories to yourself, Mr Sugden. Nobody knows what's happened to Rita, and until we do, it's best if we don't let our imagination run riot. Mm, it's Jenny I'm worried about. When she comes home, she finds out her dad's been taken in again. She's at the end of a tether as it is. Well, I think someone should keep an eye open for her. Break it to her gently, poor kid. It's a swine of a business all round. This used to, used to be such a, a quiet little street. Such a friendly little street. Nothing's the same, though. The whole world's changing. Hi. Hi. Hmm. Suppose you've heard the latest. What about? Alan Bradley's been taken into custody again. Oh, yeah, yeah, for questioning. Percy and Mavis are convinced they'll charge him this time. Can they, without a body? Uh, I think so, yes, under special circumstances, but uh, I think they're all jumping the gun a bit, though. Deirdre... What are you doing on this early, anyway? It's not like you. Uh, well, it, it was quiet. I wanted to get away. Love? Well, I'm very glad you did. It's been a nightmare of a day. <sighs> Tracy's gone round to her pals. You can take me for a drink and an Indian. How does beef biryani sound? Great. Blimey, Sally, have you got binoculars on me now? Jenny! Sally, I appreciate your concern, really I do, but I'm all right. I don't need me hand holding 24 hours a day, honestly. Jenny, something's happened. The police have taken your dad in again. What? Jenny! Hang on a minute, Jenny, what's the point? They're not going to let you see him. Yeah, well, at least I can find out what's going on, can't I? Do you want me to come with you? Yeah, all right then. Well, hang on a minute, and I'll go and tell Mr Robert. Dad! Are you all right? Yeah. What happened? Sally said you've been arrested. No, no, no. Just some more of their stupid questions, that's all. You know what the police are like? They're up a blind alley, you see, so they've got to be seen to be doing something, haven't they? Well, that's not fair, is it? They're not bothered about being fair, are they? When in doubt, bring in Bradley. That's their motto. Well, at least they've let you go again, eh? Well, they had to, haven't they? Because they haven't done anything. Tell you what, love. Go in and put the kettle on, make us a cup of tea, eh? I'll have a word with Harry. See? I told you would be all right, didn't I? Sorry about that, Harry. I thought I'd be back sooner, but you know how long-winded they are. Anyway, see you first thing tomorrow, eh? Don't bother. You what? I've had it up to here with coppers sniffing around and you running off every five minutes. It's no use to me. Well, I'm not exactly overjoyed about it myself. But it won't happen again. Seems to me you can't bank on that. But I haven't done anything. Sorry, but I need blokes I can rely on. You giving me the sack? Until you get yourself sorted out. Yeah. So, are you on schedule over the road? More or less, yeah. Houses should be ready early in the new year, provided we don't get any itches. Good. It feels strange having people living over there. Ina Sharp will be turning in a grave. Who? Oh, I'm going back a few years now. She used to run the community centre. No, she used to run the community. And Ken's Uncle Albert. He'd be having a good old moan if he was still alive. No danger. And what about you? Are you still so violently opposed to change? It wasn't change I was opposed to. It was a cock-up you and Mike Baldwin were making with the factory girls. Oh, I'm quite looking forward to it, actually. It'd be like the street getting a new lung, won't it, Ken? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I still think he's keen enough. I mean, I've seen the way he looks at you. Yeah, but why is he being so coy about coming out on me Friday? Look, it's obvious, isn't it? Who asked you? Look, it takes a man to know another man's mind. Yours isn't a mind, it's a cesspit. If he won't commit himself, there's only one reason he's got another bird. Oh, give over. I've always been looking at her and chasing her for this well, last few weeks. She's on the spot, isn't she? Loot lovey. I hate to say this, but all as you are to that pillock is a bit of a diversion to brighten his working day. Oh, Jack, that's a horrible thing to it's say. It's a horrible thing to do, Betty. You take it from me. 
He is using all his spare time for a serious bit of stuff. Yes, Mike. Yeah, please, last scotch, eh? Minus the lady friend again. Second time today. Yeah, that's right. He's probably swapped her for a sultry senorita. He's just got back from sunny Spain. Strictly busy, that though. Not pleasure. Mind you, it was very profitable, very satisfactory all round. First class hotel, no flight delays. In fact, everything was getting out on time that day, wasn't it, Ken? I bumped into Ken at the Ringway Airport the day I left. Oh, what were you doing there? Uh, oh, I was checking out how passengers like the uh, new domestic terminal. You know, human interest story. Hey, that foreman of yours has just sucked me. All right. Listen, I've worked hard over there. A bloody sight harder than some of these young layabouts he's taken on. I dare say. Well, what are you going to do about it? Our inference is responsibility. This is victimisation. I've done nothing. And he's probably got his reasons. Look, it's not my fault that some lunatic woman goes missing. Now, I need that job. I'm sorry, mate. It's out of my hands. But you're the boss. Exactly. Is Eddie in? Oh, sorry, Lou. He's gone to Marilyn's for his tea. Oh, I see. Who's Marilyn? His sister. He's dating our Jamie with him, so I'll not be late back if you want to wait. No, no, I'll get back to work. I suppose you get a lot of girls calling for him. Well, no, not really. You're the first in a long while. So he hasn't got dozens of girlfriends, then? Oh, it's not easy for him in his circumstances. What circumstances? With having our Jamie to look after. I do what I can, but I can't be on call 24 hours a day. But I don't want to be cheeky, Mrs Ramsden. But there's not many lads of Eddie's age who are expected to give up the time to look after their little brother. His brother? My goodness, Pet. That'd be a bit of a phaser with me being a widow these past five years. I'm not a merry one, neither, much as I might like to be. Well, who's is he, then? Oh, Jamie. Where's Eddie's little lad, bless him? Don't tell me the monkey's never said. all this, then? Well, the police must be going to search Rita's house again, by the look of things. How many does it take? What's uh, what's all the gear? Yeah, they'll be your experts this lot, Percy. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, forensic, that's it. They'll go over it with a fine tooth comb. You know, specks of dust, uh, human hairs, bloodstains. It's marvellous what they can tell from one spot of blood, you know. I believe oh. so. Good morning, Miss Bradley. Got you out of bed, did we? What's going on? I've got my scene of crime team with me. I want them to have a good look round the house. See if there's anything that might give us a line on Mrs. Fairclough's whereabouts. I'm sure you have no objection. No. In you go. Ah! Do you want some of this orange juice? No. Bottle sunshine, this. If you drank your orange juice every morning, you'd have a sunny disposition, just like me. I'm not in the mood, Mike. I was lying awake all night. Mm. Should have given me a nudge, darling. I don't know how I'm going to face him after all this. Who are we talking about now? Oh, your clever big brother. Of course we are. Before very much longer, Robert's going to find out you've bought that piece of land he needs. He sure is. Viva la España! <laughs> He'll hit the roof. I'm warning him, Mike. He's got a terrible temper. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. If he phones me today, what should I do? Well, don't wait for him to ring you. You ring him. Tell him if he's in town tonight to come round for a drink. I'll break the bad news to him very, very gently. Hi. Look, oh, uh, hi. Wendy, I have to talk to you. I'm not now. I've got to be in town for ten to nine. Don't go. Look, it's a day's work. It's how I make my living. I'm a temp. I don't like it all that much, but... In a way, that's what this is about. I'm your temp, aren't I? And I don't like it. I want something permanent. But we have to talk. Ken, we do nothing but talk. Round and round. It doesn't settle anything. I'm sorry, I, I know it's not what we had in mind when we started, but I can't help how I feel. Look, you don't have to apologise. I'm not blaming you for how you feel, but I guess we should let me explain my situation at home. I know exactly what you want to happen. You want Deirdre to make your decision for you, tell you she, she's, she's had enough of you. That way, you won't have to feel guilty. I'm right, aren't I? 
Well, I'm sorry, Ken, but life isn't that convenient. Morning, love. Hiya. Oi, oi, oi. Hang on. I've got a bone to pick with Don't you. Don't start. I've just got here. Anyway, what have I done now? You know what you've done? You went chasing off last night after that Eddie Ramsden fellow. It was the last time we saw you. Now, this is not fair on me and Betty here. Oh, give over. We're married. That is not the point, Betty. You don't go skiving off, leaving your mate stuck at the sharp end. Look, the poor girl's only trying to sort out a love life. Oh, leave her alone. I've sorted him out, all right. Good and proper. Why, did you have a little talk, you and Eddie? I didn't see Eddie, but I saw his mum. And I'll tell you this, if I never clap eyes on that Eddie Ramsden again as long as I live, it'll be all right with me. Wow, well, what's up? You know that little baby brother I told you about? Yeah. It's not his little baby brother. It's his little baby son. No. His son. The rat bag's married all the time. Not as simple as he looks, that Eddie Ramsden. Let this be uh, a lesson to you. The world is full of these dodgy fellas that are only interested in one thing. Yeah, I know. And you're another of them. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> there was a whole bunch of them there. Kenny saw it same as me. They went into Mrs. Fairclough, took all their tattling. Do you know it's amazing what they can tell from one tiny bloodstain? Oh, give up the Percy talking about bloodstains. Does Mavis know about this? No, she had a migraine when I came in, so I made her go to bed. She'll be awfully upset. Of course she will. She's bound to be. I mean, let's face it. When a woman like Mrs. Fairclough's done away with by a chap like Bradley who's walking about the streets as bold as brass, you're entitled to be upset, aren't you? Hey, hang on a minute, Percy. I think you're going a bit far there. I'm not, you know. It's obvious what the police are looking for. Well, it may be obvious, Mr. Subden, but there's no need to be so brutally outspoken about it. I'm merely facing facts, Mrs. Bishop. Unpleasant facts, I agree. They're not facts at all, Mr. Sugden. You are making two assumptions. One, that Mrs. Fairclough has been... Well, that something's happened to Rita. And two, that whatever it is, Alan Bradley's responsible for it. I'm sure of it. Nevertheless, Mr. Sugden, it is not fact. It is opinion. It's not just mine, either. It's obvious what the police think. Yeah, well, I just want to go on hoping that Rita's all right. Somewhere. I know that, love. We all feel like that. But where is she? There's only one man can tell us that. This fella Bradley. I don't believe it. Got a search warrant here. Giving me the authority to search these premises. What more do you want? You got me the sack yesterday, do you know that? Wait, haven't you done enough? Not quite. Go on, you lot. And I want a thorough job. You're wasting your time. We're not here for fun, Mr. Bradley. Why don't you just save us all a lot of trouble and tell us where she is? Eh? Who? Mrs. Fairclough? No, I'm like you. I haven't got a clue. We will find her, you know. Why don't you just give us a bit of help, eh? Look, I haven't done anything and I don't know anything. And you won't find anything here unless you brought your with you. You seem a bit down today, darling. What's up? Nothing. Tina. My mum said you were around at our house last night. I don't night want to see you and I don't want to talk to you. Oh, come on, just, just give us a pint. Like I've just with said, me. I am not talking to you. Oh, come on, Tina. I'll give you a tip, son. When a woman's like that to you, leave them alone. Don't beg and wait till they come to you. That's my advice. Yeah, well, stuff your advice, mate. Here, Betty. What? Will you tell Tina I need to have a word with her? Look, leave her alone. You've done enough, haven't you? Ah, go on home to your wife. Yeah, go on. Hey? Go on, you heard. Oh, to hell with it. Oh. Don't mess me about what? Hey, give us a bit of lemon, Jack. Hey, police have packed up at Rita Fairclough's. I've just seen them coming out with bags and all sorts. I wonder what they've found. I need to put Alan Bradley away for a long time, I hope. It was awful, Sally. I mean, they even took the carpet, so... I can't tell. It looks all right. But Rita's not here. I mean, why do they keep looking here? Because they've got a job to do. I suppose they know what they're doing. Look, Jenny, why don't you come and stop with me and Kev? There's a spare bedroom and I we should have a little bit of company. Oh, sorry. We don't mind, honestly. <laughs> so it's not that. It's just that I want to be here when she comes back. Because she will. I know she will. The police think my dad's done something to her, but... Well, you don't think that, do you? Me? No, of course I don't. Here we are. 
Hello. Hi, Deirdre, love. Hiya, Betty. Oh, Betty, yeah. can you save me a couple of hot pots for later? OK, no. Thanks. Yes, sir. A lager, please, Jack. Oh, so I'll get that. No, you're all right. I'm expecting Ken. Well, I say expecting. It's more like hoping, really. He's that busy at the recorder. Oh, working late a lot at the office, is he? Yes, he is. Mm. Funny, I thought he would be. Strange how married men put in a lot of extra hours at the office. You know, they always say that when they've got a girlfriend. Are you talking from your own experience, Mark? No. My own observations, darling. See ya. Hey, yeah, sweetheart. Ah, uh, thanks, Jack. Thank you. Mm. Oh, come on, team. Cheer up. Look, I'll tell you something. That Eddie Ramsden won't be coming round here pestering you no more. What did you say to him? <laughs> he got the message. Yes, but what did you say to him? He did say now to him. He didn't say boo to a goose, him. It's all in the eyes, Betty. I give him that special look, don't I? Him. Oh, Hello. Oh, hi. Been here long? Uh, no, two minutes. Oh, good, good. Uh, Tina, half yes, a bit, sir. please. Ken? Yeah. Why don't we go out somewhere tonight? Somewhere special, just you and me. Tonight? Sorry, I don't know. I can't make tonight. Uh -uh. Working late at the office, eh? Hi, Mike Baldwin was here. He'd say that supports his theory about hard-working husbands. Baldwin? What's this about Baldwin? Oh, he was in here just now making cracks about men who have to work late at the office have usually got a bird on the side. Yeah, well, he would, wouldn't he? The man measures everybody else by his own filthy standards. Why the hell can't the slight little rat keep his nasty opinions to himself? Yeah, all right, Ken, all right. No, that can't be right. I'm sorry. According to the book, it's four weeks' papers. Oh, my God, it mounts up, doesn't it? I wouldn't care, but we only have that one morning paper. Oh, and the evening one, of course, and the TV magazines. Oh, it's wicked, isn't it? Still, I suppose it's just like everything else. Hey, Derek, uh, who cops for all this money if it's right, you know, about Rita? Pardon? Well, I mean, all this money's Rita's, isn't it? So, uh... If she has, well, the... If she has, you know, what do they call it, met with foul play, well, where does all this money end up? I mean, who gets the business and all the trimmings? Well, I've no idea, but uh, if you don't mind my saying so, I think that kind of speculation is not in the best of taste. Yeah, I dare say. Still, it's interesting, though, isn't it? Mind you, most interesting things are in bad taste, aren't they? <laughs> what are you looking at? Me? Nothing. Where's your wife? I want to work with her. Uh, no, you can't, I'm afraid. Uh, she's not very well. Good. I hope it's something painful. Excuse me? You can't talk like that. Now, listen, you. I was fired from my job yesterday, and I've had the law turning my place over this morning, and it's all down to your wife and her phone calls to the police. Yeah, I know all about them. So you tell her from me, I'll be meeting up with her one day. Because it's not just me. Ask her. If she's ever stopped to think what all this is doing to my daughter. Well. Wow. He's dangerous, that man. It's a good job he didn't try to force the issue, I can tell you. Oh. Hello, Robert. Mike Baldwin. How are you, mate? Me? Never been better. Listen, um. We'd like you to come over tonight for a drink about eight o'clock. Me and Dawn. Oh, that's great then. See you there. I've got something to tell you, and I can confidently say you will be very interested. No, I'll uh, tell you tonight, OK? See ya. I want a word with you. Oh, yeah? I think you can guess what it's about. Oh, come in! Playing guessing games, are we? That's great. You've been trying to slide some poison into Deirdre's mind, haven't you? I won't bother with the squalid details. No need to. That bird at the airport, your girlfriend. Yeah, well, that girlfriend you're talking about, that's what she is, purely a friend. Not that it's any of your business, one I happen to bump into at the airport. Anything else you're reading into the situation is all in your nasty little mind. Don't give me that. Don't you think I don't know a bit of skirt when I see it? So don't come here and give me a hypocritical flannel. Keep that for Deirdre. I don't give a damn about what you believe, but I do care about what you say, especially to Deirdre. Now, don't interfere in my marriage and keep away from Deirdre. Or else, you're trying to frighten me, because if you are, it doesn't work. Never has done. Don't say you haven't been warned. Hello. 
was a wonder. I think Mr. Barlow's getting a bit jumpy. He was furious. Yeah, I know. Mind you, that was the intention when I kept dropping hints about his spare time hobbies. You know something? You should never have sold the factory. At least it kept you out of trouble. Nowadays, all you're making is enemies. Oh, it's only Barlow. I'm not worried about him. Never have been. And there's Robert. Because when he finds out what you've been doing behind his back... He'll find out tonight. Invite him over here for a drink at eight. And then he'll find out all about my venture into Spanish property. I'm warning you, Mike. He'll go mad. Ah, he's a businessman. Businessmen I can handle. Want a drink? There we are. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, another 20 minutes and we can lock up, Deirdre. You've been a great help. I couldn't in all conscience have left Mavis to her own devices this evening. I'm glad to help if I can make the time. I must say it's all very disquieting, all this uncertainty at the moment. I mean, supposing something has happened to Rita, where does that leave Mavis? I mean, this place is her home, our home, as well as her livelihood. You don't happen to know if anyone stands to inherit from Rita, do you? I mean, presumably she has next of kin, does she? Well, I'm afraid I can't help you there, Derek. I mean, the, there was an old uncle over Blackpool Way, as I recall, but I'm going back a few years now. And he was old then, was he? Hmm. I think I'll just pop upstairs and see if Mavis needs anything. I'll ask her if she knows whether Rita made a will at all. Oh, that should book her up. Hello. Hello. I didn't know you worked here, Councillor. Well, I don't usually. I'm just helping out. Ah, I see. Um, I'd like uh, an evening paper, please. There you go. Thank you. Come to that. I didn't know this was your part of Weatherfield. It isn't. I was just uh, passing through. Bye. Bye. Tina, hang on. Oh, just listen, will you? Look, I know you're upset, but honest. Why didn't you tell me when we first went out? If I'd have known you were married, I'd have never gone near you. I am not married. I don't believe you. And what about the baby? You told me Jamie was your brother. I didn't. You thought he was. I admit, I should have put you right. I'd been straight with you, but... You wouldn't know how to be straight, you. No, I would have told you all about it. <laughs> Only when we went out first time, I didn't know you proper, did I? It was just a, just a joke then, wasn't it? I mean, when we'd have got going steady like, I would have told you. Forget it. Oh. Hello, love. Hey, what's so, up? Oh, only that Eddie Ramston hanging about. Oh, I've been telling you the tale, has it? Well, you know, a usual lot of flannel. I think you liked him, though, didn't you? Yeah, I did. More for me. Yeah. Are you going to see the solicitor again before we move? Well, I will do. I have to do, won't I? Right, well, I think you should have a serious talk to him. What about? Getting a will done. Oh. Now, don't stop pulling a face. You know it makes sense. Everybody should do it, especially someone like you. Do you know something? You can take the pleasure out of anything you can when you try. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Uh, what are you having? A uh, slim line tonic ice and lemon, please, Jack. So, how was your afternoon? Uh, not bad. I'll tell you what, though. You'll never guess who came in the cabin just before closing time. Wendy Crozy. Oh? What does she want? Oh, same as most people do at that time. An evening paper. She didn't say much. What's she up to these days? I've no idea. No, I've really no idea what she's up to. <laughs> ah, Robert, my old son, come in. Dawn, Robert's here. Thought we could find a use for this. Oh, Shempers. I like your style. What, you're celebrating something? Oh, I can always find a reason for drinking this stuff. Hello, Dawn. Hi. You've been in London for a few days, I gather. Yeah, a bit of business. Well, combination business and pleasure. Hmm. Get some glasses, Dawn. Your brother's bought the Shempers. Good, isn't it? Yeah. Who is it? It's me. Where did you 
think it would be? The police. They've been round here again today. Oh. They went through this place with a fine tooth comb. Yeah, they've been at Rita's as well. I know, they told me. Well, they didn't find anything for all their searching. And they won't find anything at Rita's either, because there's nothing for them to find. Why are they getting at you, Dad? I mean, they're just going on. Because I'm an easy option, aren't I? They had me before, they're going to have me again. Jen, they're determined to get me. That's not fair, is it? What are you doing? What does it look like I'm packing? And it won't take long. This is my worldly possessions, one suitcase. Well, where are you going? Anywhere away from here. Dad, you can't do that. They'll think you're running away. They'll come after you. Everybody will say you're guilty. But they're all saying that anyway, aren't they? Maybe you're right. Perhaps it is stupid. I don't know. Anyway, why would I want to leave you? You're all I've got. I just wish you'd come home. All this would get sorted out now. Where is she, Dad? Why don't you come home? Why does everybody ask me that question? Why do they think I know the answer? Nice drop of stuff, this, Robert, my old son. I mean, the Spanish stuff's all right, but uh, well, a drop of the real gear, that's something special. You've been drinking the Spanish bubbly, have you? Yeah. Here and there, now and then, you know. He said on the phone you had something interesting to tell me. Yeah, that's right, I have. I fancy going out. Why don't we go out instead of sitting round here? We could go to a club. Relax, darling, relax. This is business. Something your big brother knows all about. Always willing to learn something? Yeah, of course you are. All's fair in love and business, right? That's what they tell me. But, Mike, relax, can... relax. Now then, um, this bit of land you were telling me about in Spain, uh, the big development near Fuengarola. What about it? The last piece you needed, the uh, petrol filling station site, right? You said you could get it for what? Uh, 130, 140,000, and you said that in uh, two or three years' time it would be worth a million, right? So? The last piece of the jigsaw puzzle to go into the hole. You uh, bought it yet, have you? What's your interest? What are you leading up to? I'm just coming to that. Now, these uh, last couple of days, I haven't been in London. I've been in Spain. And that bit of land you're talking about, I tracked it down. And then I bought it. <laughs> you're kidding me. I've never been more serious. 150,000. Oh, they snatched me hand off. You really did buy it? Yeah. Why? That land's no good to you. Now, I don't want to be a dog in the manger. I've no desire to spoil your development plans, and like you said, it's worth uh, a million in two or three years' time, right? So, the 150,000, it was a steal. And at 250,000, it's still a very good buy for you. What are you saying? I'm saying, Robert, my old son, you can still have your piece of land, but it's going to cost you 100,000 more than you thought it was. Oh, come on, Mike. This is my brother you're ripping off. I'm not ripping him off. Am I ripping you off? I mean, this is business, darling. Mike's right. He's not ripping me off. There you are. You see, I knew you'd be reasonable. There's still a big profit for Robert in this. The only thing is that this way I uh, get to share a bit of it. No, thanks, Mike. Any profit that's going, it's all yours. Good luck to you. <laughs> eh? You keep the land. I've decided I don't want it. <laughs> Come on, Robert, my old son. I know you need that land. And the price is 250000 and don't try and knock me down. Wouldn't dream of it. Like I say, you're welcome to that land. I was glad to get shut of it. You what? what? You bought the land off me, Michael. My old son. What you do with it, it's up to you. I don't understand. Well, from the look of him, your boyfriend does. I bought that site three years ago. Looked a good prospect at the time. Hotel developers sniffing around. Only they went down the coast instead. Mind you, Mike, ten years from now, twenty years, who knows, somebody might be desperate to get their hands on that site. My advice is, hang on. One day you might get your money back. Maybe they'll strike oil even. Well. It's been very nice. You bastard! You conned me! No, no, no. You conned yourself. You're a greedy boy, Michael. 
sneaking off to Spain behind my back to pull a fast one and make me pay through the nose? Well, you got what you wanted. And like you said, all's fair in business, right? See you, dog. Take care now. If I were you, I'd stay in your own league in future. If you have one.